Hey, what's up, y'all? Get in here, get in here, get in here. Hit the like button, put your like number in the chat. We got to review part one of the RHOP reunion. Um, There was a little foolishness, there really was. So I'm, I'm actually... 
ready to dig into it. I'm ready to dig into it. I hope y'all are ready to. Please hit your like button. Please hit your, this one? yeah. Hit your engagement button to circle with the emoji, send the bubbles up. Let the people know you all are in here, please. And thank you. Let me get ready and greet everyone who's here. Oh, child, I'm having a hot flash. Whew. I'm on fire. I'm on fire. I'm on fire, y'all. It's heavy. Oh, the hot flash is real. Y'all get in here because we got gossiping to do. Now, y'all know any other night. Any other night. <laughs> any other night. <laughs> Listen, we would have been here after the show. Any other night. But not last night. I really did want to do it for y'all, honestly. All right. Oh, blessed spirit, you're new. You say it's strange to be chatting with all of us. You watch every day. I'm so glad you watch us. Welcome. Please don't let this be your last time. Let me greet everybody. But yeah, I couldn't do it last night. I couldn't. I was really going to try. Mr. said no. And so I said, you know what? You're right. No. So I said, we'll come in here midday today and we'll drag these heifers and we'll go ahead and talk about what happened, what didn't happen, what should have happened, what was said, what was not said, who was lying and who told a gospel truth. We're going to get into all of it. Okay. Let me greet everyone who's here first. Okay. Miss Thelma, thank you for being like number two. Yvette all the way from Birmingham, UK. Hey, sis, she was number one. All right. Miss Sparkle, our resident Mary Kay lady hit the button for the number two spot. My peanut is here. She is like number three. And so is Magaline, my good sis, Magaline Lamar. I'm glad you made it. We got the beautiful Bianca Edwards in the chat reminding y'all to, um, you know, hit that button. Okay, get your headphones and stuff because we're about to have a good time. She and peanut both are asking y'all to please hit the like button. And I'm asking y'all too because y'all know how they do me around here. I, I, go for, I go in and out of shadow banding all the time. I just go in and out. And it's not because I do anything I'm not supposed to. It's literally because every now and then there's some real stuff happening that's not TV or celebrity related. And I have to tell the truth. And y'all say y'all want me to tell the truth when things happen. But a result of that is they will at times shadow ban your good sis. So I need y'all to like this video. I need y'all to use your engagement button, send the bubbles up. And I need you to share this video. OK, so y'all have my back. And so I can continue to do what I do for you. We can talk gossip, TV shows, all that stuff. But when real stuff happen, if y'all want me to be able to continue to say what needs to be said while it's happening, support me. Support me. That's all I'm saying. Like, have my back. Have my back. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Hey, Auntie Eva. Thank you. We're glad you made it. Thank you for being number six. Emma Crawford is here. She's like number eight. Thank you. Thank you. Jackie Gaines slid in for like number 11 while she is running errands. I appreciate you, sis. We're glad to see you. Yes, we are. Happy to be happy is number 12. All right. We're going to try to celebrate your birthday today because yesterday was Easter Sunday. You know, Resurrection Sunday. We don't play with the Lord's Day like that. We're not going to do that. But we're going to try to do it today because birthdays are important. Okay. Super important. Oh, man, Bianca, she wanted to call in for this one. And I know she's over there working in the multi-family housing. And so, you know, she got to collect them people rent, child. She can't be talking to us like that. Yolanda, thank you for being number 15. All right. Blessed spirit, you hit it. At the same time, you got 15. You're live from London. I love my UK family. Y'all be really having a girl bag. I love y'all for that. Thank you so much. Welcome, 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 a thousand times welcome. And that's not just for her, anyone else. If this is your first time being in a live chat with us, please put FTL for first time live so we can welcome you personally. Hey, Delicia Dismuke, thank you for being 15. Nacho Twins Mama is in the house, Dialogue Sisters. All right, sis, thank you for being number 18. Black and Honest Education, I love your name. Welcome. Thank you for being number 17. You and Nacho Twins Mama hit it at the same time. Black and Honest Education, if this is your first time live, please let us know so we can welcome you. Because I know me, for one, I'm so happy to have you. I'm so pleased to, to have you here with us. Hey, DV, thank you for being 18. All right. 
I know Vita Worship was 18 too, but I let my chat get away from me. Why did I let it happen? What did I do? Oh, I'm so bad. Y'all forgive me. If I miss anybody, I promise you it was not intentional. I'm going to just grab from where I am and try to keep up. Poetic lyrics. Welcome, Carrie. I'm Uneke, sis. We're glad to see you. Morgan's Musings. Girl, we so glad that you made it. I know I am. All right. Coco Chanel is here. Shani is number 21, and we thank you. I really appreciate it. Really, really appreciate it. Happy Monday to everybody. DS is indeed in the house. Okay. And we know she is in charge of that reflection corner because she be in there so much. Tia Baller, thank you for being 37. You was waiting for this. Girl, listen, my pretty, pretty sis, let me tell you something. We got we to gotta dig into some stuff. We got to dig into some stuff. Hey, cool gamer. We love that you always cool and always in the building. Darren Hood, what up, cousin? Thank you for being like number 42. I appreciate you, Yvette. All right, Vet Holland and Jackie, let me get out y'all conversation. I'm that girl. Hey, sis. Another one of my beautiful sis sisters from the UK. She's like number 42. Y'all, I'm trying to get everybody. I feel so bad. I just feel like I'd have missed somebody. Yep, Vita's here from Denver. She's number 18. God's anointed daughter is 20. Meg Scott, thank you so much for being 22. I appreciate you. I do, I do. Okay, my couture bay, my beautiful niece is number 26 and watching from work. I know that's right. Coco Chanel is 34. Mr. James, yes. I'd be so happy to see Mr. James. Thank you for being 24. I appreciate it. Rochelle, thank you for being 31, sis. Poetic lyrics is 22. Listen, y'all, this 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 uh chat business is not simple. It's not, but y'all know how I am. I'm very compulsive when it comes to wanting to thank folks, okay? Nobody don't, as much as I appreciate y'all hitting the like button, I know y'all don't have to hit it. So the fact that you do, I want to say thank you. DM Rock says, hey, I think Giselle don't know about Robin talking about her to the bloggers. I don't think she knew either. Mm -mm. Not by the vein that popped out on her forehead. I don't think so, child. I don't. Hey, LJ, how are you? Thank you for being like number 46. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think she knew either, child. Mm-mm. No, I don't believe it. I don't think so. So listen, y'all. Miss Thelma, I think I spoke to you, but let me speak again. Morgan's Muses is 51. My good sis, Randa Deba, is in the house. Hello, hello. All right. Thank you for being number 50. I appreciate you, Angela Davis. Thank you so much, sis, for being here. All right. You say you've been here before, but this is your first, your first time in the chat? Okay, well, welcome. Let me welcome you personally. Welcome. Don't let this be your last time either. So that means if you watch, you know, I ain't got no rules like that, child. Say whatever you want to say. You know, just don't beat up nobody. But we can talk about these people on the screen all you want to. And, and, and I don't even care if you're a little crazy. Mm -hmm. As you can tell, we got lots of people in this chat. It's just a little bit crazy. So you just help yourself and say whatever you like. And we want to hear it. We want to hear it. Brian Patterson, thank you so much, bro, for being number 50. Yes. Listen, y'all know any other occasion I would have been here as soon as it went off. But the fact that Bravo was messy enough to put this on Resurrection Sunday, I just, I couldn't make myself. I really couldn't. You stop listening to other com commenters. I understand. I understand. Um, it's some problematic takes on what we see on our screen. So I get it. Thank you so much. Yep. Y'all remember to hit the like button, Darren Hood. Thank you for being number 52. I appreciate you. So listen, y'all, we're about to dig into this thing. We're definitely about to dig into it. Lorraine Henry here from the UK. Let me find out y'all love me in the UK. Okay, so who's going to invite me over? Okay, because I want to eat some of the food that y'all be eating. Because some of y'all food look real good over there. So who is going to invite me over? Because I will go. Let me be clear. I will go. Okay. Have bag, will travel. Lorraine Henry, welcome. Thank you for being like number 56. Yes, that's right, Shani. That's the spirit, honey. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I want everybody 
to be welcome here. I don't want anyone to think that. Cool gamer, I ain't studying you. You ain't new. Talking about I'm new here. You ain't new. You the same cool gamer. Just because you throw the two on the back of it, baby, that don't make it new. It's the same you. And you welcome on both of your profiles. Hey, Tracy Lashley, thank you for being number 60. That was cute, though, cool gamer. I like it. Velda Sorrentino, sis, I'm glad you're here. All right. So look, we got to get into this foolishness. We have got to. First of all, first of all, y'all, hey, Cloud9, thank you so much for being number 62. I appreciate you. Monica Jones, hey, boo, good afternoon. Thank you for being number 48. So listen, this is what I'm going to need to know real quick because y'all know how I play. Let me get, let me do the housekeeping first, and then we're going to get into this review, okay? Mm? Housekeeping. One, if y'all have to cuss, I don't mind. This ain't Sunday school. Just misspell your cuss words, okay? We keep all our comment on the people who are on the shows, not on each other. No personal attacks or insults to any one of our family members in the chat is tolerated ever because it ain't necessary. We don't even know these people, okay? That's two. Three, make sure that you're welcoming people as they come in. If someone comes in and I don't get to greet them, you know you know it's not intentional. So if I miss them, don't you miss them. Make sure everybody feels welcome and nobody feels tolerated because we all know that we don't like how that feels. So let's not do it to anyone else. Nextly, um, if you have a fave and you're really, really sensitive, this might be a dangerous place to be because we will drag anybody at a moment's notice. Nobody is exempt. No one is safe. OK, so anybody can get it on this porch. And again, this porch is for the grown, grown. We grown with grown kids. Some of us grown with grown kids, grandchildren. Hell, some of our ladies have grown grandchildren. So keep that in mind when we saying stuff on this porch. You're talking with grown ladies over here. And we do have some of our uncles and nephews over here as well. Very few, but we do have some. Also, y'all know I play the little game with you where I may ask you for your like number. If I ask you for your like number, make sure you have a cash app so that we can sing you your cash app. But if I ask you for your number and I will give you a minute mark where I need to have it back, if you answer me, you know how sometimes two of y'all can hit the like button at the same time and you both get the same number. That's cool. The first person to answer me in the chat will win. So don't play unless you got a cash app. But remember, you got to be in it to play. So if you ain't hit the like button and you didn't like take note of your like number, you might be missing out. That's all I'm saying. So like if I were to right now say, who's got like number 80? And it's 41 after. You got until 42 after to show your face. Who's like number 80? That person is going to get a little gift from me. So make sure that you're in it so you can win it. Okay? Hey, Kira Michelle, thank you for being like number 64. Are you doing your spring cleaning while I'm running my mouth, girl? I know that's right. Hey, Nina Ross. Velda say she was... 49. Thank you, girl. All right. So make sure y'all, you know, scratch it down somewhere. Okay. If you like my daddy, my daddy used to write in the palm of his hand when he was doing stuff in the store. So write it somewhere, you know, scratch it on something, child. Save it on your cell phone screen. Okay. I know that's right, honey. We grown ladies over here. You was 24, Carrie. I'm naked. I ain't mad at you. So y'all bear in mind when I ask you for your like number, and I tell you how much time you got to give it to me. Don't miss out because we have fun over here. Okay. DM Rock say, I would like to see Omarosa join the show. I heard some other people say that. I don't know that I would want to see that, but I can see where y'all coming from. She's good with reality TV. Hey, Divinely Country Girl, where you been? We missed you. Thank you for being like number 70. Tandra for real is 71. All right. Thank you, sis. BJ Dez, you back after Lent. Okay. I'm glad to see you. Welcome back. Welcome back. So now the housekeeping is done. It's done, y'all. Let's get into my handy dandy notebook. Okay. <laughs> yes. I love my handy dandy notebook because without this notebook, I would be lost. These women, they tell so many different stories, they tell so many different lies. Um, some of them lie for a reason for, for reasons. Some of them lie for no reason at all. 
but without my notebook, I could become very confused with the lying that they do. Okay. They do a lot of lying. Velda says she would be good to deal with Giselle. Maybe, child. You be in the clouds, so glad you that you descended to, to, to earth from the heavens so we could see you and tell you we love you and we miss you. Okay? So look, 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 look. Let's get into what happened on this reunion. Now, I am aware that some of you all have not watched the reunion. I'm aware that some of y'all have no intention on watching the reunion. And I respect that. I truly do. Hey, Jenny Patterson, thank you for being 72. I totally respect it. Um, to be quite honest, um, there's a lot of times when it comes to RHOP, were it not, hey, M. Guerrero, thank you for being 72. Were it not for the fact that I need to watch it to review it so we can come in here and interact and talk about what happened and do so responsibly, right? Um, I probably wouldn't watch them people. I'm just being honest because they're a mess. Now, reunion one, the room, reunion, this is part one. Now, unfortunately, unfortunately, <sighs> they decided they're going to do three parts to this reunion. I believe she would team up with, with Giselle to go after Karen, too, because Omarosa is not exactly on cold, nor has she ever been. Miss Gardner, thank you for being 73. You did not miss it. You didn't miss it, baby. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes, I'm glad you did. Monica Jones say notebook. Yes, honey, y'all know I... If you said it, I wrote it. Okay, if you said it, I wrote it. I take notes. And y'all know what? Fun fact, while we get into this, the fun fact is I take notes when I talk to regular people. I take notes when I talk to anybody who could possibly not tell the truth. I take notes if there's a meeting. I take notes when I'm calling a service provider. I don't care if it's cell phone, internet, whatever. I take notes. You will never be able to come back and tell me what you did not say. Not when I wrote it down. And sometimes I make people repeat things just to make sure I heard it right. You know, well, what you say? Say that, say that again. I don't wait. Say that one more time. Yes, I take notes because when people are dishonest, it's best to, that you have your thoughts together. Now, you having the notes is not going to make them tell the truth. However, it will keep your thoughts organized. And you'll know when somebody is trying to gaslight you because you won't be able to ever convince me that you didn't say it because you said it. In most cases, I had you repeat it and I wrote it down. So you'll never be able to come back and say, oh, no, I never said that. Mm -mm, no, you said it. Hey, Anissa Michelle. Yes. Oh, you had to wash it down with the reunion. Well, thank you for being like number 78. So we got the notes. They're going to do three. <laughs> you giggled out loud at the comment about taking notes. Oh, yes. I take those notes. I take them. Yeah, for real, Darren Hood, you got to take them notes because some people lie so well. Some people are such accomplished liars that they will convince you that they never said what they said. You heard them. They heard you hear them. You can actually engage them in a conversation about what they just said. And if you're not careful, when you revisit the issue, I never said that. And you'll be sitting there thinking, am I mad? Am I crazy? Like, I know you said it. I even asked you about it. You gave me this response. You said, and they will literally, they will lie so well that you'll be asking yourself, did that happen? So yes, I take notes. I take notes. Let me tell you something. Yeah, I'm telling you, that's why I do it. Let me tell you, I told y'all, I grew up, I grew up, my father's family is extremely religious. My mother's family, those people are evil as hell. They are evil, baby. They will lie on you so fast. Ha! They will lie on you, drag you, insult you, make up stories on you. And when you check them about the lies they told, they will swear up and down on a stack of Bibles in front of an archangel that they never said. It. Okay? So I learned early how to deal with those sorts of folks. It's unfortunate, but it's just the truth. It's just the truth. So I had to learn. Tia Bala say, do this at your jobs with your co-workers. You'll be credible. They will not. I'm telling you, notes are everything. Notes are everything. And unfortunately, with the cast of RHOP, we need notes. Because these are 
not as ladies, not for the most part. Yes, three parts, baby, three parts. All right. You know what? Patricia Joaquin sent me a cash app. I wasn't even on the air. And sis sent me support. So I'm going to call that my first support of the day. It did not happen today, but it happened like a couple days back. But thank you so much, sis. I wanted to thank you on the air. Because when I saw that, I was like, we ain't even on the air. My sister thought about me. And that made me happy. It made me happy. It put a smile on my face. It really did. So reunion part one of three, one of three. While we need three, the world will never know. Mm, I'm yawning thinking about it. Yep, notes with them is a must. It is. So part one, we see that they use the pictures from their little icon photo shoot where they were trying to look like the iconic ladies, um, popular figures or whatever. And um, of course, Nantucket did not have one. So what they did do for her was they took the picture of her, you know, at her grand dame clowning because Karen said that was not a crowning. It was a clowning with their party city crown. And what was so sad about that is that's the best picture they had to use for you for this reunion. That was actually pretty sad. It was pretty sad. Um, especially considering that Sharice and Karen both referred to that crown as party city. And we know they're not in cahoots because they don't even like each other. Hey, Callie, I'm glad you didn't miss it. Hey, X, thank you for being number 83. I appreciate you. So, yeah, um, that's the picture they used of Nantucket, of the necromancer. Neckbone, what y'all call her. Thank you for being 82, Callie. Um, so, anyway, they used that picture. Um, I noticed right away there were some things that were note that were noteworthy at the beginning of this reunion, even with them getting there. One thing that got my attention, it was very blaring, was that when they arrived, Ashley's hair looked normal. So the way we saw Ashley on that stage, the way that wig weave, whatever that atrocity was on her head, they did that to her. They literally did that to her. It's not that she bought a bad wig and the wig just looked like, you know, a Viking helmet or something. No, she literally had the weave was straight. It was hanging. It was normal. And they actually, they did that to her. They sat there and curled it some kind of awkward way with a bunch of sprayer spritz and over-directed the curling iron until it looked insane. And then it looked like they backcombed or teased it to make it sit up like you know a viking helmet i don't know what she was going for or why she let them do that to her or maybe she didn't know and it was too late and she just had to go out but it i noticed ashley's hair did not start off like that that was a lot um yep the photo shoots were pretty bad except for a couple yeah ashley's hair was terrible but she didn't come in like that when she came in for the reunion you know how they filmed them coming in right so you see how people come in before the glam hair, makeup, all that stuff. When she came in, she already had that hair installed. What I'm not sure of is whether it was a wig or a demi wig or a weave. I, I personally, it looks like a sew-in, but that hair didn't look like that. They did that to her. Now, Baps had sculpted hair that was like nice sculpted hair. Like you could have saw it at any Freak Nick or Black College reunion or Jones Beach back in the day. This that hair that Ashley had, if she'd have went to Freak Nick or BCR, somebody would have laughed her off the strip. There's no way. Belize and JB, thank you for being 85. You are so lovely. Oh my goodness. I love the pretty girls on the porch. Hey, Breach M. Oh, ain't you pretty? She said that beauty supply store wig, girl. That $30 holler. But when it was just hanging straight and she had the cap over it, the hair actually looked like decent hair. Now, it might not have lasted because it might not have been good quality. But when it was just hanging, when she came in, the hair looked like it was decent quality. They messed that hair up on purpose on that girl. Now, I don't know whether they don't like her or whether she requested to look like that. I don't know. But I'm just saying she didn't start off like that. You know, y'all might not care, but it, it shocked me that this is what somebody did to her. She did not buy a bad wig or get a bad weave. 
they actually did that to her backstage before she came out. Just so y'all know, because I saw a lot of comments about the her. Okay. Welcome, Breach. Is this your first time? Okay. Um, so then we get a shot of Giselle asking Andy where she sit and who gonna be sitting there. And he ends up letting her know, like, oh no, you in that second spot. I said, Oh, 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 that was painful. A lace front. I couldn't tell if that was a lace front. Thank you for being 89 Angel. It did. It did. But I'm thinking bad pageant, bad beauty pageant hairstyle. It did give like real bad 1970s beauty pageant somewhere in Nebraska. She I, that's what her that's what her glam squad did to her. That's what her glam squad did to her. I don't know whether they don't like her. I don't know. All right, Josie. Yes, girl. Happy belated resurrection Sunday. Thank you for being 91. Okay. M. Guerrero said, I always like how Karen looked, but it was something up with her look. I wasn't feeling it. I liked it. I thought she was cute. I thought it was slick. I thought it was chic. But I can dig it. Everybody got different tastes. So it was interesting to watch Giselle asking Andy because she, you know, made it out there first. And he told her, you know, oh, no, this is your seat right here. And she was asking who was sitting in that front when I believe that's what I heard her ask. Now, she tried to act unbothered, but I noticed after that, she left. Oh, this is your first time. Uh -uh. Listen, ladies, gentlemen, respectfully, stop what you're doing. And I need y'all to spam the chat welcoming the beautiful Breesh M to the porch. And she is truly lovely. Look at her. Ain't you cute? I know that's right. Y'all better well, and I mean y'all better spam the chat with welcomes too. I mean it. I mean every word of it. Yes, a 1970s beauty pageant. Lots of teasing and back combing. And um, what was that? Aquanet. Aquanet hairspray was the one. Okay, that's right. Welcomes. Hey Tammy C, I seen you come in. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Now go back and look at the beginning of the show, the wig. Oh. I'm going to have to. I just couldn't tell because it just looked so bad. Yeah, she was in her feelings. She had to be. You know, she tries to pretend that she's not, but she always ends up telling on herself. Hey, Miriam St. Fleur. How you doing? Yes, honey. She was bothered. She was bothered. Hey, Duke girl. That's right. I love it. Um, I appreciate you all welcoming one of our newest sisters. You are so welcome here. And Mon Monroe from Latchaway County. That's what I'm talking about. Welcome from the 352. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. So she had to be bothered, y'all. Because after Andy said that, like she sat down for a second and then she tried to like play it off. And I'm going to tell you how I know the hell for her it up and left from up there on that, on, that, on that platform. So it was like maybe a few minutes later, a few clicks later or whatever. Candace comes in. She's like, hello, everyone. And then notices, ain't nobody out there. And then she was like, why y'all was rushing me and ain't nobody ready? And I say, wait, so Giselle done heard up and left off the stage. Yeah, she was bothered. Mm -hmm. And I want to go on record as saying, I got one wrong. I got one wrong. Now, y'all know sometimes I can figure things out or I try to figure things out like what I think is happening, like what I think these people's strategies are. So y'all might have forgot that I said this, but I didn't forget that I said it. And I like to cop to it. You know, when I'm vindicated, y'all know I'm a shout from the rooftop. I was right. I was right. Well, this is one time where I believe I was wrong. I can't swear to it, but I think so. So what I said initially when they announced the seating for the reunion. Okay, remember we covered that. We, we came on the same porch and we were talking about it, gossiping about it, whatever. And so when they had Giselle in the second chair, everybody, you know, a lot of other commentators, there go my Christian key. Since we got to do what that thing you was talking about. So we need to try to work that out sometime in the next day or so. But I have not forgotten. Um, what did you say, Carrie? Carrie Amonike says Jiz was acting like she was interested in the photos. Yeah, she wasn't interested in no photos. And I mean, not at all. 
Thank you for being like 100 gorgeous. Thank you. So what I said when they first um, reported on the seating chart and there were other commentators and different bloggers that were like, oh, you know, they're sending a message to Giselle. I didn't believe that. And I said it. I said it. I didn't believe it. And I will tell you that I said that. And I believe I might have been wrong. I could be wrong. Nikita T, thank you for being 100. Appreciate you. Um, I was wrong, I believe. And the reason I say that, I thought, I thought that they had discussed that with her and just let her know, we got to put you in this seat to try to, you know, pacify the audience, but you still going to be, you know, in the same position you were as far as being able to do whatever. You're not going to be accountable. Nothing changes. I really did not think for one minute that that was for real but it appears that it was based on the fact that she had to ask andy like who's sitting there when he was like no your seat is that second one that's that's your seat yolanda said i think mia getting the first seat is her strategy for taking down the green eyed bandits like she did ashley when she called her a gold digger after ashley opened up to her about her life i don't know but mia mia didn't have any control over being in that first seat yeah you you did too yeah, I didn't believe that. I really didn't believe. I thought it was to, right, I thought it was to appease the fans. But after what I watched on just the beginning of part one of this reunion, I'm going to have to eat my words. I believe I was wrong. It happens. It happens. Um, The difference is when I'm wrong, I'll come out and remind you what I said and tell you that I had that completely wrong. I was seeing it from the wrong vantage point, obviously. Okay. And I was wrong because it looks like she was not in on the gag. I will say this. If they were doing it to appease fans, they did not run it by her. Let me say that. They didn't run it by her because she was definitely not in on the gag. Definitely not at all. Poetic lyrics say, well, Gizzard, I would love to be a fly on the car seat for the car ride home. Well, now, well, I'm just saying. Um, but yeah, on top of Ashley's weave being problematic, um, there was there was another thing that was extremely problematic. And I don't want y'all to think I'm nitpicking, but we do know that Mia does things to her lips. We don't know why she does things to her lips, but she does. And she did something to her lip, and I couldn't tell whether that top lip was painted crooked or whether they maybe inflated it crookedly because one of the one lip part of well, not one lip, but one side of the lip was pushed like all the way up. It looked really crazy. So I did notice that it was some things going on. It was some things going on. You say you got the impression of Andy sick of Giselle. A lot of people were saying, but I just didn't believe it. And I feel like there may be something to it. Y'all might be completely right. And I was completely wrong. And I can own that. I can own that. Gizzard got taken down a peg or two with the seating. Yeah, y'all said that, but I didn't believe it. Like, I'm I'm just telling the truth. I did not believe it. Um, were they on point? But they were definitely, it was giving duck lips a baboon's anus, and I wasn't sure which. Um, BJ did say that's why Gizzard was even more nasty throughout this reunion. Her crown, oh, BJ Diz, I think you own to something. Because I'm going to talk about that later. Hold that. Put a pen in that, sis. Put a pen. Take a pen and... Mm -hmm. Don't drop that. So Andy makes it a point of pointing out the fact that this was the first time that Karen and Giselle were on the same couch since the show started. Um, so it's like he was trying to make light of it. Like, oh, y'all are friends, blah, blah, blah. And um, DS say her beak was crooked. Jesus. Mm. David said, I watched Reunion, but I'm going to watch it again to see what you saw. I told y'all, I be watching everything, okay? Now, Peanut, my daughter has the big, pretty eyes. Mine ain't big and pretty like hers, but these work. They, you know, they they kind of, you know, slant it. They don't open up all the way, but they see real good. I don't miss nothing. Yeah. The conduct. Yes, yes. That's why I said, um, y'all were right. Y'all were right, and I peeped. I peeped. So um, Andy tried to make it light, but it wasn't light. 
He asked Robert, had she already opened up the skincare shop? She has not. And I'm like, big surprise there. Remember the house flipping? Didn't keep doing it. Remember she wanted to own semi-trucks? Didn't follow through. Now, you know, then it was the gas station hats that nobody, I've never seen any real person wear. Now it's the skincare shop that you signed a lease on, so you say, but I want to know if you're going to open it. Kara Michelle say this was the first reunion I ever seen Giselle throw so many F words. Candace was Candace too, but shocked by Giselle. Yeah, because Candace, Candace little mouth is something else anyway. You know, I don't have a problem with it, but you know, her mouth already something else. But Giselle, ooh, y'all, that reunion, the yellow reunion with Monique and that binder, they said she had a hissy fit and threw a bunch of F bombs and had them people take it out. Poetic lyrics say, not inflated crookedly on the large Hispanic gentleman. Oh, what else can go wrong? Oh, so much. Baby, so much went wrong. So much. Brown Style, thank you for being like number 106. And Dana Cutler, thank you for being 104. Mm. So Robert still ain't open a skincare shop. Ashley still not divorced. Talking about, um, talking about some darn, uh, she got movement on it, but they're not divorced. Mia jumps in, y'all. Mia. Mia. Oscar Mayer, baloney lips, Mia. Jumps in and say, oh, I'll be divorced first. Now, that was, little, that was a little bit of shade at Ashley, but girl, you do you realize you shaded yourself too? You're going to be divorced first because um, you know you're trying to hurt and get away from that man because ain't no more money. Like, girl, mm -mm, no, Mia. Wrong road. So then Andy sets his intention for the um, reunion. You know, we talked about that with the sneak peek and him talking about he wants them to move forward, blah, blah, blah. Karen is playing her position as an anchor. You know, Andy, I believe in these ladies and I know they can do it. You know how she, you know, she got to do her thing. Karen got to do her Karen thing. Yes, the movement is they back together. Right. You roll there rubbing on the, the foots of a corpse. That's That's the movement. That's a lot of movement. Ooh. But anyway, so they did that, and everybody's all in. Candace was like, I'm in. Wendy, Mia, everybody in. Karen got to ask Robert and Giselle, what about y'all? And here comes Giselle, I'm ready for the ownership. Like, will somebody please, can somebody please help this girl? She ready for the ownership, and Robert talk, Rob, Robert over there talking about, sure, Sure, with that stiff bob. I say, mm-mm. Okay, so moving right along from there. Moving right along from there. Um, which was foolishness. Then they get to the filth talk. And 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 I was annoyed by the filth talk just a little. Um, I I don't think I'm ever gonna become accustomed to it or ever truly get used to the filthy talking, because that's never been my brand. But while I was annoyed that it was included at all, I was somewhat grateful that they went ahead and got it out of the way. You know, like, because y'all been doing this every season, filthy talk, dirty talk, all that garbage. But let's go on and get it out of the way. Just get it out of the way. So they did get the filth talk out of the way. Um, the swallow thing with Robert and... People putting things, Giselle talking about pulling something, spitting stuff in your hand, and Ashley talking about holding stuff in your mouth, and um, Mia claiming she's doing that for this poverty pimp who's a radio DJ slash personality. Um, then we had the viewer question about Karen and why she hesitated with the question of how many people she had slept with in the last five years and i'm like why y'all even bother karen huga is not gonna give y'all anything hey california cutie thank you for hitting the like button girl jenna harris said child they were so gross they were super gross so when they asked the, the viewer asked the question of, of karen of course we saw that on a sneak peek and that was a masterful moment by the grand dame this is why she is the grand dame and no one else ever will be um you know, with her saying that she counts her wet dreams, which was just like, baby, don't nobody want to hear nothing about your stuff. Wet, dry, or indifferent, we don't need to know, auntie. We love you, but we don't want to know that. Thank you for being 113, Jenna. 
we don't we don't want to know that we don't want to hear about it like ma'am no we know you and unk love each other and all that stuff to me that was just as cringy during the season as it was at the reunion and it was just as cringy as the season that they had uncle ray taking 20 years to climb them stairs because they talking about they getting in a bath we don't want to know that we trust me we know that you all have done things okay because raven is here and so is her brother so we know theoretically that you all did not reproduce asexually and like you know lay an egg okay and then uncle ray came along and fertilized the egg after it was already outside of the body and all that stuff like we know y'all did stuff we know okay it's just like with my parents i love my parents even in heaven you know why because they were kind enough to never let us see anything we don't want to see it we don't want to think about it karen we don't want to know it and that's from somebody who absolutely adores you sweetie we don't want to know that so the viewer asked the question of why she paused karen then goes on to say well because the count my wet dreams and da 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 so here comes Robert. Also, so basically, you don't know how many people you swept with in the last five years, five years. Why Karen ate her up in one sentence? No, comma, that would be one, period. Listen, I don't need nobody eating me up like that. Nobody. Karen ripped her to shreds in a sentence. And what I don't understand, while I know I, I'm sure it hurts Robert's feelings, but why do you keep coming for Karen? Because she never comes for you. No one does, dear. No one. Brandon Martin say, Giselle and Robert's gaslighting infuriating me. Good afternoon. Thank you for being 114. Child, it was on everybody's nerves. Nicole Lampley, that's my boo. She 114 too. How you doing? Hey, sweet beloved. Yes, it was a yuck conversation, that whole thing. And they talking about it. That's the one thing they can all agree on and talk about and blah, blah, blah. Oh, <sighs> baby, no. Tia Bala says, Robert always had something to say about someone else's man, but mute on her roomie, the caucasity. Well, you know, that's genetics now. She can't help herself. <laughs> Jen Harris said, your Rob voice kills me. But tell me, tell me I got it wrong. That's how she sound. <laughs> Meg say, why well, you sounded like Robert? Because that's what Robert sound like. She needs to stop that. <laughs> she needs to stop. I, and I'm not going to stop doing it until she stops. I, I'm ready to stop when she is. Thank you for being 115, sweet beloved. I'm ready to stop whenever she is, okay? Girl, Ben, Ben. And ain't going to never learn to leave Karen alone. Leave Karen, you go alone. There's nothing you're ever going to do to one up that lady. There's nothing you're ever going to do to make the fans not like her. Karen is likable. You're not, okay? Maybe just not for this show. Maybe like for like a jock itch commercial or a state farm commercial with khakis, but not just not for this show. You're not, you're not likable. But anyway, so after we get past the roasting of Robert by Karen Huger, we get um Andy asking about Robert's situation. Now, this was entertaining. This was entertaining because andy started off by basically saying like like we we already know you don't care i said wait a minute andy acting like he really fed up with himself because like why would you throw that in like why would you throw that in what was the reason andy what was the reason? Yes, Tia Bala, I would definitely like to see her in a Jock Itch commercial. I think she could sell that cream. Or the Gold Bond powder. The Gold Bond medicated powder for Jock Itch. An athlete's foot. I could see her selling that. I would buy that from her. I don't know who I would gift it to. But I mean, if she was selling it, it's believable. I think so. But the fact that he started off with you don't care, production starts recapping all this mess between her and Juan. Um, the scene of Juan telling her that his issue is that he's too friendly and too nice. I say too friendly and too nice. Juan, ain't nobody never describes you as too friendly and too nice. 
Randall says she thought the same thing when he mentioned her tagline. Mm -hmm. I said, why are we doing this? And to show Rob that he's a special kind of weak, that she's a special kind of weak beat. Ooh. Listen, it was a lot. Josie said he's mad about them making that five dollars on Patreon instead of him capitalizing. Well, they because they paid her. They paid her to capitalize off her mess. And she withheld it and sold it for five dollars. Child, who on Andy behind? Who? The executives? Is that who? You say it's dangerous to drink up and listen to this commentary. I'm just saying. Yeah, Juan, Juan say he's too friendly and too nice. Um, Yeah, he was on time with the shade. I think the shade that Andy gave us during part one of this reunion was born out of frustration. I think that he became terribly frustrated. And maybe the executives are after him. Maybe they are expecting him to do something about what these ladies are doing. And maybe they're on him and telling him, like, you're going to need to do something. You're going to have to hold him accountable. Nicole Lampley said, this is the reason why Roberto is fired. They literally threw him a lifeline to keep his job, but too dingy to catch it. I know that's right. Like, you can't be so dingy that you can't catch. Don't, don't be that dingy. Don't do that. Oh, California cutie sent me a cash up. My phone vibrated and scared me, y'all. I had to pick it up. I, I was sitting here, and you know I get so wrapped up and running my mouth that I did not realize what I was doing. She sent me a California cutie sent me a cash up with a flower. That's so sweet. Thank you, sis. I appreciate that. That's super nice. Okay. So child phone scared me to death that's how you know your nerves bad the thing vibrated by my foot and i don't know what i thought it was but i was really about to run up out of him y'all was gonna be looking at my big behind stampeding off of this camera i didn't know what was by my foot okay so look and thank you so much california cutie so look say andy already knew she was gonna be fired that's why he went in on her now, Diane, you think so? Diane, is this your first time? Because if so, let me know so we can welcome you, girl. I'm going to welcome you anyway, because I don't remember seeing you, but welcome. But let us know if it is. <laughs> Listen, it's not your fault. I should have been paying attention. I get so wrapped up in gossiping hmm, that sometimes I don't, you know, pay attention to my environment. That's my fault. <laughs> I'm just, I have it bad. I have it bad. I have it bad. I will run. Okay, I will run. This big girl will move. Hey, prognosis. Thank you for being 130. So, yeah, he um when he hit her with the I don't care and start showing the recap, the one saying he was too friendly and too nice. This was the same conversation where he's talking about the coach Bree thing with her. And um they even showed him yelling at her over the phone. Production put together a hit piece, in my opinion. Um, DB said, I, I find it funny how all of a sudden they're all about the group being able to move forward. But for years, this franchise has the TJ Gurley brought the these women apart in dismantle unity. Okay. You might have to retype that strategically. Oh, you meant strategically brought them apart. Gotcha. 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 Okay. Thank you so much for helping me with the translation because I, I hate to mess up and not get the point of your comments because sometimes I can be a little slow. All right. Diane Payne said, been here since we started. Oh, it's just your first time catching us live. Okay. Be working, girl. I Listen, I appreciate you. I love you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being like number 108. Leslie Cornish, thank you so much for the super sticker, sis. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello, beautiful people. Thank you for being like number 131. In the case, thank you for being 125. Yes, they scared me because I had my phone on vibrate. And that thing vibrated. And it was too close to my foot. I don't know what I thought it was. Honestly, I don't know what I thought it was. But I was going to get up out of here. Miss <laughs> Weedy Pooh, thank you for being 132. Yes, and thank you again, Leslie Cornish, for the super sticker, sis. I appreciate that. I love you for it. Love you for it. Destiny is in the house. She says, we all tied. Robin wants to be delusional and not care, but we don't want to watch it no more. 
be slow by yourself. Amen. So listen, during this conversation, that was the conversation where we saw him refer to this coach Bree person as a beautiful woman. Y'all remember that? Now y'all remember when we saw the um, teaser, sneak peek, whatever you want to call it, where Giselle asked that very calculated rehearsed question, did it bother you when he called her a beautiful woman? And she's like, no, no, he was just, uh, uh, he was only saying that if, if, if she wasn't beautiful, then people wouldn't have had a problem. No, ma'am, that is not what he was saying. You wanted Giselle to ask you that question so you could justify why he said that to you because you saw on social media because y'all watch it. Y'all pretend you don't pay attention to social media when you absolutely do. And she wanted an, op she wanted an opportunity to clear that up. You would have ran to Emma. See, that's my girl. Yes, we run. Dana say, stop playing. You Florida girls don't get scared of anybody or anything. Right, once we know what it is. I didn't know what that was. Nisha Rochelle, hey girl. Happy Easter. Fresh strawberries and slid in here. Okay, that's what's up. So listen, I got a little picture evidence. I want y'all to see what this girl looked like when, she, when he said that I, I took a picture of her face in that moment when he called Coach B. She's she's very beautiful and attractive. Okay, y'all remember that, right? Evie say, Robin's so dense, and she should have left one off the show knowing their situation. She sure should have. She sure should have. Looked like a big fool. But let me go on and pull this up. I, I'm, I'm going to put it on the big screen. I'm going to take my face all the way down. Now, y'all take a look at this. That lady not only looked at him crazy, she was in the middle of talking and froze. She froze and looked at him like so. But we're going to sit up here and pretend like Oh, it didn't bother you that he called her a beautiful woman. Yeah, you wanted Giselle to ask you that so you could clean your face a little bit. No, sis. No, no, sir. Uh-uh. No, ma'am. That bothered you. And you know what else? You had a right to feel like it bothered you. Because it's the same man that told the whole world that you wasn't bathing and laying up in the bed and, and your laziness was not attractive. If he could say that to your face in front of a screen, the last thing he should have been doing was praising another woman in front of that same screen. Only to later on in this season, yeah, I'll let you tell you to be the bigger person for once and then proceed to tell you that you make his skin crawl. So what you cannot do is say to the woman that you pretending to care about that you got children with for sure. You make my skin crawl, but this one here is a beautiful and attractive woman. You can't do that, sir. You can't do that. And ain't nothing wrong if it bothered her. I, I could actually, you know, Respect you better if you said, no, nah, I really didn't care for that. I ain't like that. Say it. Bougie Champagne Crew Reviews. Hey, sis, how you doing? Yes, y'all hit that engagement button. I ought to see bubbles going up everywhere. Yes, Katoube, she was mad. Honey, she was shook and stuck in that moment. She was stuck. That's where she was with it. She was right there. She was right there. Now, my sister on the phone said he couldn't come on any show with me if he wasn't going to act right. She needed to give him the when we get in this so talk before they got on that show. I agree. But the problem is he wouldn't, he wouldn't have respected that coming from her because he don't respect her. He don't respect her. She means, she means less than a pimple on his left butt cheek to him. He, he, L, E, L in the house. Poetic lyrics say nothing gets past you. Not a thing. Not a thing. Not a thing. Blessed spirits say, Poe Rob, she lets Wanda make her look like a big fool. Oh, yeah. Huge one. Huge one. Huge one. Tia Bala said, that skin crawl comment says, I'm cheating and you ain't going to leave, so stop calling me. Yep. Evie says, Robin looks like 
looks likes the look of a two-parent household but she should be real and should have found someone who likes her show should have show should have get them trying another daddy the hell nicole lampley say he sure did the disrespect yes he did yes he did and he was wrong and i was glad production played it back okay trina say don't forget he said you made his skin crawl she's ridiculous and pathetic girl you should have been better better and likable raising kids alone you would have been better and more likable she probably would have been but then again maybe not because she's not a nice person hello beautiful people says i remember when he told producers that if it wasn't for the kids he would have been gone from her i remember that and he was like he want to fall in love he want to have a relationship he don't want nothing to do with her and he don't want that with her m guerrero said i agree stuck she was she was and all the girls made a face when he said that hmm hmm okay k Bo kk bonita say they did play the whole conversation she had just said that people say she looked like the coach yep she but see here's the thing the way that went kk bonita she said that after she got stuck after she made that face i just showed you that's when she said that and he paused after that don't make me go back and get the screenshots because you know i will don't make me act like mariah like mariah Hook. do you want the receipts because <laughs> she said that after he called that girl beautiful and attractive she got stuck then she went on oh, the people people say she looked like me then he got stuck like you a lie. <laughs> then he was like yeah yeah <laughs> i'm sorry do you y'all don't understand how fast i would have put that man out my house y'all don't under first off shanitra would have never had him in her house and he ain't had no money praise the lord but baby you don't want to know how quick i put that man out my house uh -uh. you letting people know i'm laying up not washing my tail telling me i'm what i'm doing is un, you know you being lazy is unattractive and you done drove off with this girl hand hanging in a door you talk to her crazy she call you you scream and cuss her out repeatedly and you calling somebody beautiful and attractive then when she said well people say she look like me you gonna get quiet and stuck like y'all know you lying that's what his face said Juan is a mess california cutie say talk about it if she was ugly we wouldn't care yes we would girl bye thank you that's even and listen say it for the girls in the back it's even more insulting if the man trick with somebody that look like a a a, a, a wart on somebody's toe or a heifer that you know look like she could model for animal crackers it happens it happens i got cheated on one time i did and the woman that the man cheated with looked like tracy morgan with a weave and had more rolls on her side than a bread truck i say how the hell it happens so wouldn't nobody have been you know been like oh well it's cool because she up here looking like a barilla we still would have been like why are you trifling yes bless the spirit another daddy get them churn another daddy um robert some men like masculine women you can go get you one of them anita say i have a, i have very little to no sympathy for robert and me either and me neither mm-hmm that was a mess hey edwin what's up so listen yeah that thing had happened just like that just like that you know what i'm saying he done had to get up out my house man listen you that's what you're not gonna do none of that so they played all that um I, i'm still shook that they played him screaming at her over that phone then andy reiterates that you know just for the record you saying you believe that he didn't cheat with miss canada with miss hotel canada and Bree from the nail salon and the laundromat this what you sticking with that you believe that you know yeah it's evidence fingerprints pictures all type of stuff whole face that this is the person hey angel gamer thank you for being 149 lorraine henry say trace not Tracy morgan with a weed i wouldn't tell you no lie that happened to me it did baby ball-headed as y'all fit kodo ain't had no hair kept putting in all this tight stringy greasy weed when i say when i saw that 
I was more hurt about what the woman looked like. So the idea that Robin is trying to sell to us that, oh, that's all he was saying because nobody wouldn't have cared if she was ugly. Use a lie. Use a lie. Mm-hmm. Mm -mm. We care. We do. Poetic lyrics say, listen, the ugly, the ugly ones that are, it's the ugly ones that's the real threat. She knows what she looked like, so she's willing to do what you want. Don't sleep on ugly. No, you better not. Don't you put nothing past ugly either. Mm-mm. No. Hmm. The ugly women will pay a man child support, fix his car, clean up his credit, build him a business, and sign herself up to be to be a slave at the business. Them ugly women do extra credit. Pretty girls, don't get it twisted. We can't keep up with them helpers. Uh-uh. That ugly girl gonna do everything you want. Always watch them. So she's over here saying that she can't say nothing for certain. She can't say whether she think he cheating or ain't cheating. And um, everybody looking like, girl, on national TV, you gonna say this? And she was like, any more than anybody else can. And girl, don't try to drag nobody into that. That man making you look like the queen of idiots on your own. You look like the idiot queen on your own. Don't try to put nobody else in that, um, Robert. And um, and then Andy go ask them, do they believe the man's stories? Of course they don't believe it. Okay. But the general consensus was like, they don't have to believe it. That's up for her to believe it. If she believe it, that's good enough. Right, Nicole Lampley, Lampley, the cleanup woman for sure. You better watch them clean up women. Don't y'all be overlooking them. Just because she looked like something from the island of Dr. Moreau, you better watch that heifer. You better watch her. Jenna Harris say, don't sleep on ugly. Your man will sleep with ugly. Sure will. They ain't got no standards. I done told y'all. Angel Pepper Wings. Hey, boo. Say, I hope Rob is leaving. I'm surprised she didn't step it up for this season after that Patreon stunt. She sure should have. She should have been lit after that stunt, and they gave her another chance. Neither say one would have slept with any woman as long as it wasn't Robert. Mm -hmm. I think that's what Michael Darby was hoping too, but I'm gonna shut up about that. But um, so anyway, that's when Giselle asked the question to try to say, were you bothered when he said that she was a beautiful woman and she came with the fake story about what she believed? And we all know better because we just looked at what her face looked like. Um, then Andy, I felt like Andy was setting this girl up with questions, like he was setting her up to eat her up. He was setting her up to eat her up. Because then he said, well, do you feel like he was supporting? She told me, yeah, he showed up. He answered He answered questions. And yeah, he was supportive. And um, he showed up. And uh, Andy said, well, he ain't show up tonight. He ain't here for this reunion. He, he, he ain't here tonight, and we know he ain't got no game. <laughs> he ain't got no basketball game. Baby, Mia and Karen caught that. They was like, Andy, that's shady. That's shady. Why you going to do it like that? Say so the way Karen was making it sound, she said Juan wanted to sleep with her. Juan said that he would have her as the, as the third in the threesome with him and Robin. Now, I believe he was joking, but... If that's what he said, that's what he said. And she said he was drunk and, and hugged her too tight and almost popped her boobs. He might not have meant nothing by it. It could have been a liquor, but, you know, hey, it is what it is. Evie says Andy knew this was her last reunion. He had to. The way he kept setting up Robin to chew her up. Because I'm like, Andy, you rehearsed that. I don't watch Kenya more enough to know when people don't rehearse something. You rehearsed that. Andy rehearsed that. He was ready. He was ready to tell her what he ain't here tonight. Why you think he asked the question, do you feel like he was supportive? Because he wanted to lead into him having the opportunity to tell her, well, he sure ain't supporting your tail tonight. Child, that was a setup. Hey, Tiger Eye Oracle, that was a setup. That was a setup. Hey, Tanish. Girl, I'm still here, child. I'm still here. Shannon say, what question did Juan answer through the season? Nothing but to slap that counter and say, I don't care. That's what he did. 
That's what he did during the season. He said he don't care. Okay. And basically they walked through whatever they agreed to talk about. And that's all he was willing to address is the part that he agreed to talk about. And that was it. And that was all. Okay. When Mia went to asking questions at the cooking thing, he caught a little too, but he knew not to get too froggy with that large Hispanic gentleman. I think he felt like, you know, her, her reach, her wingspan was a little long. So he didn't really want to go there. Um, child bless spirit say i bet rob was was glad juan dixon was not there probably though probably probably mm -hmm. he ain't got no game um even say juan and roberto are not in a relationship for him to dump her not true very true ain't no relationship honey Yes, it's giving Andy knew it was her last reunion. I don't know. Y'all know I don't put a lot of stock in rumors because we did not get an official statement from Bravo saying that she was fired. But it's looking like it might be some truth to that. I don't know. Even say Juan just wasn't willing to play the game for the show and Robin kept trying to no avail. I know he wouldn't, just like he didn't want to um play the game for the show. He didn't play the game well as a coach. That's why they had like a 30% winning rate ratio. And, and he would have he, he would have had to go play another game about where to stay. You're not finna stay in my house and you can't help me keep my check. That, that check is how I pay for this house. So what the hell I look like allowing you to stay here and you won't even play alone so I can keep the check to pay the bills in here, man. Uh-uh. Juan would have had to get his funny looking tail up out of there. Because I know some of y'all say he's attractive and I don't see it. It looked like he always need to shave. Like he just lived in a perpetual state of depression and anger. Dana Brown, thank you for being 153. Hey, Ray Ray all day. What's up, boo? You've been cracking up in silence for the last 10 minutes. My bad. He, Juan playing her like a PlayStation child, like a Nintendo 64 with her old raggedy self. Say, so do we think Ron that one is the demise of Rob being on the show, or is it Rob's fault she ain't coming back? He got a hand to play in it, but she, California Cutie, he is a big part of it because she introduced him to the show. We saw them on the show. She kept telling that lie about they was finna get remarried and all of that. And the fact that he went along with it enough that the people wanted to see what was coming out of it but wouldn't go with wouldn't go along with it all the way so that girl could keep her job i think that's raggedy it's her fault because she should have never had him on that show the minute my church is like, oh bad sir you can go directly to the nearest hell you ain't got to go to hell proper you can go to hell adjacent adjacent the outskirts but i can promise you you're gonna go somewhere the minute my children had to take a cold shower I mean, the minute, the nanosecond that my churn had to take a call, bye. And I don't care who fault it is. You get out. You get out. But yeah, it's definitely Robin's fault, but he got a hand in it too because you sitting up there spending the money, enjoying the money. You know what I'm saying? The fact that she was making the money while you had that job. That's what freed you up to be tricking the money off on them other women. That's why you was able to pay for hotel rooms and flew these holes out. You could flew them out because Robin had that job and that was going to pay the bills. So your money was indeed your money. Yeah, she was dumb to tell that lie about them rekindling stuff. And she should have known she couldn't trust him to go along with it. Thank you for being 157, Anjanetta. She set herself up. Let me tell you something. Lying ain't never the answer. Diane Payne saying one is not getting another college basketball coaching job. Maybe middle school or T-ball. Pop one or something. Switch to football with your angry self. Your, your angry, aggressive self. Slapping on counters and, and snatching people's arms and car doors. Go get on the football field. Ray Ray said once Juan said he's only around for them two kids. I knew the jig was up. Way back. Way back. But he just increasingly has gotten more irritable and aggressive toward that lady in the way he talks and i haven't seen him do anything physical other than that cardo situation but i just y'all know me i ain't comfortable so anyway andy chewed her up um she took the chewing um 
Wendy told her the truth, which I was glad. You know, like, girl, he should have been behind you because you catching all these shots because of him. He could have been here to get some of them. You know, it ain't have to be like that. Hey, Riri, see? Uh-huh. Yep. Probably so, girl. And so Wendy told her like it was. Robert sitting up there. I don't I don't care. I, yes, you do. You look stupid as hell right now. You look bothered. Your eyes turning red. You up here trying to shake that stiff bob. You gonna get a you gonna get whiplash trying to shake that thing. It ain't moving, Lord Farquaad. It's not. But anyway, pretend trying to pretend like she ain't bothered. Girl, you can't do what they be doing. You, you what she be doing because it don't work for you. You look like you're drowning with no water. So anyway, Andy asked her about the feedback about, you know, people saying, hey, what's up with this man deleting everything in his phone? You don't think that's suspicious? So Andy was like, well, you got the code to his phone. No, I ain't got the code. He ain't got the code to mine either. He don't want the code to yours, Robert. That's the problem. He don't care what you do. Juan would be perfectly happy for, for Robert to go and get a man to go knock the bats out the bell free or knock the fleas off fluffy as long as she let him stay there rent free and don't ask him no questions about his dalliances and clandestine meetings now that's what he want her to do find somebody else to play with her while he play with any and everybody he want to without her getting in his business okay now that's just what that is so um they get to this Candace thing with her. And so basically they want to know, you know, Candace, well, you know, they didn't ask Candace, but Candace made it clear, like her issue was never, <laughs> Lord, this is my child, Jesus. One want her to get a man real bad and do, and do. But Robert out here trying to outman the men and she scan them. She scan them. They business running right back up in them like a turtle. But anyway, Candace was like, listen, for her, it wasn't never about, you know, trying to prove this girl man was cheating, whether he was cheating or wasn't cheating. She was like, her issue was you, ma'am, were demanding the truth about everybody else's life and hiding yours. And of course, now, Candace, I was surprised at Candace in this moment because she didn't have a better example of Robert's behavior. Now, she mentioned being down there in Mexico and that crap she tried to pull with Karen which turned out not to be legit. It was a lady with her back turned. We don't know who the lady was, and that's why production wouldn't even show the picture, okay? um, Not even a blurred out picture. They didn't even show it because it wasn't legit. But why didn't you mention her sitting up on that reunion stage talking about, oh, if you're not comfortable set, um, sharing your life or exposing what's in your life, then you shouldn't be on the show. What about that? What about all the times she's made these comments? Like, there's been numerous times that, that Robert, Roberto, Jake from State Farm, whatever you want to call this, this, this gentleman, this lady gentleman, okay, has demanded, has been outright saying, oh, no, if you're not willing to tell everything, if you're not willing to share your life, then you don't need to be on this show. And why on earth, Candace, did you not have that queued up and ready to go? And I'm going to tell y'all why I think that is. It's because Candace is still too emotionally involved with this heifer. She is. She's too emotionally involved. She too stupid to realize that this thing was never your friend, girl. She was never your friend. You thought she was your friend, but Robert was never your friend. Not ever. Now, um, she said, you know, of course, Robert played dumb, playing crazy. When did I ever do that? Girl, you've done it repeatedly. Jim Carrey, you've done it repeatedly. So, and it was like, girl, you still could have got ahead of your story. Why didn't you get ahead of this? And, you know, yes, blessed spirit, that lady gentleman, that lady gentleman. We've heard that lady gentleman say that numerous times. Okay. But, and it's like, why didn't you get ahead of it? Like, you could have gotten ahead of this. You didn't have to let this go this way and, and keep it quiet. That Basically letting her know that's why it looked so suspicious like what was the point so she was like oh I, I never thought about it i wasn't trying to get ahead of nothing and blah 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 and um karen was like look you even said you were waiting on me to expose it 
Do you know, Robert, those of y'all who didn't watch it, let me tell y'all something. Robert got up there and had the nerve to say, well, I wasn't waiting on you to expose it. I was just saying, if you did, I wouldn't have been surprised. No, ma'am, you set your tail. Ma'am, sir, you set your tail up there on Watch What Happens Live and told Andy Cohen, the white powder ranger, that I was waiting on Karen to expose it. See, that's what happened when you lie. You got to keep telling lies to cover up the first lie you just told. You said that. And then it's going to have a nerve to say, well, that ain't, you know, um, no, I wasn't waiting for you, but you were. That's what you said, right? But in reality, you weren't really waiting for her to expose it. That's just the lie you told to try to save your neck in the moment because you knew you had stepped in that step. Right. They're sharing absolutely nothing. The lady gentleman. Yes. Hey, Jen Bunny. That's what she said. That's what she said. Now, I can only go by what you said because that, the notebook don't be lying. Because I take my time and write down what you said. You said that, ma'am. You did. California Cutie said, and it was all kept. Talking about you was waiting on Karen to expose her again by Rob. Mm -hmm. Domo Arigato, Mr. Roboto. Hey, Christina with the T, thank you for being 174. So listen, that happened after Karen chimed in. Robert told that lie. I wasn't really waiting, but we know you, you know, you just lied, you know. So Karen gave an example. She was like, with all the stuff that was going on with raised taxes, and some of us remember that. Giselle and Robert were relentless. Oh, they were relentless. And so was that that um large four-headed. Mega Man, Ashley. Mega Man was relentless too. Like they were so disrespectful, so nasty to Karen. It was like y'all would think that Texas is like crack or something. They treated her like she was a crack dealer or a methamphetamine dealer. The way they the way they acted about this man on some Texas. And I recall that the grand dame handled it very gracefully, and she was she reminded them, "Hey, when Ray went through that stuff." I got ahead of it. I did a whole press conference with no press. Let y'all answer y'all questions. I put a little comedy on it, but she addressed it head on. She got ahead of it. And I remember back then, Karen made a very valid point that I think them helpers was mad about and they ain't been able to bounce back from. That you got to remember that for a man to owe a million dollars in taxes, he had to have made it. And she wasn't lying. Because can't nobody tell you you owe a million dollars in taxes and you ain't made at least a few million. That ain't how that work. That ain't how that work at all. And um, so yeah, that, that's how that that's how that go. So when she said that, you know, that was one of many gotchas that Karen had on these whores. Okay. Yeah, they were disgusting about raised taxes. Mm-hmm disgusting so you know she just reminded them like that's what i did if something happened i got in front of it i dealt with it bam like that's that's it that's it and that's all hey cheryl thank you for being 177 sis you working and listening so you know i i felt like she was right robert was like oh she wasn't trying to get ahead of nothing but you should have because you went and sold it on patreon for five dollars that five dollars will forever i mean forever Make me take a bad aspirin, girl. Five dollars. You risk your contract. You risk being able to pay your mortgage for five dollars on Patreon, ma'am. Ma'am, take your business. Take your business. Um. So then, when they got over to, um, after that happened or whatever. Let me see. Let's move on. She was like, um that it was different with what Karen went through because what Karen went through was public. It was in the papers. And um, Karen was like, but this was on the receipt paper. This was on that credit card paper. I think credit card paper beats Washington Post. It sure do. Yes, it do. Um, and it then reads, tries to read this blurb from Twitter. But apparently it came from, a, from the same blog that robert been leaking information to y'all remember that episode where they was at big reese house for that um crab boy with no seasoning no old bay remember that the bad crab boy the water only crab boy and candace told them like girl you've been leaking stuff to blogs 
and the person done told me and then we heard the audio y'all remember that d h thank you for the super for the super chat say the notebook don't be lying it sure don't thank you for the super chat and the endorsement for my notebook the notebook don't be lying brian patterson said the story wasn't even worth five dollars it wasn't it wasn't thank you so much dh yeah the crab boy with no seasoning girl the crab boy with no seasoning i don't even know what why why where they do that at jen jones hey girl anita say karen reminded them why she will always be the grand dame always and forever like heat wave so yeah so that happened and so anyway andy went reading this blurb from this this the same blogger and asking her well oh but season three didn't you say that you would choose what you and chris would, would share with the public and whatever child why candace came through with a small little hand grenade of her own she was like i'm not responding to any blog that because that's the any blog that's friends with robert that she leaking information to i say oh what you say randa randa say also what makes that paywall stunt so intentional is that robin is not a stupid person her background is pr so she ought to have known better child y'all know that pr background ain't it is cap right you know that's not real because i found out about that it wasn't that she really had a background in pr i heard she ended up trying to not trying to had recently before she started this show got a job at a pr firm but i don't think she was actually doing the pr but that's the story she ran with so this does make her look extremely stupid lady t thank you for being 181. Mm -hmm. yolanda say yep and folks claim candace poster boards fell flat while she actually exposed robin's hypocrisy for what she accused monica doing i'm just saying they could holler that all they wanted because they ain't like the way it came out but it was what it was now bravo was a, a trooper to blur it out but she sure brought out the poster boards and was like no because apparently she had a screenshot so she blowed it up to make sure everybody saw it now what in my opinion what she should have did was um flyers like she like sheree did with the sheep with the sheen news Candy should have post should have printed flyers and just said take one pass it around like they used to do in um sunday school class that's what she should have did okay but she said this was the blogger and um the, the the group the group chat or whatever that she's in with two different bloggers and then she leaks information to them apparently she was talking about giselle too and the fact that she was mad because she said remember now during the scene she was laughing talking about oh no oh no one just talks loud because he's a coach you know he, he can't hear good because he's a coach and he was just talking loud idiot ash 1908 hello my dear and beautiful sister said i'm new to the channel and i love it you are witty funny and on point thank you sis do i detect another pretty girl on my porch i believe i do thank you for the support and thank you for being here welcome welcome and welcome again so listen she during that scene made up that cock and bull story while smiling and grinning in giselle's face only to go to the bloggers the group chat with two different bloggers to tell them that she was mad and should she release a video of something and i'm sitting there like girl girl so you're not just a coward with your man you a coward with your one friend too you a coward you are a coward which lets me further know that when giselle did that during the season remember we talked about it we talked about it and when she did it during the season i had my misgivings i said okay maybe possibly could it be that they talked about it this is something they're just gonna do or is giselle like intentionally distancing herself from robert's stink i think she's trying to she was literally distancing herself or giving herself a little room a little wiggle room to get away from robert's stink okay it's almost like i'm gonna do this to help you out to cover your tracks we're gonna go after chris bassett try to make him a story but if it blows up you're on your own because <laughs> that's what it gave she definitely distanced herself from the stench by saying he yelled at me and i didn't like it Mm hmm And that would be why. Oh, thank you. 
And that would be why Robert was so mad. She was mad. Like, what? if you my friend, why would you get on TV in front of the camera to tell people this man screamed at you and you know what kind of scrutiny I'm under because of what I did and you helped me do? Hey, even say Giselle was gearing up to throw her under the bus. That was and that was rocky you could tell oh yes so apparently candace had the proof she had the receipts of the screenshots of the group chat and i'm laughing because whoever candace's inside person is baby they got everything and the two bloggers gonna have to check their whole camp to see who leaked the information to candace because she sure got it baby she sure got it this is messy Giselle was talking about, oh, it don't bother me. It don't bother me. You were bothered, ma'am. You were completely bothered. You were over bothered. And I was here for it. Go, Candace, go. Now, of course, she had to say she wasn't bothered because they were trying to take some of the sting out of that moment. No, baby. Mm -mm. All the sting was still in that moment. It was. Yes, it was. So, they ask um andy asked karen um candace again if she still you know believes after watching the season back if she still believe robert really was in cahoots with that story to try to cover for one and she said yes she does believe it now what's funny is you got robert sitting over there oh god you see you see they ask her whether whether, whether she believes you would do something what you having all these history fits and conniptions for Girl, you can't, you are not in any position to make those kind of faces, Jim Carrey, Vera DeMilo, lady gentlemen. You are in no position to make those sorts of faces. Why? What, what's with all this wild, wildly gesticulating all over the place? Why are you doing that? You claim you don't like her, you're not her friend, you don't want nothing to do with her. So, why are you so bothered that she's still sticking to her gun that she believes that you did exactly what you did because you did it? You did it. Mm-hmm. Anita said, get a stinging from Monique's binder. Child, that was the sting heard around the world. And you know what else, Anita? Now that you mention that binder, now that you mention it, that's the same the same look she had on her face when Monique read out past the Holy Horse phone number and she said, yeah, 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 that's his number. That's the exact same look she had on her face when she found out that Robert had been talking trash about her, saying that she done pissed her off and she should post stuff on, on this video on Sunday on social media. She had the same look on her face, talking about she ain't bothered. Use the lie. Use the lie. And the truth ain't in you. You're lying. The truth is not in you. Okay? So anyway, moving right along. And so after that, um, she still says she believes she did it. And they start asking Candace, well, what is it that you would need from Robert? Now we all know Candace is a water bag. Okay. I got some, I got some people I know like that. You can't talk to them about nothing without them getting emotional or getting upset. Even when they angry, they cry. Y'all know people like that. If they get mad, frustrated, the water start coming. I'm not that sort of person. I'm not like you can darn near, you know, shoot me in my kneecap and I'm really not finna cry for you. But there's some people cry at the drop of a hat, and we all know it. So when they asked her that, and she went trying to talk about what she needed from Robin in that moment, she was like, I don't have any tissue. Like, it was coming, and she knew she was going to mess her face up. So Andy was like, I got some, I got some. And then we get Giselle clapping and laughing, and oh, here come the tears. Here come them tears. Here, and this picture is compliments of Couture Bay. Get a look at this picture right here. Look at Karen, and then look at, look. So that was the look on her face. That picture is compliments of Couture Bay. She sent me that screenshot and it was just so perfectly fitting. It was so perfectly fitting. Matter of fact, let me just leave it there. So if I want to drop again, I can. Now, what's so interesting about this is we know Candace is one of those emotional people be crying at the drop of a hat. And we know Giselle don't normally give us that much of a show. Now, BJ Dez, I don't know if you're still here, but I sure hope you are. Because I told you to put a pen in a thought that you had much earlier in this life. Uh, now remember, y'all, 
earlier on, BJ Dez was in our chat and she made an excellent point. And I remember who said it. She said something along the lines. Now I'm paraphrasing because if you ain't here to talk up for yourself, I might tell it wrong. I was not writing. I had a notebook, but no pen. But she said something along the lines of what I was thinking, being that Giselle was putting on this show and was acting extremely ugly, way more animated than we've ever seen her, beha seen her behave. And that may have a direct correlation with them putting her in that second chair. I think it bothered her far more than she was willing to admit. And it's coming out in her behavior. Take a look at this picture one more time and I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all what I think. And one one more time, look at Robert's wig. Look at that wig. Sad and pathetic. So she's sitting over there just cackling, ha, 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 and clapping and going on and acting up. Yeah, she ain't no animated person, honey. That was, that was nervousness. That was irritation. That was all of these things. It was a culmination of everything put together simply because, simply because she didn't like the fact that she didn't feel the same level of protection from production or from Andy. Um, Randa says Giselle does something like, like that and then wonders why Candace and Wendy didn't reach out to her when her daddy passed. It's hard to have sympathy for someone who's inherently mean and nasty. Don't forget nasty. Say that part pissed me off so bad with Gizzard acting a darn fool. She's so childish and ignorant. She is. And don't forget, she still talks like 12 years a slave. California cutie say, I'd rather see someone crying with feeling than heartless, non-emotional Giselle. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Yep. Look at Robert's. Look at Robert's cheap seams. Mm-hmm. Y'all hit the engagement button. Like, not a scarecrow's hat. I kept getting, you know, do like is, do like is a perfect place. Mm -hmm. Yvette said, I think that's when Candace decided she wasn't coming back. Yeah, she ain't got time for this to sit up here and let this helper just talk to her crazy because the minute Candace say something back, Candace is going to be the villain because her skin too dark. You can't, you can't keep it real. People can be nasty to you, victimize you, lie on you, your husband, your children, your mama, everybody. But the minute you say something back, to anybody on Team Yellow, you are a villain, honey. So nasty, so rude. So nasty, so rude. Mm-hmm. Anita said, remember, Gizzard was the first lady, so she programmed to be bothered but not show it. Mm-hmm. You say, you, okay, the baby says she thinks Giselle lost protection when she participated in the Patreon stunt. <laughs> yeah, she did. She thought so. She thought so, but she really made herself look ugly and nasty. Giselle does sound like she from the Reconstruction era of Jim Crow decades. Mm -hmm. Nobody laughed but them. They were on their own, being loud. It got so bad that, um, hey, Tutu, for your info, thank you for being 196. It got so bad that Andy had to ask her, like, hush, because I'm trying to hear what she got to say, and then I want to hear what you got to say. Like, it was really out of control and nasty. And Andy ended up saying, that's kind of mean. And you know, Candace and her little mouth child, she's like, she's a F and B. I see. Well, C D E F G H I J K to you too. She hit her with the letter, honey. She's a F and B, honey. Um, where's her young boyfriend with his young girlfriend? Because <laughs> he don't go with grandma. But in any event, so that happened. That was an ugly, ugly situation. I think Karen's face said it all. Karen's face said it all. That's why I decided to leave it right there. Um, so that's when I understood what Candace was saying, but I don't understand how long it's going to take her to get it through her head. So Candace is upset because she felt like this is really my friend. And I just wanted my friend to acknowledge that what happened hurt me and my husband. Okay. She wanted her friend to acknowledge like that my friend is hurt. Well, that's what happens when somebody is your friend. But when that person is not your friend, Candace, that's not going to happen. And what I don't understand on when it comes to Candace Dillard Bassett, why were you so invested that you wanted to believe that you were friends with somebody on Team Yellow and you needed to believe it so bad? How many times does this lady have to let you know she was never your friend? She has told you in no uncertain terms, ad nauseum, 
that she was never your friend. Candace, dear, wake up. We know that you have the ability to come to the realization of things. We've watched you do it. We watched you stop being childish when it came to your mama looking out to your, for your best interests. We have watched you over time stop painting your face up like a squirrel with that over contouring. Now we would like to watch you, dear, grow the hell up and recognize when you've been fooled. A lot of us have thought people were our friends and found out they were never our friends. We've had family, some of us, and found out that you were never for me. You never really cared about me. And guess what? That's a part of life. It's unpleasant. Move on. Move on. I understood it, though. I understood it. I'm human. Contrary to popular belief, I'm human, so I feel stuff. I get it. I just don't act out on my feelings. So people sometimes think, well, Nitra ain't got no feelings. She got them. She just don't let her feelings rule over her because she's not an animal. But I got why she was upset. And then when they asked Robin, well, what would you need? I don't need anything from her. I think that she should just, she shouldn't want anything to do with me if she thinks that I did. So basically, if she holds to what she believes is the truth, then don't, don't expect for you to pretend to be her friend. That's fine, darling. That's fine. You don't need friends, Robin. You need a good hairdresser, babe. And a stylist. Somebody that can break that covenant you have with the spirit of whiteness. Chris B, hey boo. Say so she really wanted that yellow heifer to really like her because behind closed doors, Robin was probably going in on Giselle a little bit and all, but Candace too old to be so soft. Child, that's what happens when you've been sheltered too much. Dot had that girl sheltered real bad. Um, Riri C said, I think Andy knows he got a problem with those Chris accusations, maybe legal issue, because Giselle said Chris made her go in that. That's coming up. From them lying cows. It's coming. Yet, yet, say, right. I was like, this the most crunk at a reunion because after seeing her seat, she said, oh, I'm going I'm to have to raise my energy. She did, but it was, it's a crash. It's a, it's a train wreck. Emotional stability is key. Robin Flat, I said, I want to be her friend. Candace need to take that for what it is. She keep thinking that, oh, it's just a moment. My friend is just mad. We'll make up. That would be true if she was ever your friend, darling. She wasn't. Oh, yeah, it is. It's it's very real. It's very real. And the baby corrected me. She said, not soft, daft. She is daft. That she is. She's intelligent, but she's very daft when it comes to common sense. She's missing it. Okay, Ray Ray said, don't forget a life coach who specializes in cleanliness. And a bishop with the best blessed oil in the business. Um. Emma Crawford said Robin and Gizzard Nick were never fr Candace's friend in the first place. They weren't, but she was so desperate to be friends with these people. I think she still has not been able to come to terms with the fact that you were made a fool of. You were. They were never your friends there. They never liked you. They always had an undercurrent of envy and wanting to do you harm. Hey, U.S. Army brat. So that happened. Okay. Um, after she want nothing from there and then they asked her about her final words on her marriage, honey, we talking about the lady gentleman, Robert Dixon. Um, she goes on to say that she's had this man in her life for 28 years and that families go through things and she's not going nowhere. And she, you know, they want a family and blase squase. So girl, we got it. You want window dressing. You don't care. If he cheat, you don't care if he, you know, it, it, hell, is it even cheating? I think you just have him round just to have him around. I don't even think that's really your man. We still have not seen a marriage license. At least I have not. Okay. And I know people who have been looking and have not been able to locate one. So we don't even know if that's really her man, but we know you don't care who he sleep with. We know you don't care if he yells at you. You know, we know you don't care if he tells you that you make his skin crawl. You don't care if he curses you out. You don't care that he won't even help you secure a check so you can take care of yourself because he is epically unreliable you don't care if that man has you back taking cold showers you and your children okay so we know you don't care got it right Juan would have to leave her and then she might chase him or use the children to kind of leverage him back in there it's giving that type of energy and it's very sad because like i said i don't care for her as a person she represents absolutely everything i hate 
in any woman. However, it's unfortunate to watch her, you know, just allow some man to drag her a country mile. That's that's just that's unacceptable. But anyway, so that happened. Then we get to Karen and they're talking about her pave event and calling her the fence humper. And, you know, she told y'all she don't ride the fence. She is the fence or whatever. And they start showing, you know, scenes from the entire season, from the entire season of, you know, people complaining about Karen and Giselle going to Karen, talking about the death threats and Giselle wanting her to take sides, the trip to Surrey, Giselle having a fit about, oh, she invited Wendy and Candy, so I'm not going. And like, you know, Karen was really trying to pull them together. These people were not to be pulled together. And I won't say that Wendy and Karen were not Wendy and Karen, but Wendy and Candace were resistant. But absolutely, Giselle was was absolutely resistant. And of course, true to form, um, Robert was playing follow the leader. Um, Karen um, was asked about her being refreshed for her triple 20. And she said she did get the face refreshed. And Ashley was like, well, what about the body? And it, like, girl, don't mention body. Young as you are, you look terrible. You look like a skint, unseasoned chicken every day of your life. Where are your hips, darling? Where are your hips? It's sad. It's sad. And we ain't even going to talk about the concave between your thighs. We're not. Because the way Ashley's thighs are set up, she could literally cross her legs and still get a pap smear. I don't even know how it's possible. But the fact that she was the one that wanted to ask about Karen's body. Oh, sugar. Oh, darling. Audacity. You bought it in bulk. You bought it in bulk. And Karen served it right back. She returned volley, hit a heart with the, oh, no, honey, I'm going to leave the body alone. The body is right where it needs to be. The body is banging. I say, go on, Miss Karen. When I'm 60, I want to get my body where it's banging, too. But I don't know. I don't know if I could pull it off. But I would sure like to look like Karen when I'm 60. Karen bad. Karen is bad. But, yeah, and it was like once she served that back, honey, Ashley had nothing else to offer. Ian, what's up, nephew? Thank you for being like number 203. Okay, okay. Yes, honey, skin chicken season with ice cubes. That's that's the only thing that Ashley's ever serving up. Yeah, she's always been truthful about her nips, tucks, tweaks, and pinches and stuff. Okay. Poetic lyrics said a woman allowing herself to be disgraced by a man behind closed doors and publicly. Hate to see it. Me too. I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan. Never let a man do that to you. Karen saw a real doctor and Rob goes to Dr. U-Haul. Rob ain't went to Dr. Nobody. She didn't even go to Dr. Feelgood. Not as she up there playing with nasty toys and fighting that man for a remote control and blankets. Tutu say, you can definitely pull it off. Girl, all I need to do is hit the, hit the power ball. Ooh. If I could hit the power ball or the mega millions, girl, I'd be bad as Karen in, in, in a year and a half. Let me quit playing. I ain't gonna never be bad as that lady. Yes, pap smear. Legs crossed. Karen shut her down bad. She shut her down bad. So after that, Ashley got quiet. I felt like that was the best course of action. Ashley just keep it on the hush. Okay, don't say nothing else, baby. Don't say nothing else. Um. Then they asked, like, you know, do the ladies, you know, is, is that why the ladies get frustrated with you? Or do you think they get frustrated with you for kind of being on the fence? Karen says, no, nah, I think some of them just enjoy coming after me. And of course, Candace was like, no, it's not like that. You know, she do be on the fence, but she don't change who she is depending on who she around. And that's all that matters. Nobody should demand that anyone pick sides. No one should demand anything. Um, Karen made an excellent point. I think that's why I kind of like her. Even when she's not right, at least she's being real according to how she feels. Um, she says she's for, she's for what's right. So in her mind, it's right and wrong. It's not you or her or her or you. It's right and wrong. If you're wrong, then I, you know, like we got to call you wrong. And if you're in the right, then I'm on your side. And I totally agree. I'm the same kind of person. I don't really care who did it, who ain't did it. Right and wrong. Period. Um, so I thought that was that was pretty cool. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, there's, then they started talking about the, the paved thing um, and the ladies who were affected by that type of assault. You know, we don't have to get into um, graphic details because, you know, there is censorship on YouTube and certain words I don't think really need to be said anyway. Um, then they asked Mia, they showed the, the, the scene where Mia is doing the fake crying. 
um, in the back about Jacqueline. And that's why she's so hard on Jacqueline. I told y'all at the beginning of that season. Now we're going to go back. We're going to y'all know where we're going back to go on, put it in the chats, type it in the chat where we're going, because I'm going to tell you what I said during that pave event early on this season when everybody was there and Mia gave us that scene where she jumps up from the table with that terrible acting. She's worse than Drew Sidora ran to the back of that venue to fake cry and Ashley followed her so she could set up a scene. Y'all know where we go and put it in the chat, put it in the chat. Where are we going, y'all? Back down memory lane. We're going right back down memory lane. Now, y'all remember when that happened. What did I tell y'all was going on? What did I tell you? I said Mia is doing that to set the scene for why her and Jacqueline are going to reconcile. And that's going to be her way to try to get Jackie back on this show. Y'all remember I told you that? What did we get many, 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 many episodes later? We get Jacqueline being brought back into the group by Sharice to the crab ball with no seasoning, no oil, no old bed, no butter. And for them to go downstairs and talk. And for her to bring up the exact same thing she said at that PAVE event, claiming that she was assaulted. I don't know whether she was or not, but we know Mia is a liar. Once I catch you lying, everything you say is suspect. I don't care what you're talking about, okay? Then for her to say that that's why she had an issue with her and that's why she had been being so mean to her. And for them to go downstairs, reference that incident, and then have this fake put together conversation. And so now she's sitting on the reunion stage when Andy asked, well, how are you a Jacqueline now? Oh, we're a lot closer. We talk every day. You lying, bloated lip hooker. You pothole-faced hooligan. You and that tramp been talking. Y'all ain't never stopped talking. All of the nonsense and shenanigans that took place at last year's reunion where y'all both claiming to have receipts and you had none, foolishness foolishness the fact that y'all had people on youtube and i told y'all then i was never going to get involved with that y'all should remember y'all uh, i won't say y'all but a lot of people came running into my chat oh jacqueline sisters on youtube and she says and i told y'all i don't want to hear that i told y'all this was fake and so now here we are today dearly bloated yeah dearly, dearly bloated Dearly bloated, we are gathered here today to see the outpouring of the lies from Mia and Tacky Jackie. I told y'all. Told y'all. Told you. Listen, say it again. You was mad at her, but you buying her a poor child, please. Hello. I don't believe they friends like that because we looked at the episode of Say Yes to the Dress when she was marrying Gordon, Jacqueline was nowhere to be found. She was not one of the bridesmaids. She was not there. She was not the maid of honor. This is supposed to have been your friend since 15. Why the hell wasn't she your maid of honor or matron of honor? Why was why was she not one of your um, bridesmaids at all? Give me shelter to say thank you for saying what needs to be said. If Mia is the future RHOP, it's officially done. Right. Then the person pushing that the hardest would be Carlos King, somebody who is notoriously anti-black woman. I'm not surprised. Destiny say Jackie would be a great addition to the lineup. Ew, no, she wouldn't. We don't need another liar. We already got one. We need her gone. You remember that, Brian? I told y'all. So listen. So she told that about oh, her and Jacqueline talk every day. So then we get to Giselle and these death threats. So I'm going to ask y'all something. For those of you who watched, she ain't jealous of no Jacqueline, California. Cutie, them whores are in it together. Why y'all keep falling for the banana in the tailpipe? They literally showed y'all it was a game. And y'all still don't... I'm done. I'm done. Moving on to Giselle and the death threats. I'm going to ask y'all something. Why did we not get a proof, a screenshot, a picture of not one of the death threats? Not one. Not one. Not one. They showed one tweet that Candace liked. They showed one tweet that Candace liked. I want y'all to see this. I'm going to pull myself down and we coming right back.
So that was the so-called proof that production provided. Hey, Legina the Jackson, thank you for being 216. So that was the supposed proof that production provided that Candace was liking tweets. She can like a tweet that said that, like, let's, let's take a look at this thing. Let's take a look at this thing. You getting all these death threats, but you ain't provided not, not now scrap of proof. And I do mean now. And I know now is not a word. But y'all going to learn some dialect on this porch, okay? Not now scrap of proof. Let me go deeper into the dialect. Not am scrap. Not even now. We're going to drop the N. I don't even know how to spell it. Y'all spell it out in the, in the chat. Not am scrap. Approved. Now, I don't know how y'all going to spell it, but I want somebody to type it in the chat. How do you try to create this narrative that you're a victim and Candace somehow victimized you because you've gotten all these death threats and they're all related to her? So where is this? Where's the proof that y'all didn't show us and scrap? Lady Blue 57, thank you for being 217. You say I was thinking the exact same thing. No receipts. Of any threats, right? Where, where they at? That might be high spell. That's now. Mm hmm But I want to know. Am one of y'all tell me how to spell? It. Not am scrap of proof. Not am scrap. Now this is what was on the thing, on this so-called proof. Now somebody named Leo says, break it down and sound it out, Candace. A dark-skinned black woman that said Giselle, a light-skinned black woman, has privilege due to her proximity to whiteness. What did she mean by that? If Candace came out with similar claims, it wouldn't be taken as seriously as Giselle's. So this was somebody just basically saying in plain, no uncertain terms, what Candace's gripe was. And she liked it. That's your proof of a death threat? Where, where they at? Yes, yeah, she lying. She lying. That's why her neck keep folding up like an accordion or a church fan. Yes, yeah, she lying. Give me shelter to say Giselle is a dangerous woman and no one at Bravo and that HR department are putting a stop to her. I really hope Chris and Candace have a lawsuit in their hip pockets. Make Giselle homeless and toothless. Now, why you want to take this lady teeth now? And scrap. I like that. That looks right. That looks right. Hello, beautiful people. Yes. She said homeless and toothless. That's a Beverly Hills reference. Who the hell is making people homeless and toothless in Beverly Hills? Y'all gonna make me start watching them heifers. Homeless and toothless? Hey. California cutie said they've been bullying Candace and I never liked that. She don't deserve it. She don't. She don't. Talking about I was told you'd be talked to yeah talk to her about, about what liking tweets girl bye what does that even mean each ring on her neck is another lie girl do you know if she had a ring for every lie she would look like one of those people down there in the amazon rainforest with them metal rings around her neck she ain't got a ring for every lie now that's too much she would just make candace openly called out her colorism yeah well she just like her daddy be proud be proud okay be very proud you say oh they be tussling over there ah oh me oh my death threats let me be let me be victim let me gaslight let me use my yellow privilege hello hello say so homeless not toothless is the fundraiser name homeless not toothless okay because i was like this is sounding like this sound like something out of baltimore <laughs> Brandon gave it to me right oh lord my sister on the phone said Giselle carries her lies in her legs is that why they're swollen sis melanated energy says Candace should be could be assaulted on set in front of camera and because she's dark skinned she would be blamed and made to show proof girl they brought lord Goro they brought Ashley's puppet friend to attack her. Now, Ashley did ask if the cameras was down first and they brought somebody to physically attack her, but they want this girl, not they, Giselle wants this girl to be liable 
for some crazed fan that may or may not even exist issuing a death threat. Geneva says, and the excess lies go to her neck. That's why she fixed it and it got worse. I'm trying to work and cannot. Now, I told you just fake sneeze. Fake sneeze if the laughing come get you. So they need to change that nonprofit organization name. That's messed up. Homeless, not toothless. What if you homeless and your teeth missing? You can't get no help. Give me shelter. Say notice as Giselle becomes more vindictive and duplicitous. Her neck swells and her jaws get longer like an old swampy bullfrog. Jesus. Girl, listen, they say it's in this figures, honey. Sabrina Osman, hello, lovely. Thank you for being like number 225. Legina La Jackson, thank you so much for the super sticker. I appreciate you. So listen, she pulled a death threat thing and she was told Candace would be talked to because God forbid you like any tweet you like on the on the empty net. Um, then she goes through this long list. Just F Giselle, F Giselle, Giselle's the devil, Giselle's the imp, Giselle is evil, Giselle's raggedy. You are all of those things, darling. You raggedy, evil. Miss Dorothy pointed to a snake and said, That was you. You are raggedy. You ain't got no style, girl. And you ain't even smart enough to take a water pill before you get on camera. Always looking like you walking on water and stuff. All that. So, yeah, you are raggedy. Girl, your weave don't be right. This is your first season wearing clothes that look halfway decent, and most of them is giving rainbow dots and fashion Nova. This reunion is the first one you showed up to looking like somebody. Now, I'm just saying, prognosis say Giselle want to be teacher's pet so bad. Legina, we appreciate you, baby. So, she did all that. And so when she said it, Candace was like, all true. And I like it. I love, listen, I love a girl who owns everything she said. I said it all, all true. And I think that all true was a double meaning. It was a double-edged sword. I think she was saying, it's true that I said it. And it's true that you that you uh, match the description. I think that's what she was saying. Okay. Um, well, sis. Um, you let your crown drop, you get your, you know, you get your crown back, sis, and you come up here and you can promote your whole channel. You can play clips, you can play reels. We can go to your channel, like, girl, you know, we got your back, but you know what, to do? Grab your crown back, girl. I know YouTube be taking y'all crowns, but that is a perk of being a royal family member. We will promote any business you got, long as you're not selling your cookies, okay. And I mean that. Don't come over here with no cookie selling. But anything else that you promote and selling, it can be weave, finger polish, YouTube channels, pla other platforms, digital books, written books, audio books, uh, barbecue, lawn cutting service. I promote everything that you got. You just have to be a member. Okay? That's all. So back to this. So then Candace called it out. She said, listen. It is dangerous and unfair to claim that her issues with Giselle equals death threats because it don't. Just some, just, just because somebody points out your biases and the way you're doing your thing. You know what I'm saying? That don't mean that you're supposed to get a death threat. If somebody feel that strongly about you, then you need to call the law. Oh, girl, I know you ain't selling no cookies. Now, you know, I know you. I know you ain't got no cookies for sale. I know that. But I had to put that out there because there's some people that, you know, they'll let a cup, they'll let a dozen go. <laughs> and let me be clear. I'm not mad at you because a girl's got to eat. But I just can't promote it. That's all I'm saying. I know you ain't selling no cookies. California cutie about to make me holler over here. She's so crazy. Yes. I Listen, I know my sis ain't selling no cookies. I know that. I know better than that. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. But I just want y'all to know any members, and that goes for anybody, just as a FYI, quick PSA. If you have a business, we do have our Black Business Spotlight. If you got a business, I want to promote your business, okay? I've got your back. And y'all know I am the mouth of the South. I will run my mouth for you, okay? Jen Bunny say, exactly. Call the police and have an investigation done. Right, call them people. If somebody threatening your life, what is that for? Um, JJ M... JJ MS Mom, hey, say Bravo should apply some business thinking to this show. If Giselle is let go, the viewership will increase. 
people are tired of her antics and no storyline. You, now, you know when you write, you write. Tia Bala got her crown, y'all. Make sure y'all spam the chat and say welcome to our dear sis. All right, because we love you. Lady Blue says, the apple does not fall from the tree. Curtis Graves, next day, they referred to Barbara Jordan as Aunt Jemima. Oh, yeah, that's why I call him, you know, her color is peppy. Daddy Graves. Thank you for being 229, Chris B. Okay? I'm just saying. I'm only saying. Okay? Now, um, Candace made an excellent point. Um, Andy asked the girl if she liked any death threats. She said, uh, no. She, she didn't say no. She said, I have liked tweets. But the girl ain't never said she liked no death threat. They tried to twist that. But when production showed what they showed, I showed y'all what they had. I know that's right. And I want you to win. If I got anything to do with it, you know, I got your back, gal. I'll never leave you hanging, baby. Even say when threats were actually being done to Garcelle's child, there was, there was proof and an investigation. Giselle is full of crap and is. And is. And when she said the children was getting threats, that's when I knew it was a lie. Because everybody who don't like her still like her children. Her children are likable. Her children are absolutely pleasant babies. No, I don't think anybody in the world has a negative thought toward those darling children, okay? We actually pity those babies. Did y'all see how embarrassed Grace was at that nail salon when, when Giselle put that foot rag in her face? Ain't nobody sent no threats to them children. Not nobody. I don't believe that. Giselle ain't nothing but a lie, a raggedy lie. Melanated Beauty, Melanated Energy says, I believe Giselle and Robert are intellectually disabled adults that were given light skin privilege and lack ability and personality. Girl, yes. And I, I dare I say, I believe both of them have room temperature IQs. I believe it. Hey, Deborah Randall, thank you for being 129, sis. All right. I'm just saying, it, it's just some bull crap. I don't believe it. It doesn't make sense. Okay. Right. And Evie says, when Giselle is full of it and going for a sympathy play, she throw in her kids. She does. She does. She absolutely does. Meg Scott say, jiggly neck. <laughs> a lie as fast as the cat licks his booty. Lord, the jiggly neck took me out. Angel Gamer say, Bravo protects his ale. Why didn't Andy ask his ale for proof? She is a dangerous liar. I would not be anywhere near her. Me either. Because, girl, you'd have lied on me like that. I'd have made it true for you. I'm just a different type of chick. I don't deal with them type of women at all. Um, production shows their proof. And let me give y'all another quick look at their so-called proof. This is the so-called death threat that they showed. Take a peek. Literally somebody breaking down Candace, Candace's um, gripe with Giselle, and that's what Candace liked. And that was their proof. Not one death threat, not an scrap, not an scrap. Um, Candace um, mentions the podcast crap and was like, look, this uh, me liking a, uh, a, a tweet is no different than you going on your podcast to talk about me and my husband. Giselle was like, well, we talked about them one time, and Candace said one time too many. <coughs> One time too many. Um, Robert jumps in talking about, oh, it, it's real. And uh, so you saying they photoshopped the pictures of your husband's lip penis. First of all, ma'am, how do you saying a penis means you know that that was Chris's penis? What you know about Chris's penis? So that when you see a picture, you know it's his. Or maybe is it that Robert believes that only Chris has a penis? No one else has one. <coughs> if that is the case. Maybe that's why she don't think that Juan did nothing. Maybe she doesn't believe Juan has a penis. He hasn't shown it to her in so long. Maybe he just told her he ain't got it no more. Because <coughs> that's the only way what she said makes any sense. And what she was referring to was the fried chicken lady. Y'all remember her? The one that made up the story on Chris Bassett, they had the deep neck slashes, like in her neck fat. She had really like deep indented neck slashes in her in her neck. And she made up the story. And the pictures came about because a one of the TikTok people, one of those young people on the tickety talk. Okay. 
asked for proof and she sent a picture of a, of a flaccid member of a man, a, a flaccid male member. Can we say that? I think that's nice. Um, I know penis is not a dirty word. You know, young men, your bodies are not dirty. Auntie just would prefer not to say that. So we're going to say a flaccid male member with no proof of who it was attached to. Like the only way what Robert made any said would make any sense if is if only he has a male member. Only he has one. Nobody else has one. If they showed a male member, it has to be his. Nothing else don't make no sense. Say everything on back order from COVID, even penises. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. JJM's mom says if they spoke about Chris on a podcast that tens of people in their audience, multiple people heard it. Yo, wow. Yeah, he ain't got it no more. Wanda told her it, it ran out and COVID got it on back order. <coughs> oh, God. Trina. So he should, she should know what a limp one looked like or that's what happened when he see her. Ooh. That's cold, baby. That's cold. But yeah, she talking about the limp, you know, male member. And, um, I, I just was like, where's this coming from? And she talking about that they had voice notes and they had this and that. And it was so bad because even Andy had to bring up the fact like that lady already admitted she lied. You know what I'm saying? Like Andy took all the fire out of her little, you know, shock and awe campaign. He took all of the smoke out of her smoking gun. He like literally rained on her parade and he brought ants to Robert's picnic. He did. He imported ants from Switzerland to her picnic. Oh, the screenshots and this and that and the pictures. And Andy said that lady already admitted she lied. She already admitted she lied. Like, what are we even talking about? But they still want to try to use it. Like, well, I mean, it was said, so we're going to work. Okay. Yes, Robert was trying to pick it back up after the lady already admitted that she lied. Like, what are we doing? And she said somebody asked her to do it. And the fact that she went to Tasha K and even Tasha K was like, oh, this is bogus as hell. By the time Tasha catch on, baby, everybody should have caught it. Say, so didn't the lady's story turn out to be a whole A lie? Why was this even a topic? Because Robert was had it in her mind that she was going to try to stick something to Candace and she really made herself do luck is a perfect place. So anyway, um, Andy wanted to get somewhere with Candace and Giselle. Like, okay, can we get anywhere with you two? Can we get any type of resolution with y'all? Can we move anywhere from here? And Candace was like, look, I feel like it's enough. This lady has already demonstrated by her behavior here that she's not interested in moving forward with me. And ain't nothing good going to come out of this. And she wasn't wrong. This lady up here laughing and cackling. Mind you, let me tell you what was so ridiculous about this laughing and cackling. Let me just slide back over. Let's slide to the left. Cha-cha. Real school. That was a conversation between Robert and Candace. This was about Robert and Candace between Robert and Candace. Why was Giselle screaming, hollering, and cackling? Nobody wasn't even calling your name. Candace wasn't wrong. Candace wasn't wrong for that one. <clears throat> Honestly, she wasn't. And so, of course, Mia was like, well, I don't think she said that. That's exactly what she demonstrated. Um, and she was like, look, you wanted us to be open and honest and do everything that we can in order to, you know, see if we can move forward. She was like, this lady's not interested in doing any of those things. So Giselle comes in. Well, I listed a laundry list of things and production goes back to her saying, Giselle is evil. Giselle is the devil. Giselle is the imp. Giselle needs to be fired. Giselle is raggedy. All of those things are true. So she already owned that. Yeah, I said all those things. Now what? That ain't no laundry list. You just basically posited yourself as a victim, as per normal. As per normal, as per usual. And that's not a laundry list of anything. She was like, child, bye, doing her victim thing. So Andy was like, can y'all just be, a, can y'all take ownership of one thing, just one thing? So of course, Giselle tried to say, well, I said this last reunion, I shouldn't have said that sne sneaky link comment. And I was happy. Andy did not let her off the hook with that. I was expecting him to be like, oh, okay. Hey, chubby girl cuteness. I was expecting Andy Cohen to be like, 
Okay, Giselle, that's great. Now, Candace, what about you? He didn't do that. He was like, no, you, we already went there. So what can you take ownership for? Um, she was like, I've done nothing else to her. Girl, you've done plenty. You've done plenty. Don't, don't try it. You're such a sad liar. And so Candace was like, look, at the end of the day, um, Wendy asked her, like, if she takes ownership of, of her stuff or whatever, what are you willing to, you know, whatever. They they was really trying to mediate this thing between the two of them. Um, she said she ain't do nothing for to her or whatever. The viewer asked Candace about the tweet she made after the PAVE event, um, Karen's PAVE event, and um, basically saying it's cringy to watch somebody who's made SA allegations against this man to up be up here talking about SA. And that's what she said. That's how she feels. She got a right to it. Um, and so Giselle starts lying. Oh, I never said that. I never said that. Well, let's go back down memory lane. Put it in the chat. Back down memory lane. We going back because she did. She absolutely did. She has said even this season, he made me go in a bedroom and lock the door. That man ain't made you do nothing. You just, you're such a liar. You then turn around and you said that he was touching on a woman and rubbing on a woman. That that Deborah thing, the one that looks like Lord Goro from Mortal Kombat. You said that he touched her and that he made you go in a bedroom. So though that is absolutely inferring sexual assault, ma'am. I'm sorry. Hey Juan, what up, bro? Say Bravo put Giselle on pause. They probably need to, but I, I want to see if they're smart enough to. Krista Jones said and to try to get her to own something, but she couldn't. She just couldn't. She's a real, she's a trash human being. Hey, Aries, son. Thank you for being 239. If this is your first time, put FTL in the chat so we can welcome you properly. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, that is absolutely inferring that SA took place. Like, what are you even saying? What are you saying? Like, Giselle is a hot mess. Candace stuck to her guns. Um, Karen like stepped in and was like, listen, you know, Giselle words mean things. And when you leave things for people to draw conclusions, like you can't use certain words. Like she was really putting it to her. And, um, <clears throat> yes, girl. Woo! That's why I love California cutie. I stumbled on a photograph. Hey, it kind of made me laugh. Okay. All right. Now I'm falling fast. Back down memory lane. Oh, yes. So anyway, um, Karen told her the words mean things. Candace was like, look, you did say that. It's on tape. And she had to even ask, like, am I crazy? Like, did I not hear her? And y'all, it was so bad. Andy even said, Andy co-signed and was like, because Karen brought up, well, you know, you, you, during the confessional interview, you said he made me go in a bedroom and shut the door. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Andy was like, yeah, you did during a confessional interview, confessional, whatever. You said that. No, I didn't. And he was like, production is signaling me that you said that. She was going to hold that lie to the end. People that will like literally when you provide them with proof of what they said and you're telling them it's on tape and you still acting like shaggy talking about it wasn't me. You're a dangerous and scary person. You're not going to tell me you don't work for the devil. You're not going to tell me that you're not out here sacrificing chickens and goats, dancing around bonfires and spitting rum and burning uh, feathers and stuff like you are the devil incarnate. You lied that much. That much. Like, how do you sit up? How is your conscience that you could lie like that? People telling you they got proof and she was still lying, y'all. Even say she's so white coated. She knows she know to lie to the end and try to get her way. Yes. Lie to the end. Auntie even say Andy under fire, so he's sharing some of the smoke. Maybe so. Maybe so. But I'm sorry. Anybody who lie like that, I don't care who you are. You can be related or friend, whatever. The minute I see that you have the capacity to tell them type of lies, baby, you got to get far away from me. And I mean ASAP. I mean ASAP. Ain't nothing you going to tell me going to make me fool with you after i catch you doing stuff like that and i will say this as much as i do not like giselle let me be clear it's more common than you all think there are a lot of people who have 
that sickness because that's a spiritual sickness i don't you know i ain't trying to go deep y'all know how i am but that is a spiritual sickness that's somebody who needs deliverance okay they need deliverance prayer and deliverance and warfare because that's a that's an evil spirit in you when you can't quit lying because what they say Giselle don't know and it's gonna shut them down well he hadn't been doing it but something must have happened to make him you know tell her like girl production is signaling me that you said that I don't I can't fool with them kind of people, man, because you you are the devil. Get far, get further. Get further. You I mean, and I mean stay further too. Don't come close to me with that. So anyway, she kept on and they told her the, the producer co-signed. Giselle steady trying to argue. Wendy, that's when Wendy asked Candace, like, look, if she can own any of her foolishness. What are you willing to take ownership for? And I'm glad Wendy stepped in. Wendy usually is pretty good at being cool headed and keeping things, you know, in focus, keeping things on track, you know, where they need to be. Um, and say, and need to be worried about his own essay allegations. Go, go, Powder Rangers, Mighty Morphin Powder Rangers. Say she laughed for no reason. No wonder Candace quit. Girl. Ain't that enough to make you quit? Because next she's going to say Candace jumped in the bathroom or tried to burn her with cigarettes. Vita said, if you're a liar, you're still. If you're still, you're killed. That's what my mama said. My mama said that. I believe it, Vita. I don't trust them, Can So Candace was like, well, I apologize for my choice of words. Um, And I'm sorry that you had death threats. She said that I am not taking responsibility for your death threats because we all get them. And Giselle was like, oh, it, it was direct result. It was a girl by direct result, my foot. Just because people had, you, you're claiming that people had such a strong reaction to your colorism and anti-black behavior that they threatened to take your life. And can I talk about, like, I need a one in the chat. If I, if I can have like maybe three minutes, just three, I promise y'all three tops and I'm watching the clock. To tell y'all what's so the the what's so problematic to me about her making that claim, Couture Bay said that's probably why he's on a behind because now he have this case he he got he got his case that might be that might well be why Riri say that's why I said Andy singing a new tune about Candace and Chris considering his own allegations. Yeah, allegations is heavy. Nacho Twins, mama, congratulations on your thirty one month anniversary with the Royals. Oh, oh, no problem. I don't mind. I see ones. I got permission to, to, to bring it. Okay, thank you. And I like to ask permission because I know we're talking about one thing and y'all did not give me permission to be on a soapbox, but y'all gave me three minutes. It's 46 by 49. I'm going to shut up or sooner. Okay. What's problematic about Giselle's claims that she received death threats and it's a direct result of Candace Dillard Bassett pointing out her colorism on this show. The problem with that is now, not only, not only are you trying to make yourself a victim at the at the expense of this black woman who did not wish death on you, she did not make a threat of death against you. Now you're also make you're also weaponizing your victimhood, not only against one black lady, but you're actually what she's doing, y'all, is accusing the black community and not just the entire black community. She's accusing black women. Why do I say that? I'm glad you asked. Because your viewing demographic is going to be women mainly when it's housewives. We all know this. It don't matter the age range. It's mainly women. And there's no way in hell that Giselle, oh, she of many neck folds, is accusing white women of being so incensed by her colorism that they're threatening death on her and her children. What she is inferring, what she is actually saying is that black women are so violent and so triggered by Candace pointing out her colorist behavior, co pointing out her colorist narratives, pointing out her problematic behavior toward a black woman or multiple black women on this platform, that black women are so unhinged and so violent and so aggressive that we're even deadly. Oh, yes. And I'm not surprised because this is the daughter of Curtis Graves. This is the daughter of Pappy Graves, who
who thought it was perfectly acceptable to refer to someone who was running against him in, for public office as the Aunt Jemima of politics. So you learned it from your daddy. But what she's saying is that you black women, she just called us the N with the hard R. You eggers are threatening violence against me. See, th this is the problem, Giselle. If you don't want us to point out your colorism, my dear, you're going to have to stop acting like Miss Millie from Color Purple. Y'all remember that scene? When Miss Millie told Sophia, you can't go home for the holiday because I don't know how to drive. And those boys attacked me. She absolutely pulled a Miss Millie. So she got her, in the words of Candace Dillard Bassett, your white looking A on that platform to say that these black women were attacking you. These black women on social media were threatening to take your life. These black women on social media were threatening your babies who actually look like us. Giselle, you are disgusting. You are worse than, you are worse than a bleeding, hemorrhaging yeast infection, my darling. You are disgusting. You are more putrid than an infected hemorrhoid. And shame on you. You are absolutely disgusting. And you know what else? I'm perfectly happy that you live your life as a non-black woman because honestly, dear, I wouldn't have you. Now back to the notes. I just had to get that off my chest. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, but your message was received. Your message was well received. I do not believe for one minute I or any other black woman who watches this show who has been greatly offended and disgusted by the colorism and anti-black woman sentiment on this platform is low brow, low class, low rent, or gutter butt as you that we would ever get on the internet and make a death threat to the likes of you. Who the hell wants to get your filth on the sole of their shoe? You ain't been able to get the obstacle course out your yard. You who lives in a she shed. You who has to pull her neck up like a gym sock every three to six months. Girl, bye. I'm not going to drag her. I didn't mean to do that. Diane Payne say Giselle would have put that in the blogs and showed the police. Well, she sure would have. She sure would have, but she pulled her Miss Millie. Those, those negresses attacked me, Andy. Emma Crawford say Gizzard, Gizzard neck is full of crap. She is. She is. And if she lets some of that crap out, if she takes some prune juice, her legs will go down. Because it's settling around her ankles. Dana Cutler says she deserved a cold glass of lemonade made by Suge Avery. Either that or she can go drink a tall glass of bleach because she's trash. Anywho, after all that happened or whatever, Andy asked for um Robert and... um. Karen to say three nice things about each other. Um, Robert was like, she looks great. She's witty and she's a great mom. Karen gave us pure comedy and said that um, she's good friends to Giselle. She's intelligent and she's strategic with her woe is me, you know, act, but she's a nice person. That's what she says. So Robert asked Karen, you know, why she's still going back to this Candace thing. Mind you, I want y'all to remember Robert keeps telling us she don't care about Candace. She don't care about their friendship. She don't care. She don't care. She don't care. But what she does care about, if you ask me, is the fact that Candace has stuck to her guns and she can verbally defend her position. And I think that's what bothers Robert because Robert circles right back around to the Candace thing and asks Karen this fake hypothetical because it wasn't hypothetical. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't just something she pulled out of the air. It was absolutely directed at Candace when she asked Karen, what would you do if a friend went on social media and went on Watch What Happens Live and said that they believed that you did blah, blah, smackety, smackety. Girl, shut the hell up. You said you don't care. Why are you still talking about it? Why are you still talking about it? You like a dog with a bone. You let your hairstylist get away with embarrassing you every time she touch your head. But because Karen, because Candace peeped game and called it, you can't let this one go. You don't let a whole hotel receipt go, but you still holding on to this like a red nose. So anyway, and so 
Robert was like, you know, because she kept saying, well, would you be okay with it? And Karen was like, that has already happened to me, and I'm still here smiling with all you helpers. So what are you saying? Oh, no, it ain't happened to you. She said, in one form or another, it has, and it has. They have all gone on Watch What Happens Live, several interviews, social media, and taken rumors and ran with them and gave their opinions on Karen. They said, oh, I believe Karen's lying. At one point, Giselle was on social media saying, telling the lie that, oh, Karen was, Karen was, um, stalking me and Karen had embarrassed her like girl you live way out in West Bubba Hump you know well and ain't nobody burning all that gas to come drive by your cabin in the woods like ain't nobody doing that so she has gone through that in one form or another and I agree with Karen so then of course Robert's like oh see you can't be objective when it come to me you not on the fence when it come to me no she already told you she's on the side of right and wrong it don't matter who who it fall to it's not like oh i didn't agree with you last time so since i'm supposedly defense i have to agree with you this time even if i think you're wrong no she thinks you're wrong so karen was like look girl because i have a problem with you she's like i got a problem with you she said because one minute you bringing a jbl speaker to the dinner table to play with this girl said then the next minute you sitting on the curb crying talking about what she said she was like girl you got to come figure out which way you coming from robert still talking about oh but all i did was play her words but robert that's not all you did you did not just play her words we're going back down memory lane again back down memory lane because what actually happened was candace went live and was like oh child i don't i don't trust none of these holes or however she put it but like directly after saying that the next words out of her mouth was Oh, yeah, I love Robin. I support Robin. Robin says she's going to do skincare. I support that. She's awesome. She's great. And Robert literally put that speaker on that table last year, just played her, you know, being glib, talking about, oh, I ain't studying none of these holes or however she put it, and immediately cut it before she said, oh, I support Robin, yada, yada, yada. And we already know why you did it. You were angry because you, matter of fact, you wasn't even mad with Candace when Candace arrived. Y'all remember what happened last year? Let me take you back down the lane. Mia had already attacked Wendy. Candace was not there. She came late. She came late like the next day. When Candace arrived, Robin was not angry with Candace. She hugged Candace. She immediately ran to Candace to try to get them on her side to tell them what happened with Wendy so they could make Wendy the villain. And Mia was great for attacking her, throwing drinks, trying to hit her with a phone and a, and a purse and all, and her own nails, beating her own behind. They were trying to give her the rundown. And then when Candace didn't go along with the story and wanted to talk to Wendy for herself, when she found out Wendy was gone, that's when all of a sudden, now uh, Robert is so incensed by this live stream that Candace did. I'm going to put the speaker on the table and try to embarrass you because you didn't feel like that when that girl first got there because we saw you run up and hug her, embrace her, and then proceed to try to tell her a cock and bull story uh, why Wendy was at fault for being physically attacked by a large Hispanic gentleman at bar one in, in Miami-Dade County. Now, that's what you did. That's what you did. Okay? Moving right along. So, um, she's like, but you ain't no fence because you, 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 you biased when it come to me. No, she said right and wrong. If you're wrong, girl, she got to call it out. And so Karen left it at, girl, I am the fence, and I'm the fence that's willing to work with you. Because she will. She she told her, I'm willing to work with you. So I come clearly to fence because other people might not. Because you, you know, you trifling. So then we see backstage Mia talking to this ink man on the darn um what you call it. On the um, you know what I'm trying to say. On the FaceTime, because y'all know I ain't got no iPhone. I got to get this thing in my head what it is. And um, we see G in the background, and G is like, hey, hey, Ink, what's up, man? And they talking or whatever. Oh, I see you got your black on. So it's, it looked like it's a whole family affair. Now, happy to be happy. Congratulations on your 31-month royal anniversary. Yeah. Yeah, Mia says she keeping her spot. Yes, yes. Even if she got to bring the man and the, and the husband, all of them, she bringing everybody. Um, Yolanda says, sadly, there's black women who support her not seeing her colorism unless they're that themselves. A lot of a lot of our sisters are extremely colorist. And some of our sisters who are darker complected have a lot of internalized hate and internalized biases toward themselves. So, of course, they, you know, accept that behavior. Yeah, that was cringy. That backstage moment was super cringy. Um, 
that close up on Mia's profile was tough. That was tough. That skin is ooh, it's like stucco. Hey T Monique, thank you for being 252. Um, Mia back there talking about, you know, then they brought her back out and she's talking about the business and the lawyer offing itself. They showing a clip from the season, the divorce, the whole lie about him emptying her bank account. You know, we've already dissected that. It's not worth going back down memory lane for Mia because she lied too much. Um we saw where Gordon reached out to Eddie and Chris about their situation. Um, Candace got tickled when they played that clip of um, Gordon saying, you won't fail, go to the carnival. She thought that was funny. Andy asked where Mia's living. She said she's currently in a tiny um, penthouse in D.C. She says it's the smallest space she ever been lived, that she's ever lived in. I won't say ever, but she said in recent years. Um, yeah, the pits are real. They are. And um, they asked where, where G is staying. Say G got an apartment in Carolina, but he finna move across the street up there in D.C. So he still got bread to be mobile. He just don't have bread like he used to. Honey Hunter say, finally. All right. Thank you. Welcome from Germany, girl. Thank you for being 253. Okay. So in any event, um, she tells them the ink story about how she met him in high school and they was liking each other. And then he wanted to go to Atlanta because he wanted to be on the radio. He had big dreams of being on the radio. Ain't this sad? And she was in school. I'm like, school for what? Because Mia, we know you ain't got no education, girl. Is that the school where all the stripper heiresses go? Okay. But um, she was in school and she was working and he wanted to go to Atlanta and they lost touch and they got back together. And she claimed she only cheated on Gordon with this man one time. This is what she claimed. This is what she said. OK. Um, And so Wendy was like, girl, I'm going to just tell you because I'm going to tell you what G said, because I don't know who else he done talked to and said this to girl. But full disclosure, this man saying. He he told us, and this is what he's saying about you. He's saying that the ink man came to y'all house to try to take that baby, to try to take little Jeremiah, because he think that's his baby. And so they was like, girl, do that man still think that's his baby? Ashley say, still? And she said, yeah, he thinks so. So that's what's going on. That's what that is. Now, I'm going to tell y'all, matter of fact, let me put this stream yard, because I, I definitely want to hear what y'all got to say. You're not going to tell me. Y'all ain't got nothing to say, because y'all show sure saying mighty much in this chat. So I'm going to run that stream yard real quick. Hey, WD Rose. Right. The math ain't mathing. But I'm going to tell y'all this. What I see coming up, what I see coming up is um on the next one, since we got three of them, they just refuse to give us two and be done. But, um, yeah, one time before Gordon gave permission, child, I think it was way more than that before he gave permission. Honey Hunter say everything by Mia screams cringe at this point. All that money for the new cooch and stuff, but not enough money for scar treatment like laser or glycolic acid. Ooh, y'all tough around here. DA say Mia and I got a storyline next season. Mia said I got a storyline next season. And she do. And she do. Uh-oh, Jenna Harris got something to say. Girl, tell them what you got. What you think about this? Hey, everybody, I had to jump up here in this perfect timing because I'm on my way home. I don't know if I can talk about the mess like I want to once I'm home with the baby. But, child, the way they disturbed my spirit last night, I was so mm -hmm. disgusted. I missed some of your um, some of your commentary, Auntie, because I had to uh, pick up the kid from school. So I was, like, keeping caught up so I could see when you dropped the screen yard. But mm -hmm. I was just so disgusted, mostly by Giselle. She's so foul. Yeah and hateful and she was every bit of the devil and the imp and everything else that candace said like same time i i said at the same time she did all true all very true like she didn't say nothing wrong she described herself perfectly and the way she laughed at her was so demonic when she decided she wanted to laugh at um candace i was like this is horrible she was making this is how much she bothers me she was making me think hateful thoughts i was like i hope she laughs in your face on the next episode she a whole and demon. I was like, this is the, this is terrible. That I can't get past it. I was just like, she is so awful, and people will still try to defend her. And she's understanding. She's and she's indefensible. And that I agree. She's, she's indefensible. Uh, so what did what did you think of Giselle um, continuing to lie? Hey, Shalon, 
um, even after Andy and Karen both was like, girl, you said that. I think you hit the nail on the head. It's like she was just trying to lie to the end so she she can get away with it so she can keep denying it on camera so she could keep um, having people think there were doubts around it. But it's like, girl, you said it on camera. Like, well, we what are we doing? You. Like, we heard you very clearly. And, and people were like, well, they, people need to stop bringing out, like, I know this wasn't necessarily about Giselle. This was about Robin. But they were like, we got to, people got to stop bringing these poster boards and stuff like that. But I think they do it because production will lie for them by not running the tape back. And so they right. have to. So but it's I like, think if you bring up. What was helpful mm -hmm. because she was showing proof. Oh, absolutely. Of, I agree. A, blowed up, a, a, a blown up screenshot of Robin in that group chat with two bloggers. Yes. Okay. I was trying to remember what the poster board was about. Yes, I agree. I think it's helpful because you know, they'll like, you know, you see how they'll production lie. protects them and they'll lie and lie and lie. But if you have an elaborate prop or something that looks good on like the promo, then there's more chance that the, that part will make it in the reunion and they can't keep lying about it because they'll say stuff during the reunion that they never show to the, the, to the public. So they can keep up the lie for their little favorites, which I don't understand. I don't understand. She's awful. Like, I, indefensible. I'm, I'm just confused at this point how anybody could still get behind her and defend her or anything about her. She's terrible. It just makes me so angry. But I think that's what it sense. is. The colorism just so deep. It doesn't make sense at all. Y'all, we got a birthday message for Happy to Be Happy. Y'all make sure that um, y'all show her some love via Cash App. You know, that's our version of pinning that dollar to the shirt. So happy birthday to you. But we had to get through this review first, child. But this is the other thing that bothered me. That bothered me mm -hmm. a lot. So. Um, shout out to Andy for holding her accountable and like reminding her mm -hmm. like, girl, you actually did say those things. Mm -hmm. But for me, it seems like too little too late because Andy has been watching what they do. Andy has been mm -hmm. compl complicit in what they do. He has intentionally turned a blind eye. He's been intentionally obtuse to all of the behaviors. And now, for whatever reason, I don't know whether it's his higher ups telling him, listen, we can't do this because it's going to cost us money. Or like, I don't know what is causing his radical shift in attitude, but I just mm -hmm. personally feel like it's too little too late. I agree. It's not like, and we all know it's nothing that has to do with like, oh, he's finally seen how wrong this yeah. is. No, it's like you said, it's the higher ups, something external. Maybe like you said, he's trying to share the um the the trouble right now since everybody looking at him on the book of sugars and everything else. Um, looking at him sideways now, he's he's basically trying to deflect. He's doing what Robin did when she was trying to pretend like, oh, everything's fine on my side of the street, but over here, oh, that's a shame. You shouldn't do that. Like, no, that's nothing but def deflection. Yeah, so just uh, uh -huh. trying to get himself out the hot seat by looking like he's holding people accountable. Because like, I was low key right, looking at like I was like, why? Right, not at all. And I was low key looking at. I'm not sure if you referenced this already. If anybody else noticed this, I was like, is Doctor Wendy like co-hosting this reunion? I was like, why didn't Andy just leave? I was like, this is terrible. Let's just go. Wendy did. A, Wendy did her thing as a mediator. Mm -hmm. I was like, mm -hmm. Doctor Wendy. All right then. But yeah, I, uh, oh. It's so terrible. They a mess. Okay, let me can't. tell you something else I saw online. So I so, saw mm -hmm. people online that were upset that Wendy told Mia what Gordon said about her. And I'm like, <laughs> what's the problem? And I did respond on social media. I don't respond very often. I don't make comments often. But when I mm -hmm. do, I make it count. And so mm -hmm. I just simply commented and said, I just love how people forget this is the lady who assaulted the good doctor. Mm, mm -hmm, so you mm -hmm. need to tell me I'm supposed to be protecting you instead of doing my job at this reunion and bringing out the fact that your man said that your other man came to the house to take away this baby because he think it's his baby. And I was like, wow, I didn't have a problem with that. I was like, yeah, let her know, girl, just so you know, this is what this man is telling people. Yeah, I didn't even think no way about it. I didn't think she was trying to be overly messy or or even it think it seemed like that's almost a nice thing. It's like I just want you to know that he's saying this. By the way, it was almost yeah. like too much, especially when you think about the fact that she is the one, like you said, that assaulted her. I didn't even think right. about that because that's one of the things that honestly, that's the only thing I'm like, Wendy, why? Or one of the few things like, why are you even being nice nice to her? I wouldn't be able to give her the time of day. But you know, like she trying to get along with the get along. 
Right. Yeah, she has some mercy and she trying to get along with the get along to make the show. Unlike Giselle, who doesn't care, like she would try to tank the show basically, or she is tanking the show because she doesn't know how to get along with people because she's such a big Karen sitting next to a woman who's actually named Karen. But she's the epitome of like the Karen that everybody dislikes. The horrible she's, one that just thinks she's above it all. Giselle is, Giselle is literally Miss Millie. If yes, she can't you, get and, away, well, and that was and not the perfect memes, reference. Yep, that's Miss Millie. If those if those terrible colors don't do what she say, she gonna say mm -hmm. you attacked her. I'm yes, a big, I, you attacked me. I was in the car being like, mm hmm, that is a good reference because I haven't seen the color purple too many times. I know just who you was talking about. As soon as you said it, I remember said, that mm -hmm. those guys was trying to help Miss Millie yeah. and she came in and mm -hmm. boys tried to attack me. Mm -hmm. That's just that's and it's like, and basically, like, come on home with me, darkies, to protect me from these other darkies. I right. was like, mm, 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 mm. right. It's, it's terrible. They should be ashamed of themselves, but they're not. Just think they're right and just wrong as two left shoes. I'm they don't, they very don't have appalled. enough class or decorum to be ashamed. They mm -hmm. don't have enough anything in them to be ashamed. And they should be supremely embarrassed that mm -hmm. this is how you're conducting yourself. I would be shamed to death. If that's yeah. how I was acting. I'm sorry. And I know we don't talk about people's children and I would never, but I, I, I feel sorry for like, I'm like, I wonder what does her, what do her children think of how she acts? Cause they seem like to have good heads on their shoulders from what little I've seen. And it yeah. just seems like her behavior, her behavior is so obscene. I mean, unless she spends well, it, it really well. Obscene, but I, just, I, will say, I will say this children, 10 normal children tend to love their mothers. No, absolutely. This is true. They tend to love their mothers, and I wouldn't mm -hmm. wish anything else for her mm -hmm. than for them to love their mother. Um, it's unfortunate that that's how their mama acts, but look how look what happened with her. Her dad is a whole. To also be of, honest about their behavior. Just, I'm, you yeah, know, I'm sure you they know, love him. I'm not trying to drag him from the grave. You know, rest mm -hmm. in peace right. if you can. Happy graves. Mm -hmm. But she watched that coming up. The same man mm -hmm. who walked out on her mama treated her like whatever, and she still loved mm -hmm. her daddy. So yeah. I don't want us to ever, you know, start a narrative or even a thought process like, oh, her children are gonna like throw her away because she's gross. Like that's their gross mama. No, I would never think they would throw her away. And just like you said, I don't I'm not interested in dragging people from the grave, but I'm also one of those people that like things don't stop being true because somebody died. So like the, the truth is the truth. How you act is yeah, how you I'm act. Still, I'm still going to say he's a, he was a terrible old colorist and that's where she right. learned it from. But mm -hmm. I'm not just going to drag him, you know, down, round and through there and, and no. cross the peanut fields and the orange groves and the watermelon patches. I'm just not going to do it because he did. And whatever, yeah. whatever eternal reward he earned for himself, yeah. he has earned it. And mm -hmm. I ain't got no heaven or hell to send him to. I can't control right. where he done already went. So I'm not going to like free. Right. And that's like to somebody's point in the chat. And I heard somebody, some other people say, and Candace said it last night, it's her actions that if these fake death threats even exist, because I believe that could be true too, that that's just a lie from the pits of hell. That, because why, know, why do we not have proof? Production okay. had proof of Candace liking one tweet. And I read you all the content of that mm -hmm. tweet, blew it up on the screen for you. There was not one death threat involved. Right, so and people will be bringing it up. One, where mm -hmm. is it? Right, and it's like if if there was one, like Candace said last night, it's your actions, the fact that you act this way, that makes unhinged people want to say these awful things. There's nothing that Candace did. But I just don't like, believe for one minute. She literally is I don't trying believe to make the case that black women are aggressive and unhinged and threatening to take her lives. And I take attention to that. Because and that's an interesting what? nuance too. Because mm -hmm. guess what? I'm a whole black woman. Did you notice? Did you notice? Right. I've been hiding it. I didn't know if y'all could see it. <laughs> Not hiding it. <laughs> Put a one in the chat if y'all noticed I was black before. <laughs> there was oh, a I, I didn't know. I am confusion. Oh I just snuck up on you. Boo. Man, somebody That's, go back to my doctor and give me some more glasses because I thought for sure you was white. Are you sure you mm -hmm. black? I promise. Scout's honor. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. What can I do? Oh, my God. I go. done snuck up on you. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so, I, I'm, so I took exception to her accusation of black women threatening to take her life. Like, you got a lot of nerve. See, Mr. Got James more nerve than a toothache. Mr. James said he heard it in my voice. See, he could hit a black in my voice but see you know just looking at me y'all didn't catch that but mr james heard it in my voice 
Okay. Because I was about to say, let her pull up out of me. <laughs> okay. And Honey Hunter says, it made a good point. Said the fact that they were trying to make Candace even somewhat responsible for the alleged death threats made me sick to my stomach. Me too, by the way. Why Giselle ain't showing no proof? Auntie Eva says she did have an inkling that I was black. So see, there you go. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I, I said, I said, my doctor, he did okay. He did okay this time. But what I'm saying <laughs> is, if you got death threats, when Candace was getting called a rat, a roach, you need to go kill yourself, all her things showed up on the screen. Why we didn't see well, that? That's, from that's our point. That's our point. There was no so proof. So no Giselle is more. Is only, but this is my thing. Not only is she more than likely lying, but why is there not more conversation around who she's lying on? There should be more conversation surrounding the group of people that she is actually lying on. She's lying on black women. I got right. a problem with that. And now, he, he, now, hold on. He, he, L, E, L, say that I got her good. She thought I was clear as day. I, I know I snuck up on y'all with that one. Okay. Uh, but uh, the truth uh. of the matter is, I'm a whole black lady and I'm offended because you accused me, my boy. Oh, California you, cutie California is a cutie. cutie. How you doing? Hey, hey everyone. Hey. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, Sinitra, my love, my, my sweetheart. Y'all just don't know. I've been on, I've been on uh, YouTube just for a hot second right before. I met Sinitra, and Sinitra actually got me put on um, a panel that we no longer belong to together, but she is one of the people that got me on and made me feel so comfortable, and um, so, like, I, I want to come up here so y'all know I am a real content creator. This is me. I am California Cutie, so when I was asking sis about me, you know, promote myself on your channel, it's because I kind of feel like you are one of the people that helped me, that helped me to get on and be, you know, better and confident and all that good stuff. So I just, that's why I did it with you. I would never, because I feel like etiquette is, you know, you don't go on people's chat. Like, uh, can you follow me? And woo -wah. So I said, let me just ask my sis because a closed mouth won't get fed. So anyway, anyway, y'all, I just want to say hello. And I'm, I'm here to talk about the panel as well. But I just really wanted you guys to know that when Sanitra was saying that, we do go back um, a couple of years now. And um, baby, <laughs> <laughs> and I love her so much. And your channel is amazing. You do have the best, you know, some of the best content, and your opinions really matter. They always resonate with us, even if I don't agree, which I usually do. But even if I don't agree, it's still the way you put it. You be like, hmm, maybe she's right. So yeah, y'all, I'm just happy to be here. I'm sorry to take over. Take over. Right. But, Listen, you in your sister's house. You don't come to my house and say, I'm sorry for taking over. You here. <laughs> Keep your shoes off. Tell these people what you want to tell them. Now, what you thought about this this part one of this reunion? Because Giselle was on my nerves and I had to really take into account. I was wrong. I truly thought that they were placating us by moving her to that second seat. Like I thought it was the banana in the tailpipe again because they've done it so much. But mm -hmm. maybe it looked like if that was the case, they forgot to let Giselle know about it, and she acted out as a result. That's what I think. That I love looking. I love seeing her be hot and bothered under her collar. I loved it. I love the fact that when Candace walked out, oh, I gotta go over here and go take a picture with the backdrop, bitch. Go over there and go go be up. Go go sit your ass over there and on the backdrop. Go take ten thousand pictures. Go do what you need to do, girl, because ain't nobody checking for you. That's why you ain't in the first seat. You've been in that first seat too long. So you think that everything is supposed to just come. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm Giselle, bitch. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. She shouldn't have a seat at all, to your point. No, she Even actually could have been at the end. She actually could have been at the end. She could have been where NECA was for all we hear. Like, literally. Yeah, well, you know what? Now, if they put her where, where um, Necropolis was, then they would have had to make Necropolis sit on the floor. Cause she wasn't even. I want her seat to be at home watching the show as a viewer and off my screen. But did you notice like how that. Andy didn't even? Um, are we there? Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. okay. Did you notice how Andy didn't even acknowledge her being a lawyer? Instead of asking her the legal question, he asked Wendy. <laughs> you know, hilarious. You, you know, you know why, right? 
because so Wendy before, comes we, off because Wendy comes off intelligent, informed, and able to articulate. This girl told us she's a lawyer working for some fintech bank or fintech firm, and we ain't seen her at work. We ain't seen you but, practice right? no law. We ain't seen you with not one legal brief. We ain't seen you even say, y'all, I can't make it. I got a court case. Oh, Girl, where you practice but law this at? this is end? the moment. Hold on. Hold yes, on. Not only, not only where do you practice law at, girl? Did you take your bar yourself or did your daddy pay somebody to take it? Well, you know, because he's a rich bitch. I ain't saying nothing, but I'm just okay. asking a question. Well, yeah, this is one of the bitch. first times I've been on live when you said, when this is a me memory lane moment. This is, we could go back down memory lane on this one. And there was the one episode where Don't she me. tried to clock Eddie's billable hours. I'm still mad about it. Do y'all remember? I can't sing and my voice is scratchy today. But if we go back down memory lane and listen to that and watch that episode, she said something about, well, doesn't he have something to do? Don't you have a job? Don't you have some billable hours to get done? Miss ma'am, we ain't never seen your job. What is you talking? We can't even about, mm. that one. That disturbed my spirit so much. Now I'm gonna tell you what's funny. You know, I'm still stuck on the fact that Giselle was calling them African royalty, and I, I'm still trying to figure out where is the kingdom of Texaco, where her father hails from, because that's where it, that's that's where she said he was doing driving taxi cabs before he went to medical school. So where is the kingdom of taxi cab in West Africa that he hails from, since they royalty and things? Where they at? Oh, maybe she I'm got confused. Maybe she got confused when they when they crowned her the new queen of uh of Patan. <laughs> maybe it maybe it seeped into her brain. She's like, oh yeah, I'm royalty because they said so. I, I feel like Andy yeah. and production tried to cl try to clown her just then, and she still didn't get it. They really put that little picture of her they as the fifth round on. Yes, with the party, she still was not embarrassed. <laughs> I would have been so embarrassed. Oh, you no. know, oh, but no. I'm gonna tell you something. What's sad is she has shown us consistently throughout this season that she's not bright enough to know when people are are like humiliating her. She's mm -hmm. not smart enough to get it. She's not. She's not. We know that's when she thought that they was about to have a whole suite when she was about to do her in vitro and, and she needed to go jack her husband off for a little bit. You didn't know what to do. I said, girl, you thought you was about to go in there and it was going to be a, 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 a bed. Y'all was about to lay out. There's going to be uh, peas playing on the on the screen for y'all. Girl, no. You better get down. The funny thing is, I often say, you better get down and go on and get to work. But she couldn't because you can't have no saliva on it. Can't be wet. You can. I was like, well, damn, what you supposed to do? You can't have no saliva on it. I can't lick my hand. And I, okay. <laughs> what what we talking? What we talking? I'm like, Wait, what? Don't get the video. Don't, don't, don't do it. Now, what was unfortunate is that she went through that less than dignified experience mm -hmm. in a bathroom at a clinic with cameras there to see you going into said bathroom and then coming out to then film you getting a turkey based the treatment for it not to work. Okay. Uh, like, okay. let's be very clear. And this is something that I want to be serious about, all jokes aside. Yes. Mm -hmm. One, having a baby is not child's play. It is not a child's play, okay? Those of us who are mothers can tell you that's that's the closest you get to death is bringing those little people from one side of the veil over him, okay? Mm -hmm. It's very serious. That's number one. Number mm -hmm. two, she mentioned it herself earlier in the season, but it was fleeting. Had she dealt with this, she would have been a far more interesting mongoose than she was. But she didn't deal with it. The fact that you said you were 37 and then you were 40 and you waited so long to get married, baby. The older we get as women, you understand? There is a process that our bodies go through. It begins when you're around 10, 11, 12, or whenever your cycle begins, all the way through menopause when your cycle ends. It is a beautiful process. It is the cycle of life as women. We are not like men. We don't just live and die. We live, we are given the ability to hold life in our womb, connect with another human being through an umbilical cord and, and, and any number of nerve and spiritual connections to the extent that our children will be 30 years old and we can still feel flutters and kicks in our belly. It Come is on. beautiful nature. It is God's magic. It's the real thing. 
You don't want to wait until you've gotten close to the end of your cycle as a woman and then begin now to start having babies. It's not optimal. It's not that it's impossible. Janet Jackson had a baby in her 50s and that's wonderful. God bless her. She survived it. I grew up with the family. They went to the holiness church and um, big family. And that, my friend's mama was having babies still in her 50s. But that is the exception and not always the rule. I would have liked to see necrosis focus more on that part of her journey and her process and talk to us about, hey, I wanted to get a career first and I wanted to find a good husband. And, you know, I met some other ones and they weren't optimal. And I think I thought this one was a winner and he was a doctor and he is from my place and we are from the same ethnic group. And somebody tell us how y'all met, who hooked y'all up? Because you ain't never even lived in the same house with this man. Give us more of that story. Explain to us how you ended up with a village tout from Emo State and you're supposedly the princess of Taxi Cab. Tell us the story. How did you end up waiting till you were 40 to have a baby when it's dangerous? Geriatric pregnancies are dangerous. And that's just that's my talking as a woman. Because like I said, I've been one all my life. Me too. I am my first one at 19. I am my first one at 19. And my last one at 38. So I know what you're talking about. But that's, I, but that's <laughs> my whole point is that she had so much personal story that she could have given us. But instead of her giving us personal story, like <laughs> help us be in help us be invested in you in some way. <laughs> hey Teresa, hey Duchess Natalie, help us be invested in you. Because all we know about you, dear, is that you wear very bad synthetic wigs that are coated in grease. We know that you wear foundation that you swipe from your local funeral parlor. And what you <laughs> we know that your husband wears high water scrubs that show his <laughs> ankles. We know that he wears a god awful mohawk circa 2002. We know that y'all live in a house where you do not have proper appliances in your kitchen. And you probably <laughs> can't. And we know that you ran around just pushing this harmful, xenophobic narrative, calling another, your actual sister, calling her mother a witch with shrine nonsense and, and ooga booga garbage for other xenophobes to take part in. You open the door for people mm -hmm. who want to malign and attack West African culture, West African Ooh. people, and West African women. You did something that was absolutely unconscionable instead of telling <laughs> us your story, which is why she sat up there looking like some, some sort of deranged woodpecker with that 1997 <laughs> microwave ponytail on her head Ooh. on that chair with nothing to say, absolutely no input, looking like one confused masquerade. <laughs> so NECA makes you angry, huh, Nitra? Let me answer that. It's not just her that makes me angry. <laughs> Women who behave that way <coughs> make me upset. Yeah. How do you behave in a way that is self-deprecating and you degrade yourself in order to fit in with people that you know hate you? Why would you mm -hmm. do that? Exactly. Well, here's the thing, yeah. Tanika. She's gonna get cussed out. Well, I ain't gonna say cussed out, but she's gonna get told off and and and, and fronted on by Wendy in your own language. When you exactly. get called off in your own language, broad, that means look here. Look here. When I'm talking to you, when everybody else don't know what I'm saying, bitch, I'm talking to you and you better take heed because you didn't went too far. So I'm telling it to you in our language, girl. Check yourself before you wreck yourself and be by yourself. And another thing that offends me, I'm from LA, I'm from Inglewood, I'm from Cali. And the fact that she say, um, Nigerian did this in LA, made me LA didn't make you girl. Cause if you was if you was made, you would be you wouldn't have to say that. So don't girl, do that. Let me help you out. Sis, don't sis, put your up. Yes, ma'am. Listen, girl, you missed it. Cause I had went live because one of the boys that went to high school with her in Beloit, Wisconsin, was giving me the real lowdown. Baby, Come on, she tell me something. Not Wisconsin. She ended up moving to LA after she was bigger, but she went to school in Beloit, Wisconsin. You ain't got to tell me. 
I already can see it. I can smell it on her, honey. Well, listen, I'm from LA. Listen, I know. But you was in Beloit, Wisconsin. Why you was up here faking in front and talking about? You was over there with the cheese. You was up in Beloit, cheese. Wisconsin, and they said then that she was running around trying to kiss up to them clear people. They said even then she was putting on foundation, didn't match, trying to make herself look lighter. <laughs> and um, mm -hmm. you know that what them people said about her. And then we heard some stuff about her brother A Buka. And they said a Buka was riding there, whole hopping in below it, and got a baby out of wedlock. And the girl done went all the way down there to Louisiana with the baby and married another man. Like it's a lot of stuff that went on. Oh, so geez, LA yes. didn't have nothing to do. Yes, I know. LA had I know. nothing to do with um with the, with the micro man. She has so much money yeah. why she have not hired an interior decorator to do that house. Girl. Okay, so let me go even further. Since she claims she's, she's a rich female dog, why didn't hey. your money allow you to move into Potomac proper and buy a house that was not a cookie cutter on the outskirts? <laughs> why did we do that? It gives you know little boxes I mean? on the hillside. Maybe we want to do what she did. She made but me she 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 But do you remember when First she was trying all, to do that? That mortgage, that real estate lady said she had did something with uh, some other properties that no, she had. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Absolutely not. That's what we're not gonna do. We know that's what she said, but we do, but we do not know it's the truth, and we you do know that help misplace the lie. <laughs> she misplaced the truth, just like she apparently the, the way she misplaced her wigs. Because I don't know who wigs she had on, but I refuse to believe that those are the wigs who that belong to a rich woman. I've known rich women. I got friends that's uh -huh. rich. I'm not one of them. But the wigs that they wear do not resemble that. That's mm -hmm. not what their wigs look like at all. And I'll go you even further. How many? How many women yeah, you know girl. who are affluent around wearing the sort of clothes that she was wearing? All sorts of misplaced feathers and sequins and glitter and cutouts and spandex oh my even mm. when they were in san antonio and they went to karen's little party over at the performance place or whatever and she was okay. dressed like Dora the explorer and she had put all that blue magic grease in that wig and came out there mm. and embarrassed herself that is not the behavior of a rich woman okay let let me show you proof marlo hampton let's talk about marlo every time marlo has ever gone on a trip. Marlo be having the full glam. This heifer go get adjoining suites just so she could unpack her bags in it. The labels got labels. The labels got mm -hmm. their own corner in the room. That's what money looked like. For sure. This girl ain't showed us that. She showed us a pair of shoes with a scuff on the toe, beat up wigs, and foundation that don't match. That tells me you're not even buying Fenty Beauty. We're not even going to get to the rest of it. You ain't even buying Fenty. Chris B, what you got to say? I'm running my mouth. Chris B, what's up? No, hello, everyone. I was just hey. watching you um, rant about NECA because she got on my nerves, too. <laughs> like, you wasn't even... She just, like... I don't know. She just felt like... I don't know. This place to me, like... You don't... You just was chiming in. and it's, She didn't belong there. Yeah. yeah. Did you peep that how Andy asked Wendy the lawyer question and you're the, supposedly the lawyer... And then Giselle's dumb stuff. Oh, Vanessa's is the lawyer. And Wendy said, and he's the host. And he the uh -huh. one that asked the question. <laughs> exactly. I love that part. Quick. Like, she's just, so like, quick. faded. She and Ashley just faded in this reunion to me. Like, they were just there. But I can't, like, what um California Cootie said, I can't wait till next week when Wendy gets into her. I'm waiting for it. Well, I feel like she kind of brought it on herself mm -hmm. because she's like tell us, sitting there telling Wendy, you iced me out. How can one person ice you out, baby? That's Do you know so what dumb. ice out I'm means? Sorry. There were so many people filming with you. You had you had Gizzard and Robert and 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 Mega Mind and the whole crew that was willing mm -hmm. to film with you. So how in the world did Wendy ice you out? You mean yeah. that she wouldn't acknowledge your nonsense? She wouldn't go back and forth with you? Are you mad because she told you you tried it and it was a flop? Like, what are you angry about exactly? Just like Dr. Wendy asked her, um, tell me what I did to you. Yeah, exactly. She, can't she, this she day. couldn't tell her. She still can't tell what we all still doing. waiting. We all still waiting right here. I got a question. Is Sharice gonna be on a um is Sharice invited to the reunion? Does wow. anybody That's what I don't know? I never saw no pictures of I her. Never I never seen her. 
I saw where cute little Kiana was getting dressed, honey, where she was mm-hmm. Chanel down. Okay. To the teeth. But okay. I ain't seen Big Reese, child. I don't Me think either. Big, Reese, Big Reese only had like three scenes and it was like drive by scenes. Well, Juan didn't have any scenes. And oh yeah, Juan's not there either. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. I was just saying, just all. I was like, wait, one, one didn't have that many scenes, but then of course he conveniently is not there. That's what I love about the girls. They're like, I don't know if it was me or whoever said that. Why your husband ain't gonna be there to 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 support you? It was Wendy. Yeah, that's, what Wendy that's what Wendy told him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's a, that's a true fact. Why would he let you? He knows how treacherous we can be. Us being we being us the crowd, us looking in you know, from the outside looking in. And I feel like he just lets you hang out to dry while you always, I don't care what y'all say. I don't care what y'all think yes, you do. You care so much. <laughs> you care so much. You can he tell us you know, but you care so much. And another thing, I still didn't understand the brown peen. I don't, where, 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 what, what did she see? Where's that okay. coming from? So I, 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 was, I, was, I was confused. Don't worry, you know, I'm going to tell you. Because you tell know, me. I keep the gossip <laughs> So that's what I'm good at. I've been doing this a long time. <laughs> so listen, this, this okay. what happened. So the fried chicken hole had popped out, right? She okay. called Tasha K on the on the FaceTime to tell Tasha K this long lie that Chris seen her frying chicken and, and decided to risk it all over her neck fat and her and her chest sweat while she was frying that ch- chicken. Okay. So she claimed that they that, that 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 they talked for a little while. They met up and hunched, and she got pregnant. Now she claimed that he told her to go get rid of the baby at a at abortion clinic over in Oklahoma, where abortions are illegal, and showed paperwork from Texas. But she lived in New Jersey, right? So everybody started calling bull because it was bull. So there was a little young fella on TikTok, a little clear boy, and the clear boy reached out to her and he wanted to try to authenticate her story. So the clear boy said, "Can you send us some proof or something?" So she sent a picture of some man's. Flaccid brown. male member, brown so, one, a brown one though, right. a brown one. Okay, a brown one of some sort. Okay? okay, I didn't look at that. I don't want to see all them different male members. I feel like it'll give you bad look. Um, but anyway, she posted that, and so the boy said, "Well, we don't know who that is. So can you send us something else?" So she sent a picture of a man's arm with the head cut off. If you already claiming it's him, baby, why wouldn't you just send a whole picture? So the arm she sent had a tattoo on it and claimed that, oh, it was, um, he said it's the tattoo of his oldest daughter name or something, but Chris Bassett don't have no tattoo on his arms. So then the young, the young clear boy said, well, we know for a fact he got a tattoo on his leg, sent a picture of his leg with the tattoo. Oh, I ain't going to be able to do that. Right. So okay. anywho, anywho, long story short, I guess it got too hot. People went to asking too many questions. This girl came back out and said, it wasn't no truth to it. Somebody asked me to say what I said. Mm -hmm. And they wanted her to say who did it. And Tasha K had already kind of called her out like, girl, this is all all this mess you coming with. This is a lie. Like, you know, who put you up to it or whatever. Tasha didn't even fall. But you know, Tasha K fall for everything. She be Mm -hmm. letting people get on her platform and say Daffy Duck, you know, stole their anus while they was at Sunday service. Like, but she, even Tasha K was like, no girl, uh uh-uh, no Mm -hmm. ma'am. And so that's what Robert was trying to bring back up. And it was so bad because Andy Cohen had to remind them on the reunion. Um, the lady already came out and said that wasn't true. The lady already said, you know, that she lied. Oh, yeah, but she, no. Like, what are you even talking about? You bringing up stuff from somebody who told you that they fabricated stuff and everybody doesn't yeah. know? And I heard, I don't know if it's true or not, allegedly, I heard, like, people went and found out where she worked at, like, doxed her, the lady who told this lie. Yeah, her name was Ayanna something of them. Yeah, someone doxed her, so that's why too, because I think they said she was about to allegedly lose her job. That's why she came out. I'm like, okay, this went oh, too far. That's when she told the truth. Yeah, that's what I heard. I'm gonna tell um, y'all. I still want her to tell us who asked her to do that. Me too. Because that's the real story. That's the real story right there. Who who told you to do this? But, who put you up to this? But you remember yeah, when you said this? Initially, when she was talking about it, she said, "Oh, I don't like how Candace treats Ashley." And she that's what I was gonna say. But I think Ashley. that was a setup to make people think it was Ashley. But I don't think it was Ashley because she kept talking about 
she's so disrespectful to Ashley. I don't like how she treat Ashley. Yeah, I think she did that. Be humbled and this and that, but she kept saying Ashley. But I felt like that was to throw people <laughs> off the scent. I believe that Robert and Rings, neck and shoulders, what y'all call them. I believe <laughs> neck and shoulders <laughs> is behind this. Mm. They behind this. This is this has got wideness and and swelling all over it. This is them. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It, it, it definitely got green eye bandits all over. And, and Robin yeah. kept bringing it up, like, "Girl, you don't even question whine about ish. Why are you questioning somebody else's husband?" Did y'all see the preview for next week? Where you she gonna, gonna think? Chris. Yeah, she gonna think she got authority or she has the license to question somebody else's husband. My girl, you don't even have the code to your husband phone. But Hello. you think you can question him about somebody who done came out and admitted they lied? So now yep. you want to question him about, about a fictitious situation and your husband is on a whole credit card receipt to the hotel. Exactly. You don't can't get to the bottom of that. You, you should have access to the credit card and what day... What time he was there? Now, what time, time he? Here's the thing. What time did he pay it. for it? What time did he even pay for it? I've been going to the jail for the minutes. It was probably her. Say so he went before. down there in person to sign it. Never mind yeah. the fact you questioning him about a, 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 a an erroneous picture of a male gen, a male genitalia that could belong to anybody. That pe that pecker could belong to the man in the moon or the monkey yeah. in the moon. We don't know. But right. we got pictures of your man head, shoulders, knees, and toes, face and all, at the laundromat, at the nail shop, with a woman. <laughs> with a woman. And, and you still about, sitting there talking about, he, I, I trust him. Do you? That's why y'all got married for the second time? Because you trust him? Oh, okay. Girl, let me tell you something. Where is the marriage certificate for the second time? You did say that. You did Where say that. that? And that's what Karen keeps saying too. Karen says the same thing, and you know Karen looked it up. Karen been looking for it too. Miss Hugo mm -hmm. has been looking for it. Okay, Carrie Amuneke, thank you for the super chat. She says, "Sis, is necrosis really from Emo State in Nigeria? That's where my dad is from." No, honey, she didn't tell us where she was from, but her man is from Emo. And you see how ghetto oh. he is, girl. He is giving me Oweri vibes. He's giving me Oweri vibes. I'm like, ooh, you so ghetto. Mohawk, you so ghetto. What's going on, Mohawk? I thought Americanized. <laughs> no, that ain't no Americanized. No, it's that Mohawk is Americanized. No, ma'am. No, Americanized. No, ma'am. You don't know no better. Let really? Me tell you. you think they do that? No. That's what they're doing? It? Where no, I know, that for, I know that for a fact. Oh, okay. So, that's yeah. That's that, that's that, that's that ghetto vibe from over there. A lot of them little ghetto boys over there, they get a mohawk and think they clean. They don't know no better. Them the same ones that be walking around with polo shorts, shirts with the collar turned up looking goofy. Oh, I hate that. I hate that. But this is what I'm saying. Like that is it's giving ghetto emo vibes. That's all I'm saying. That's I true. don't know him, but by the time you done popped it out and you wearing a mohawk, like I know you walk around with your collar turned up on your shirt, don't you? That's some true. That's some true tea. Cause um, I know the do. last salon I worked at, I'm a because I'm a mobile stylist, but I, years ago I've been out of the salon. Oh, my son is like 14. So I've been out of the salon for like 14 years. But when I worked at a salon, a Nigerian dude had bought our salon. And if he have if he didn't come in there and make it Crazy, it, it was a beautiful salon. He came in there and jacked it up, had his collar popped up, wore a mohawk, um, married one of the ladies that was That's not the like you, like, and this was, like, this was like 2004. This is like but a lot of them is still, time. but a lot of them still stuck, you know what I'm saying? Still be doing the same old corny stuff. No, they and, do, they don't it's change. A funny see, but this the thing, you ain't believe me till I made you think back. I I to think back. No, no, no. You, you, oh. you definitely did. I'm like, mm. Okay, you hold right, on. We right. got another one, y'all. My sis, Carrie, thank you for the super chat. She said, oh, no, I'm slightly embarrassed, but he's just one. My dad is visiting or weary now, shaking my head, but we all cannot be great. Come on. Say it again. At least and, and mind, you, mind you, don't get me wrong. All the love in the world to my girls out of Oweri and uh, my, my girls out of Emo State because I heard y'all got high bride prices. Okay, you know the girl love a high bride <laughs> price, honey. So, yeah, shout out to y'all. But he is giving village tout. I'm sorry. That's real. I, I can going. see that. That's why, that's why his wife act the way she acting. You see how she run over him. 
and she be shutting him up, shut him down, shut him sideways, shut him back this way. I be like, boy, are your okay. balls there? Listen, Where your balls? Karen, Karen, I put them dollar signs in the chat. Where them dollars at? Where them? Yes, yes, I love it. But let me stop being ignorant because I can be like that. You know, I'm from Florida. We don't know how to act either. I love but my Florida. Here's the thing. Floridians, I love them. Thank you. <laughs> but girl, that's the thing. I'm just like, I, you know, everybody talks about how she talks to him, but the way he talked to her ain't much better. What it gives is these are two people who do not know each other very well. I do mm -hmm. not see any romance between these two people. It's giving very much arranged, you know, low key. You know how our mamas be the way you may not know, but you know, I I grew up with, you know, certain folks. And so we know how our mamas can meddle and hook things up. And, you know, so-and-so son, he is graduating. This one is going to be doing that. And, oh, have you met such and such, such and daughter? We're going to put y'all together. You know, she just graduated. So it's giving somebody's mama or auntie was meddling. Somebody mm -hmm. put this together because they, they've already admitted that they was long distance. Y'all was on the phone. Y'all got married. You never lived together. You still ain't never even opened up your wedding packages. Like real talk, that's, that's what's real. the real story, girl. Who? who you know, really, I agree with you because I, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, absence is supposed to make the uh, heart grow fonder. Like you literally, you wouldn't have been able to get in the car before I was already. Uh, never mind what I was gonna be doing. But I'm just saying, I would have. Yeah, I would have been all up on it. I would have. I, I, I definitely would be pregnant without in vitro. Like for but real, this for is the thing. Well, that's, <laughs> but that's the danger sometimes of arranging situations, right? True. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. you can't develop chemistry. It's either there or it ain't. You know, mm -hmm. when things develop naturally, right. you know, there's a natural moment where a boy where boy meets girl, girl, and boy looks at the girl and says, Ooh, she sure is nice. And there's a moment mm -hmm. where a young lady looks at a man and says, Ooh, he sure is fine. And then y'all go out to eat and you sit down and talk and the girl is giggling and sniggling and the boy is, you know, shooting game to her and telling her how lovely she is and how pretty her skin is and, oh, your eyelash is so pretty and she gonna giggle and kiki and then you and go both home and, and both of them got sleepless <laughs> nights thinking about the other one and y'all talking on the phone like you're in high school and falling asleep holding the phone. See, all that stuff, that's how you develop, you know, those mm -hmm. things. That's mm -hmm. how you that's how you can get married and stay married. That's why Papa can walk up and whisper in my ear even now, and I still giggle a little bit, you know. No. Boy, quit playing. You know, that's how that works. It's supposed to be a natural development. But sometimes when a girl has either refused to find herself a husband or put her in, in a place to get a husband, or she's refused to to you know, do whatever she need to do, or the young man has refused to, for whatever reason, to bring his mother a wife, sometimes mama start meddling. And when mamas get to meddling, aunties get to meddling, you know how we do. We're going to make our investigations. We're going to make our findings. We want to know, is there any madness in the family? You know, or do, does he come out of a divorced house? You know, did the daddy used to beat the mama? Well, did he go to school? Has he ever been in trouble with the law? Oh, he did go to school. When did he graduate? From where now? He went here. He went. Okay, well, where has he traveled to? Has he was he ever engaged before? Did he ever bring a girl home? We start meddling. And don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking the meddling. Okay. Us meddlers are needed. Okay. Right. I feel right. like we have less baby mamas if we had more meddling mammies like me. I'm a meddler. I meddle. <laughs> I'm good at it too. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we can push and meddle so much that we don't let the children develop any chemistry. Mm -hmm. And these these two, they ain't got no chemistry. He talked to her crazy, she talked to him crazy. That's true. And we're just looking at them like they're crazy. Like, what is going on here? Why are they gonna bring a kid into this though? That's crazy. Why would you why well, would you do that? Her, because you married to have children. I mean, yeah, you're supposed to be fruitful, but why would I have a baby for somebody I don't really care for like that? I'm like, Ooh. well, because marriage is not all about care. Marriage is <laughs> business first. Now, it's good to develop the fondness because that'll help you get over when people are not perfect. Marriage, mm -hmm. more than anything, is about respect and forgiveness. If you for can't sure. forgive, you ain't going to stay. Okay? Because mm -hmm. that girl ain't going to stay pretty and that man ain't going to stay fine. Mm -hmm. But 
marriage is not always about yes carrie say meddlers are needed yes girl big up to the meddlers okay sure. um because we got to do that sometimes marriage ain't all about the the romantic sentiment but if you in a marriage you know children are the inheritance children are the the, the fruit of a you know successful marriage so you would expect to have it but the fact that she married so late and now she's trying to get a baby. I would have loved for her to tell that story instead of making it all about Wendy Shrine, Wendy Shrine, Wendy Shrine. Girl, we don't believe you and you sound stupid. Evie say, getting married that late in life, you can't be married for procreation. <laughs> hey, listen, well, we would like to think so, but there are women who marry late and end up- I'm married late. I'm married late. I'm, I'm, well, I've been with my husband. 24 years in August, but we've been married 11 years. I am 51. You, we got married, I got married at 40. But that's the, 40. the difference is because she comes from more of a traditional background. Yes, I get, okay? I get that. that yeah, means, that's that different. I mean, she wasn't having children outside of wedlock. That means she was getting her education, partying, having a good time, being young. All right. So now All right. you're marrying and you've never taken in. And now you're trying to get a baby at 40. It's not impossible, but it's dangerous. And it would have been interesting to watch her go through that journey. Like, this is what I'm really passing through. This is what's really going on. Let us know if your husband's family is pressuring you, if they're mounting any pressure on you. Because, mm -hmm. you know, people from, you know, Evo Homes can, can tell that I'm telling the truth. Carrie will tell you. Some of them, honestly... Uh, no, you laughing, but I'm dead serious. No, I was watching that nacho. I was watching oh, that nacho, what nacho, she said nacho. in the chat. Okay, but this is the thing. It's like some some of those ladies, some of those older ladies can be tough. So let us know. Like sometimes you get married in six months, they looking for your waistband on your skirt to be tight. And Come when it's, things can get rough. So talk to us about what you're passing through. If you have, if you have an understanding mother-in-law, and she's supportive and she's loving because some mother-in-laws are supportive and they're so loving and they will help you be comfortable and carrie tell them again tell them again oh yes they can they can get rough with you they can get yeah. rough with you to the extent of threatening to send you out your husband's house and replace yeah. you with somebody else so it can get real and if she has a loving a sweet mother-in-law bring that in let us see your mama. Let us see his mama. Is she sweet to you? Does Is she loving? Does she come by and cook for y'all? Well, she can't cook now because you ain't got no stove, heifer. But, you know, let us see all of that stuff. The so stuff you wanted to come back, sis? Huh? You wanted to come back? No. Okay. <laughs> Just was asking. No. I was like, that's what my, thing is, to come back. <laughs> my point is, that's what she should have been giving us. Yeah, that, then would, we that, that would have been a beautiful personal story. You're coming from Wendy was was played. That was like so played to me. It was, it was so late. Yeah, he said <laughs> after he donated his yeah, after he donated his genetic material. Oh, I've done my part. He was already shifting blames to her so that he could tell people, oh well, she's the problem. I gave her the material. I watched them put it in. She refusing to take in. Like he was already setting her up for the okie doke. Right. But she too dumb to see it. Like I say, just like they put that part, that party city crown on her head and she was too dumb to catch it. She didn't even catch what Ike was throwing at her. And that was embarrassing. Even say her whole purpose on the show was attacking Wendy instead of cementing herself. That part. That that's, part. that's what she should have. And that would be the should. demise of her being on the show again. I'm, I mean, with with Rob and Candace not being there, there's still room there. But at the same time, it's like, what are you gonna bring? Are you gonna still try to attack Wendy? Because you, sh if anything, she should have been making Wendy an ally. That's what she should have been doing. Because Wendy is accepted. Wendy's exactly. that girl. Mm -hmm. Wendy's that girl. So. It, it really comes down to mm. you didn't help yourself. You She was so busy. I'm going to tell you, I think part of it was her being vindictive because she was mad because Wendy wouldn't even answer her husband's cousin when he was, she was like, well, I got somebody want to be on the show. And Wendy didn't eat, left her on red, didn't even respond. 
because apparently Wendy don't respond to mess. You will message her and it'll sit there. I think she wanted to be vindictive because she felt like, how dare you not want to do me a favor? Ho, she don't know you. And apparently she wanted to bring Kiana on the show, somebody she do know. So why would she be talking up for you? She don't know you. Just because just Lebe is friends with her sister. Lebe. And I still don't know, what is your name? Like, I'm telling you, in my brain, I've been calling this girl Lebechi because I'm like, what is your name? Why do, why do they keep saying Lebe, 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 whatever her name is? But because she was friends with Ivy, that made her be able to call favors in from Wendy. Girl, by y'all are a bunch of clout chasers and users. Mm -mm. Right. I don't know. That's right, Geneva. She had been waiting, been uh hating on Wendy from afar. I mean, just the way she came out, just the way she came out, it was like, oh yeah, I'm coming for Wendy. It's like, why? That don't even when you look at the whole schematics of it all, it's like. Out of everybody on the panel, are you going to come for Wendy? Did you see the last season for Wendy's first season, how she had to tell us how many degrees and, and, and push herself through? Then came the next season. Body, yada, yada. Wait a minute. Like, there was there were steps to where Wendy got to, and you came in here thinking you was about to come for her? She thought, her attacking, she thought attacking Wendy would be the shortcut, that she yeah, would no. have to organically – build that relationship with the fan base she wouldn't have to organically build relationships within the group that mm -hmm. she would come in and the shortcut would be attacking wendy well we gonna see where that's gonna get her <laughs> we gonna yeah, see where that gets at this point almost everybody's sick of her if they bring her back we know it's just to spite the audience because we don't like her She's i haven't not heard anybody say that they like her not like that but I haven't no, I haven't heard anybody be like, oh yeah, Neca is uh she she brings so much. Um she, make sure she comes back next season. Nobody ain't saying nothing. And, the, oh, and you know what? The re, to me, the reunion is so far has not redeemed her, in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. I will say this. I will say this. I am pleased that somebody who the Lord touched their heart gave her a foundation that matches her complexion for this reunion. They did that. Now they let the Lord use them, and we will we we will be forever grateful. God is so good. Um, I will never forgive her for that microwave ponytail and that crunchy bang, because how you got weave put in your bang, and they tried to do the comb over. Y'all didn't even blend the weave. Like, baby, you didn't know how to press that out. Why do you not have ceramic flat irons? Why couldn't you get that to, to the same texture as the weave? It was like, girl. Is this 1996? Why do you have a microwave ponytail on? And then the base of her neck with the hair up, it's not even up smooth, girl. Even mold the hair, mold it. Use your spritz, take your blow dry, put it directly against your scalp, girl. Mold it up. If you you're so rich, though, if you're so rich, why can't you go get your hair done and take uh, girl, you like, know don't spend your money on, on fashion if you, you nearly you know need to. Get your hair done. You get your hair. You, I mean, you're in America no. now, but you got to make sure your stuff is right. I'm sorry. You just got to make sure your shit's right. I'm sorry. The baby, the baby, uh, California cutie, my baby say the money ain't money in looking like look that. Like and I'm going to tell you something else. Not only that, let me tell you what else that tells us about necrosis. You know, we ain't never gave her this much conversation because, you know, she barely exists. She ain't gave, she ain't gave us little, She want a little attention. Hopefully, this is her attention on the way out the door. Okay. But what else that tells me about necrosis is that necrosis don't have no American girlfriends. See, there's there's different types of folks that come in across the water, you know. And mm -hmm. some of our folks that come from across the water, they segregate themselves. And they segregate themselves from other American blacks due to a lot of negative stereotypes and things that they're told by people oh stay away from black americans and all that stuff and it's giving that you drank the kool-aid darling and the mm -hmm. reason i say that is because not one american homegirl of yours would have let you walk out the house with even one of them greasy wigs on not one of them okay so see that's the thing it, it gives that the way you dress the way you speak the fact that you think trying to imitate clear people's speech patterns and intonation and, and inflection, that you think that's being American, that's so sad. And see, so she ends up envying people like Carrie, you know I'm telling the truth. Okay, we all know some. Okay, we call some of them family, some of them friends. We know mm -hmm. some. 
they come mm-hmm. in and they only go to Nigerian parties and they only attend Nigerian events and they only eat Nigerian food and they only interact within that community. And so when you do that, you're literally closing yourself off from the very people that you want to be famous with. You want to be famous on American TV. You know how I know? Because Carlos King already punched your card and told us that you had made it onto a show that he had created for VH1 about Nigerian Americans, like first generation Nigerian Americans here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And that for whatever reason, the show didn't jump. And so then you decided you moved your behind or lack thereof from LA all the way to Potomac in order to get on this show and try to pull in a favor from a woman you never met. Mm -hmm. So you desperately want to be famous with a group of women that you don't even really interact with, darling. You want to be famous. You wanted to be a fan favorite with a group of women that you don't even care for. You disrespected yourself in in essence trying to disrespect us when Wendy tried to correct them and explain to them that your name is not Neka or Neka. It's, it's in a a it's an a, a Mm-mm. It's, No, it's in Nika. But instead of you Nika. allowing your sister to make mm-hmm. these people respect and pronounce your name properly, you on. on yourself to basically say, oh, they're American. They can't get it right. And Giselle is so <laughs> dumb with her 12 years of slave tale. She didn't even understand that what you were doing to her you very much you very much owe the owe those black americans her that's what you did mm-hmm. and i i call i caught what you were tossing then Carbol. I caught what you were tossing then my love because i've been I, i've sat and and watched both sides be ignorant toward each other i have I've watched Black Americans say incredibly ignorant and xenophobic things and likewise oh, yeah. I've watched West Africans that I love dearly um say some I have hateful, hateful and ugly things mm-hmm. toward Black American people and so I know yes it's Evie say it again talking down to, to, to Americans but want our dollars honey Right. I'm not mad at you for right. one dollars because obviously you need appliances. So mm-hmm. I'm not mad at you for wanting the dollars. Dollars are wonderful. Don't please don't get me wrong and thinking I'm up here telling y'all that money is evil. Money is beautiful. Okay, money answers prayers, but just don't be in love with it because that's how you go to hell. Okay, but so that ain't so. Good. So for me, I, I agree with you when it comes down to her not having an American oh, friend. And shout okay. out to Carrie, because Carrie is telling the truth. Look what she say. Both have closed hearts and minds to the other group, but we all in this thing together. You better tell them again. And I love that you are both, that you are uh, of both descents, that you are American, half African-American and that, that you have half Nigerian. I love that because you are one to speak on it and we can't offend you i mean you we can't be offended by what you say because people will be like ah you're not nigerian you can't speak on it i can because i have nigerian people that like i i hate i don't want to say friends but i have like i just told y'all my boss was or, or the owner of the shop was and then i've done their hair the problem for me going back to what you said is you're right she doesn't have any american friends which scares me because i feel like that means that you don't look at us like equals or that we're you made it clear you. when she yeah, called were, Wendy, oh they're american just let them say whatever that was dismissive that is, that, that yeah was literally, that was her way of saying they're incapable mm-hmm. mind you black american women are very capable of learning other languages they're very That's capable true. they have proven to the entire world at large that they are not only capable that they demonstrate that they are willing honey they go get educations they start businesses they buy homes they mm-hmm. half the sisters i know can run can run this country from a cell phone so Come on. there is no there is no oh well they're american don't work excuse you and what's sad is team yellow was so busy thinking that she just that she was just going against wendy you didn't even catch what that heifer was throwing at y'all which is why i don't even pity her when they turn around and serve her xenophobia and humiliation and she's too dumb to catch it it's like you all are two sides of the same nasty crap covered coin mm-hmm. the baby say they're dumb americans but you need us a joke right right that's and why i said you saying this is like 
so perfect because like if, if not like that, but especially if I said it because it's light skin as I am. <laughs> as light skin as I am, I say something about some Nigerians or Africans, Lord have mercy. But yes, I have African is, okay, <laughs> it, let me explain to you where the problem comes in. The problem mm. does not come in in speaking about the behavior of one person and being specific mm. and concise and factual and honest. The problem right. comes in when people make gross, oversweeping generalizations. And when people say all those Africans, oh. all those Nigerians, or when people say all those Black Americans, that's mm -hmm. when things become offensive. Right. And so when we see people doing things like that, that's not because they're calling out the behavior of one person. They're using the behavior of one person as an excuse and a vehicle for their hatred. That's what's going on. I don't think anybody minds if we say neck uh as she lets them call her necrosis <laughs> is exhibiting anti-black American behavior. Nobody's gonna be mad at that. But when people say, see them Africans, they be that's when people become offended because when you anytime you overgeneralize them, inevitably you're going to offend somebody because it's not true for everybody. For okay. Sure. When Dr. Wendy first came on this show, she exhibited some very anti-Black American behavior. She did, and I called it out. I don't, you know me, I don't let nobody slide. I don't care who you are. Mm -hmm. I will drag you by the by the by your kitchen hairs at the base of your neck. I will unapologetically. What I did like about Wendy, and I, I've given her, her credit since. Whatever happened, she watched herself back. She took in the critique, she took in the feedback from the audience and she corrected her behavior, which that said something to me. It said that nine times out of 10, some of those biases and behaviors that she was exhibiting, it wasn't anything that was intentional. It was something that was subliminal. It was something that she had to check herself. Why am I responding this way? Why am I behaving this way? Sometimes it takes people to point out your behavior before you start to examine yourself and say, hey, why do I, why did I do that? What was my motivation? Why am I coming across like this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bingo. Bingo. She mm -hmm. took it. She corrected. We had another problem out of Wendy. Actually. We have not. We, we have not. Problem out of Wendy. <laughs> uh -uh. She didn't gave us nothing. She didn't gave us no reason to come and, you know, off with her head. Because you know, I have you not side eyed Wendy since the first season. And that's not her, my her, her first season. Her first season, because we had to get to learn her. And, you know, even with the sway back, with the walk down the stairs, with the sway, sway, all of that. And then that it's was like, funny. yeah, it was. It was the anti-black American behavior for me that made me not like her. See, I called her the first go round, too, because I clock mm -hmm. everything. Like I said, my baby, she got the big, pretty eyes. Her mama didn't get those, okay? You got the I didn't you got them two planted eyes. Mm -hmm. the, I got the ones that bear you. This child here now, she got the big pretty eyes. You know, she I, she <laughs> didn't get them from her mama. She didn't because you know mine look real regular and they barely open. But I bet I don't, you know, about see I don't know about regular, but <laughs> I okay. see everything. When I say <laughs> everything, I see everything. And I see, I hear what you say. I hear what you don't say. I see that. I I see clearly when what you say. Is incongruent with your actions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the thing. Wendy corrected herself. She she heard what we were giving her, and mm -hmm. she was like, "Yeah, maybe I shouldn't be doing that." Because that <laughs> whole these, you know, I I back then I was calling her juvenile because she had four hundred degrees, yeah. but it was the four degree, four degree, four degree, four. Four degree, you know, because I'm a Nigerian and we and education is important. And four degree, four girls, shut the hell up. Sisters over here getting educations too. How about that? Mm -hmm. How about we ain't got to sing it from the rooftop? How about every girlfriend I got has a degree? I don't have any girlfriends that are undegree. So please stop well, that. Well, here's the thing too: our our parents is not gonna disown us. Our parents ain't disowning us, and but we ain't got a degree. But that's but, what happens. But but the thing is, but we're not gonna say y'all because that's not always true either. But the bottom line is, you're right, you're she, right. was, she was running with that negative narrative that all oh, black Americans are lazy, which is bull crap because baby wouldn't be no America without black America. We built it and y'all still trying to treat black American people like we strangers in the house that our dad is built. But that's beyond the point. I digress. 
But when she came in with that negative narrative, that's what was running, rubbing people the wrong way. That's mm -hmm. what was irritating people. It was really irritating people. And so I'm glad that she took that in. She checked it and she bagged it. And honestly, we've not had any other, any other issues out of Wendy. She cleaned herself up, but her having an anti-Black American sentiment and exhibiting it, it was irritating, but it wasn't a deal breaker for me. What the necromancer did was a deal breaker for me because you showed a little anti-Black American sentiment with the, oh, they're American, just let them say whatever. But it was the willingness to degrade yourself, your culture, your own people, to call an elder a witch in order to ingratiate yourself to people that you feel like, like you're better than. That was just all kinds of screwed up. Mm. That was 20, 20 different kinds of screwed up. That to me doesn't speak to biases because that anti-Black American sentiment and sometimes that xenophobic attitude that we find on either side of the pond, sometimes those can be things that are internalized biases. Those can be things that you don't even realize you're exhibiting. Okay. But for, for the, for necropolis, it's a character issue. I'm seeing that you're willing to do anything. You don't mind degrading yourself, your people. You don't mind promoting dangerous agendas. Like you have no thought about it. That's a character issue. And that's when I can't deal with you. You know, what's the trip to um, Sinitra that the fact that Wendy's mom didn't even come for her like she could have. She actually nope. was giving her grace and was just like on some, I don't know, just it, it was graceful. She didn't, she wasn't like, oh, oh, that's what she's doing. Oh, she's saying I, I came with the uh with the shrine. She didn't go off on it. She kind of like was like, she's like, a mother. Like she's a real mother. You know, mother, I was like, oh mama. Don't do that. You have to recognize no matter what that mongoose is, that's she's still a child under Miss Susan. Miss Susan right. is not gonna get in the mud, swinging in the mud with no baby. She's not doing that. that. Evie said, that. Evie says calling her witch while dealing with Americans who you know are ignorant of indigenous religions is really disgusting. It is. It truly is. Hmm. Prognosis, my beauty. Hello, hello. Hey y'all. How y'all doing? Hey. Hey. You Good. Thank y'all. I just wanted to chime in real fast as a um Senegalese born. I was born in Senegal and I came to the States when I was three. See, now you're uh, just begging. You already this know. Lord, I'm just saying. So Lord, now you want to let us know that she's no, not no, just a saying, beauty. She's a Senegalese beauty. I, I know you better tell them. Gorgeous. And that skin and that dimple. Go ahead. Listen, so I was just saying that it's so, it's so true that she doesn't have any um, real American friends. Like, so people consider me and my siblings Americanized. They talk shit about us. They say like, oh, we're not really Senegalese, blah, blah, blah. So the Nigerian community is even worse to me. I live in Houston, Texas. It's even oh, worse. Oh, so yeah. Okay, girl. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So all my <laughs> friends that are Nigerian, their parents are like, oh, you're hanging out with those American girls. Da, 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 da. And my mom has always been very much like we're in their country first of all okay they <laughs> built this country so you need to come here with some respect all that black americans are this black americans are that like to put it into perspective for y'all i came in the 90s when we got on an airplane they made us watch a video like welcome to america when you get to immigration oh, and oh, the God. videos that they show is so girl. traumatic that I was like, oh I don't want to be around no black people. Like, oh my God, oh, my God, scary. And my mom was like, are y'all still telling me the I truth? Mean, mind you, I was little, like I was four. I okay, never three, heard four. And so, but they showed like, oh, white people are friendly. They're kind. Yep. You can ask them questions. Yep. Go what? To black people, they're violent. They're going to hit you. Yep. And they show violence. I'm dead. I'm they gone. Okay, yeah, let so me like, don't pause, friendly, hold on, prognosis. Don't hold that thought. Let me help California Cutie and a few people in the chat. This is why these conversations, when they're held properly, are so important. Mm -hmm. This is why I'm always making the point 
that we need to sit down and talk to each other. A lot of times the biases that you're seeing coming out of Western Central Africa are a direct result. I'm Let me tell you something. I am fully aware of these videos. I know all about them. My point is we should not be so quick to retaliate and start now we're going to start generalizing we're going to start saying rude nasty stuff because literally the person the person or persons who instigate the the tension the, the people division. who instigate the fighting and the the discord between family don't look like you the people yeah. who get those videos at immigration are the clears and the clear adjacents they're the ones who want to make sure when our people arrive here from home that they don't have any allies they want them to lean on clear people for everything only trust clear people black people will sell you drugs beat you up and rob you we are violent we are dangerous this is the narrative that is being pressed and it's not just an immigration before when they go to get visas before they get on a plane to come over yeah. here a lot mm -hmm. of that information is already being disseminated by our open enemies and your enemy does not look like you make no mistake about it let me tell you something it bothers me tremendously when i hear our people here say stupid stuff like oh i ain't no african i'm from cleveland you're an idiot and you sound like you eat lead paint chips. The truth of the matter is, while you're fooling yourself, those mm -hmm. people know exactly who you are. That's one. Two, while you're fooling yourself, they are they have been able for decades upon decades now to make sure that these two groups of people who are related by blood, by genealogy, by spirit, do not reconnect. Segregated. Segregated. Yeah. The minute that we reconnect and do what we need to do for each other that will eradicate the struggling here and the struggling there. We exactly. are literally and, and actively struggling because the people who are your family, they teach you to distrust, to dislike, to degrade, and to harm. And for whatever reason, we cannot get our people on either side of that dang ocean to understand that your enemy does not look like you. Well, see, we that's why my, your own enemy, my your mom, own enemy is trudging and tromping up and down the continent, stealing everything out of the ground, including the people from on top of the ground. They got you on the internet screaming, free Palestine. Meanwhile, they, they have absolutely raided and ruined the Congo, they got four and five year old babies crawling in holes to get cobalt to build your cell phones and your iPhones and your MacBooks. And Apple is padding their pockets while little mm. black bodies, some of them have been buried alive. Mm. And they're and they they're able to do this by creating dissension in the ranks, by making you feel like you have no kinship to your own people. I don't mean to be emotional, but that's why people like necrosis piss me off. She is a leaking, infected, pus-filled hemorrhoid. Mm. And I wish nothing good on her. It's bad enough when our enemies do these things. But when you look like me, and I don't mean features, because I could never look like a broken mongoose, ever. <laughs> but when you look like me, and you're willing to cause harm and further and further press and push a divide divided yeah mm -hmm. among a family that was already divided by these by these snow monkeys but and then you gonna come in and take part in it damn but you but the diaspora wars definitely go both ways like i said my mom was it goes both ways but this, but listen i don't even want to get into that part of it i just want to talk about the facts and the facts are, it should not be happening on either direction, from either side, not going, not from east to west, not from west to east. It should not be taking place. And the last thing we need is someone who is pushing this agenda on a housewives platform in a greasy wig. I, that should never happen. And the fact that Bravo brought that deranged 
confused masquerade onto that platform to do that lets me further know that I am not off point when I say that Bravo, NBC, Universal, Truly Original, Andy Cohen, the crackhead, Powder Ranger, all of them are supremely, they're not only racist, they are white supremacists, and they are doing this intentionally to sow seeds among my people, and that is a problem for me. Because what y'all will know about Nitra from start to finish is that I'm black first and I'm black out loud. And I don't like anybody coming in with that type of garbage to push those sorts of agendas. That is inexcusable. Inexcusable. And I mean that. And I hope, as a matter of fact, I hope she don't never get a decent wig in her life. I hope when she dies, <laughs> they go find a wig off a mad woman that's roaming the streets and just put it on her in the box. I hope she never gets a word on the street in Nigerian Houston is a lot of people have tried to help her, but she's super arrogant. She's like, oh, she has all this money. And it's true. There are, there are a lot of. But the word on the street where? Because, you know, I just. You talking about Yeah, she's talking about necrosis. So I'm let's talk about girl. Southwest Houston, Texas. In well, Asia. I was, um, girl, I was, <laughs> well, hold on. I was in Southwest. My people got a shop right on Bissonette. So who was talking? Who, who oh, was, okay. We what was said? It. What was said? No, no, I'm saying. Let it in on it. I'm talking about a lot of the the fellow Nigerian friends of mine too are like people have tried oh, to help her. But this is what I'm saying. Help. But but hold she on, where do they hold way. on? Hold on, where do they know her from? We can't just say people say it because people lie. So where they know her from? Give me the connection <laughs> is what I'm saying. Give me the connection. Okay, so Lebe, the one y'all don't know if her name is really Lebe. Lebe comes. Oh, it's really Lebe. Okay. Yeah. And she comes to Houston all the time with her sorority sisters. So that's mm -hmm. how I even am even in the conversation is the only mm -hmm. conversation that's really been around. So what's the, hold on, slow down, girl. So what's the, <laughs> what sorority is Levy in? Is she Zeta Phi Beta? Is she a row? She I, a mean, SD I, what is she? A, I don't think it's a D9. I don't believe it's a D9. I oh, she's not D9. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it's D9 at all. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the real issue has been about how Africans, first generations, how we are allowing um, American media to kind of like ruin our good names. And I'm saying it in that way. So it's but, but no, I'm not. Hold on. I ain't saying about that, girl. I'm oh. saying what's the connection into the people that you say are talking to her? What's their connection to her? How oh. do they they know her and they hang out with her. Like she's at all the weddings and everything. It's a huge but small. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Girl, I've been there for the last 10 years. Oh, I'm trying to understand. Okay, so who, who, who is she been around? I'm trying to get it because I, I don't recall seeing that girl nowhere. I've never seen her in Houston saying people know her in Houston and in Dallas that are like, don't talk about Maybe it's friends. more Dallas than Houston because I'm no, trying to no, 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 no. figure out. No, no, because one of the girls at one of the la uh, one of the last bridal parties had a real bad attitude. It, this was in January. She was getting married. She got a bad attitude because everybody was like, you're not a good friend because your friend wig's bad. And she had a whole fit at her party talking about, I do tell her, y'all need to mind y'all business. She thinks she look good. What am I supposed to tell her? And I was just like, at the end of the day, I kind of agree with that. You can only tell your soulful country bad dressing friends so much that you know oh, what? Let me tell How you many? something. I know. I, let me tell you. I know you've been in Houston too long because you call that girl soulful. First time I heard that when I got to Houston, I was like, I'm mad the, at the fact that y'all called California cutie. Listen, you know how we say somebody look old fashioned or mammy made. These people say soulful. I was so confused. Oh, like, soulful. That's what that mean. That's what they mean. I'm like, what the hell is soulful? When I got to Houston. <laughs> I'm like soulful girl. You mean it's like dress the occasion? Okay, okay, I got it. No, oh, old church lady, basically. You know, but yes, just, and it's and, and we're gonna be honest. It's a lot of African people that don't their makeups don't match. My mom is still back home, and I have to listen. We're mom. not gonna do mom. that. We're not gonna do that. No, I mean, that not, matching makeup is hard. Matching makeup is hard, y'all. I don't care if light skin or dark skin. But this is what I'm saying. We're not gonna. I but know, hold on, we're not, we are not going to do that. Talking about the aunties and the bad makeup and stuff. We done already been there. I've been through it. I have been like attacked in the bathroom because I didn't want to put on 20 pounds of pancake. And you know, my good sis has, has plastered it on me and I kept it and washed it off in the car with wipes. 
So we're just not going to go there. No, we're saying because people are not going to understand. And it's going to sound like we saying something we're not saying. We're not going to do that. It's all I'm telling okay. you. Let's not do Let's not go there. Okay, so when you you're say people have tried to help her, you're saying they tried to help her not look like that. Yes. Is what you're saying. If she thinks okay. she's cute, what you gonna tell somebody that thinks they look cute and you don't think they look cute? Well, but see, this is my thing, right? Mm -hmm. Her friends say claim they tried to tell her. Um, I believe they did, yeah. but if we're gonna be fair, and, and on this platform, we're gonna always be fair. We know some of our dear sisters that hail out of that part of the world, they don't always tell you in the nicest way. I think that's the most politically correct way I can say that. And that's it's not always easy to accept criticism when people tell you that there's a color riot on your face or somebody is walking up telling you that you look like you just escaped from a shrine or something like, you know, the mouths can be very rough. Okay, so maybe her friend did not say it in the nicest way. And I'm not making excuses for um, the necromancer at all, because like I said, because of that stunt she pulled, I pray that she never owns a decent wig in her life. May she never find a good wig. May every wig she buy be greasy or shiny as a baby doll from Dollar General. I Can mean, I nothing good. Something. Do you think that she's looked back and reflected and she regrets it because i kind of see I so. well no i, I, don't, so. I don't believe so i don't believe I so. so i hope so she could she could but i just don't believe it i feel like your character is not that jacked up that you didn't know what you were doing was wrong okay carrie says oh my daddy got a rough tongue but i love him for it thank you you know what i'm saying you know it can be a little rough okay I got a little reputation myself. You don't need to get bad mouth, okay? <laughs> bad mouth. But um, the truth of the matter is she knew she was wrong when she did it. And the baby says she, she thinks she only regrets it because the audience didn't like her for it. Probably, yeah, she regrets the outcome. Oh, but cool. I don't think she regrets her behavior because if she had, when she got on that reunion, there's no way she'd have sat there, Okay and said, you ice me out. Like you're basically sitting up here saying, still saying nonsensical things, still trying to play victim after what you did. So you're demonstrating that you don't feel bad at all. You, you don't feel bad, you don't regret it. You just don't like the outcome you got. You don't like that sisters drug you for filth. That's what you don't like, okay? You don't like that we talked about everything from your greasy wig to your scuffed toe on your shoe. That's what you don't like. <laughs> That's what she doesn't like. I have to keep myself on mute because I'm. Sorry. I know I see you. I see your mute button go on and off. I'm like, <laughs> she can't even help it. She's like, girl, I gotta stop. Wait, let me hit the button. Oh, let me come back on. Wait, mute, unmute, mute, unmute. Thank you, girl, child. Because it's the truth. Had she had what she set out to do. If she was able to accomplish it, she wouldn't feel bad at all. She'd feel great. Yeah, no, she was ten ten toes down, and she's not. Yes, agreed, agreed. Did Absolutely. Uh, did y'all see on Watch What Happens Live? Andy Cohen had some basketball football player that was in the what's the last game that they play at the end of the year? The Super Bowl. The, the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Boys and his mom, she was Nigerian, and he asked her, "What did you think about it?" And she was like, it was completely inappropriate and it shouldn't have been put on TV. Did y'all see that? I saw that. I, I saw did. that. I, did see I that. didn't. When was this? I missed it. Well, you know what? In in all fairness, I'm going to miss it. I never watch Watch What Happens Live because I despise Andy Cohen. I do. I agree with you, sis. I only catch clips. So when was this? How did I miss it? It, was, it wasn't at the very end. It, was, uh, it wasn't like the reunion. Maybe like three... Weeks back. back, yes. Um, mm -hmm. she Which was, she did say that. I was like, Oh, <laughs> that's what made me. She's, yeah, that's why when they were talking about as far as like, um, what should be said and what should not be said on the Nigerian, you know, on as far what? as them Ooh. talking about the, the shrine or whatever. Yeah, the mom was like, like They had nothing to do with the show, but the mom was like. Yeah, we don't talk about that kind of stuff in, 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 in front of people. I was like, Yeah, that's inappropriate. This is a real thing. 
I had to pull he he Ellie's comment back up. I cannot with you. Yeah, Talking yeah. about I her out from who though? Wendy and Eddie are the only people who don't like neck bone and as she a fool a fool. I am done. Listen, okay, so that's an inside joke, California cutie. I know you <laughs> might be missing what <laughs> here. Well, no, that was my fault, right? That was when she was running around when they were in Austin and she's at the table and she mm -hmm. goes, he has as a title, he's a titled man, and he didn't have to pay for his title. And I said, first of all, this man just got married at his age. He's still young. He just got married. He has no children. If he has a title, somebody paid for it. That's one. And what? And I said, and what the hell is his title? As she a full a full one of a weary. Like, what is your title? So that's <laughs> why she brought that back. <laughs> Thank you for giving me context. I'm like, what? I just wanted y'all to know, like, I'm not crazy. I started laughing because he, he, L, E, L will make me eat my words. That's why that name is he, he, L, E, L, L, O, L. Like, that, me, that, she that, will the name me, says it all. She will make me eat my words. Because y'all know, I just start running my mouth and I don't be thinking about what I'm saying. And Lord. she will, she'll circle that thing back around and be like, you oh, see it. And just drop it back in my lap. So she just got me. That's why, I, that's why I had to, like, fan it off. Because I was about to scream. I was about to holler. Yes, she said he's a titled man. She said her husband is a chief, honey. He is chief Mohawk. He ain't just Mohawk. He's chief Mohawk. Chief Mohawk. Yes, he's a whole red cap chief. Yes. I'm trying to say chief. Why? And you got me choking over here. <laughs> okay, not. It was yeah, funny. Um, my husband has a title. My my husband has a title and he didn't have to pay for it. Oh, if he's got a title, somebody paid you, your daddy, your grandpappy, somebody paid, honey. He don't have no children. He got one wife, barely got married, and he's still a slip of a boy. He hasn't even learned to grease his ankles. I'm definitely going to Google it. I'm definitely going to Google it. <laughs> What's that? Check the chat. What Nacho told me to do. She said to uh, Google. She said, yo, your word. Oh, effle, effle. It's not my word. It's just a word. He's just a useless a person. Word. He's just a very uh, stupid and useless person. It's nothing to Google, dear. Oh, that's what. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. I like the way it, it's the way it look and the way you say it. <laughs> that's I mean, I saying. just asked the question. I I only asked the question. Was that his title? Child. I just I only asked. I only asked. I only asked. Okay. But him and Nick are both they're mad people, and it was just ridiculous for them to be on this show and to behave the way they did. Um, poetic lyrics is crazy. Talking about oh, that's gotta be his name from now on. Chief Mohawk. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, for real. That's the real right thing. I'm like, so now, now you're a chief. You're chief Mohawk. Okay. I, 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 you know what I did not care for? I did not care for Giselle laughing when Candace choked up. I was like, yeah. bro, oh, oh, here come the tears. Oh, oh, here come the tears. <laughs> what? You know why it, 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 it makes me mad? Because I can cry very easily. I'm very empathetic to a lot of things. So me being an empath, I cry over a lot of things, a lot, a lot, a lot of things. Um, so um, when people get mad or, you know, try to comfort somebody that cries a lot, I'll be like, you mad because yeah. somebody got emotions. You mad because somebody uses the crying emotions. Some people to cry. Yeah, they cry. This is an, it's yeah, an it's like when they get up, when they get angry, they cry. They get frustrated, they cry. Some people cry. He L E L is crazy. Talk that about that. She said that thing was too funny to me that night. I couldn't forget it. She said, as she a for one. Yes, he's one. Wow. The first one. <laughs> too funny. Hi. You back? I'm just, yeah, I'm back. Okay, Chris. Because <laughs> I'm like, what happened? <laughs> So y'all tell me what else about this part one kind of like did something to your nerves? It was the gas overall gaslighting. Like they had a, they was not gonna play that tape back. Mind you, production can like automatically find taste of rot. I mean, not rot. Candace and Wendy, but when it comes to 
Giselle and Robin, they can't find the play the tapes back so all of a sudden. That's what got me because Giselle did say it. And she did say about grabbing um Deborah's, I mean Sesame Street's butt. So but why can't y'all play it? Y'all just sat up there and let her lie. Even Robin, like everyone's saying like on Twitter, like, oh, Candace took it too far and wrote about her friend on Twitter. Y'all got to say, Robin actually started the first blow, and it was more than one. But everyone's just focusing on what how Candace responds. Well, it's it's complexion, dear. It's all about complexion. So You're right. apparently, if someone is clear adjacent and they, they, can, they can talk about you, they can call you a crispity, crunchity, crackity coon, and the minute you say your mama, Mm-hmm. You are now, you know. <laughs> Say now that. You, got, now, you, you know my mama, my light skin mama. You talking right. about my light skin mama? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. wait, what? You just call me right. a cockroach, a chocolate bunny, a whoop whop, a midnight. Yep. But the minute you, what? The everything minute you understood. Say something as simple as your mama. Mm-hmm. Now, oh, you got, you, now, you, now you got to walk a green mile. Time for Shawshank Redemption for you. you exactly. I tell people all the time, don't let this light skin fool you. I'm light skin because my dad is Latino. Uh, but my mom is a black woman from Louisiana, and so is my grandmother. My grandmother is darker than you, Sanisha. My gra- my mom is about your complexion, but my grandmother is chocolate. Okay. okay. So when I I get very offended when somebody talk about somebody chocolate because I think about my grandmother and what she went through. So don't play with me about that. And then my mama being brown skin and having me and them thinking that she is babysitting me. Hmm. You know, because that, that kind of thing happens. And so I like that people figured it out on their own because people were people were actually clocking the color the colorism before Candace ever said anything. If Very you true. ask me, Candace said what she said because she saw the people online pointed out first. Because yeah. Yeah. Nothing, and this is nothing against Candace, but Candace yeah. don't have a whole lot of original ideas either. Now let's not pretend. Mm-hmm. Okay, now I like Dorothy, but Candace ain't always the brightest bulb in the box, which is why she's still crying about big manly Robert not being her <laughs> now when it comes down to it. When it comes right down to it, we've already we've always pointed it out. So if we've always seen your colorism, there's no way that you're gonna magically get death threats because Candace just figured it out. Candace was the last one to the party, she's late. The lies, the lies. So we never threatened to take your life beforehand, none of that stuff ever happened. And your kids and your children, and your they hurting they, your children too, huh? Because said, she, because Giselle cannot help herself. She is her father's daughter, and yeah. she wants to perpetuate this story that black mm-hmm. people, those darkies, are so dangerous. Exactly. Those darkies are so dangerous. Child. We all like to get them. If you didn't know, like he did Barbara Joy now here in Houston. Yeah, that means. Yeah, we talked. We talked about that, but you know, I just want y'all to know that was not his only incident. Just to be mm. very clear, okay? Mm. So this man had has a record of such behavior, okay? Mm-hmm. Now that's the most popular, so people keep repeating it ad nauseum. But that was not his only incident. I need to find it more. Was- then where you find it? I need to get to my Google's. Child, it's called I'm an experienced gossiper, and y'all mm. stay behind me, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, this is my point. My point is when it comes to this color thing, because people are pointing it out, because people have gotten to a point where we're just over it and we're letting them know we're your target demographic, but you all come on here week after week, season after season with the intent to offend us. You mm-hmm. want to offend us. You want to humble us. Which is, in my opinion, like I told y'all before, the whole takedown of Wendy wasn't just about Wendy. That was about all us black heifers. It was like, y'all want to scream black girl magic, melanin magic. Oh, we educated, we we dignified, we're sophisticated. And them trying to take her down at all costs. Mm -hmm. That happened with Monique. I feel like that happened with Monique too, sis. Go ahead. But this is the thing. This is a message to all of us heifers. Mm -hmm. This was a little bit deeper. What happened with Monique, yeah, it was colorism. But this one is more symbolic. This one is more symbolic Mm -hmm. because Monique was not somebody who could boast of this grand education and success and of being in the corridors of D.C. and invited to the White House and invited to the governor's mansion and the darling of D.C. She can not boast that. But for this black lady to be able to boast that with your beautifully dark complexion, your perfect children, your Mm -hmm. perfect husband, your perfect squeaky clean black, I mean, Hallmark card family. They need to 
image at all costs. The destruction of that image is an affront not only to us, but it was an assault against all of us. Mm -hmm. It was an assault. Why you say? Glad you asked. What are we always bragging about? Oh, we're the most educated demographic. Oh, mm -hmm. our girls are magical. Our girls are elite. Our girls are perfect. No, you can't sit with our girls. No, you don't get to call yourself black just because you want to. Oh, no, 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 no. This is a super elite sisterhood from the celestial, from the heavens. And you have to be born in, baby. And so the fact that you got all these black women who are accomplished, who are pissing the world off at large. And now you got their representative. You got their whole mascot on, on this show. And you never intended for her to be that. You brought her in to be a lap dog and a dummy until y'all messed around and let her see herself back on that film. And then you were stupid enough to try to attack her husband, not knowing that one thing our good Ebo sisters gonna do is defend their husbands and their families. You never thought in a million years that you were gonna have a black girl magic mascot on your freaking network. And that's what this takedown is all about. Mm -hmm. This is, we're going to put all you black heifers in your place. Mm -hmm. That's what this is about, honey. This is a whole lot deeper than just getting in because she dark. It's all you heifers with your degrees. All mm -hmm. of y'all talking about y'all too cute to be out here talking about smut and sex and filth. And this is about all of us who mm -hmm. brag about sending our girls to to these HBCUs, these bastions and citadels of, mm -hmm. of black excellence. How dare you be so proud of yourselves? Mm -hmm. That's what this is. This is, we gonna keep these darkies in their place. That's what this is. Good luck, good luck. It ain't never worked luck. before, but- you know, That's what I'm saying, good luck. luck. <laughs> but that's what this is about. It's not. It's more. It's, it's more than trying to tear her down. It's about trying to besmirch that image. They need that image to be brought down. Mm -hmm. They want to humble her. Yep. And not just her, baby. They want to humble mm -hmm. all, of, all us. of us. Yep. yep. That's why. How dare y'all be proud of yourselves? How dare you not feel inferior because somebody got recessive genes? How how dare you not be worshiping Giselle because she got the eyes of a dog? Why, how dare you not and run around uh, pretending like Robert must be prettier than us while she looked like the nature boy Ric Flair? You a lie? Because they're with how women. dare you not pretend like Mia is attractive while she looking like Edward James almost? How mm -hmm. dare you point out that mm -hmm. Ashley's sitting over there looking like a dingy, musty bar fly with mm -hmm. too much head for the hair she took? Mm. California cutie laughing at me, and I know she is, but I'm just telling the truth. Yeah. I am. I was like, <laughs> it's when the truth just speaks, sometimes you just gotta laugh they at want it. Us, honestly, <laughs> they want us to see ourselves as inferior so bad. How mm -hmm. dare we? How it's dare we? Happen. Listen, where is my mirror? Because I keep it so close. They <laughs> can't stand that we would grab our mirror and just be in love with ourselves. Like, I am. I'm so in love. Mm -hmm. But they hate that. Mm -mm. They yeah, hate that's that. That's not like a real problem. They want you to worship their image and hate your own. And the thing mm -hmm. is, the reason they want you to do that so bad is because that's how they defeated our forebears. That's how they were able to put them mentally in chains when they can make <laughs> you hate your own image, when they Thank can make you. you worship their image. So mm -hmm. even when their image shows up in <laughs> our own culture, they want mm -hmm. you to automatically create this hierarchy that mm -hmm. proximity to their features is somehow bigger and better. better. No, when you sitting up here looking like Lord Farquaad, you are a liar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are a liar. <laughs> and a filthy one, according to one. You don't even made. <laughs> That was messy. I don't I even. Mean, Rob is not my favorite, but the way he talked to her is just crazy. It's crazy. The talk way to her, talk about her. The way, hold on, now, the way she let him talk to that, her. That is true. Because she true. allows it. Because I'm going to tell you like this I don't know your story. I can only tell mine. Mm -hmm. The man that's going to talk to me like that ain't never been born. Exactly. <laughs> Say he that. You don't have a Say job. That. He ain't never been born. He don't exist. 
I will wait here for him to for him to descend hmm. because the man that talked to me like he ain't never been born. I would have never married him again if he would have said that kind Marry of thing. him. We ain't got like, to be. I bet not know you. You better not see me at a soda fountain. The man that will talk to me like that, me. Hey, he's never yeah. been born. Mm -mm. Yeah. He talks to her real crazy. God never made him. His mama never carried him. It never. It, it he never existed. Then her dumb stuff got a nerve to ask about anybody's husband on that stage. Really? Not just ask. She <laughs> want to interrogate the man, Chris B. She want to interrogate the if man. I worked Candace because if you're not coming back, I would have laid it into them for one good time. You questioning my man? Where your man at, sis? Hmm. Not just her. where he at. We know where he ain't. Hey, she can't tell you where he at. When she in the house, she can't tell you where he yeah, we could tell her where he ain't, and that's with her. Exactly. Or at work. He's not the she, was, she was trying to say, uh, "I don't, I don't have his, um, I don't have his, uh, his, 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 his he doesn't have my name. How about how about me and my husband is the same? How about me and my husband's are ours is the same? You can pick my phone up at any time. I can pick yours up. Not that that has to happen to everybody. That's not an everybody thing. Just like." You not having your husbands is not an everybody thing. That's a problem, though, especially when you guys are rebuilding on trust. You guys are <laughs> re-getting married for the second time. Yeah, that's a big problem that you don't have his his security code or you can't you you get to ask for it or like it, like to me, I just feel like like I said, me and my husband, ours is the same. I don't and I don't even need to check it. Like. Thank I don't you. even need to check it. I don't I was need about to, to say because once men get to a certain age, baby, you shouldn't have to be checking no phone. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just I'm, I'm all I'm gonna say. If I gotta check it, I don't want you. Y'all know I, I got Y'all know I openly admit, me and Papa, we got mentholated love over here. We're not young people, okay? Mm -hmm. It's mentholated. Everything smells like icy hot, Ben Gay, deep heat. <laughs> you know, this real love over here. And me and Pop Pop, we don't check each other telephones. Ain't nothing to see in there. Ain't nothing exciting in the telephone. But and I'm sorry. He did check it. He but erased Robert, Robert and But Robert and Juan, the, let me tell you something. They old enough not to be doing this because Robert is in them early 40s. She's old enough not to be doing this type of stuff. First mm -hmm. of all, who the hell taught one how to delete stuff out of phone? If mm -hmm. a man ain't doing that, most of them don't know how to use phones properly. That's why they be getting caught. They don't know what the hell they're doing. Let me they don't know what they're before you even go on there. My husband right now, when I pick up his phone, it say like probably, probably like 450 unread messages on his exactly. phone. Exactly. Like, that's but how much the, that's how much he don't give up about that but message. That's, mm -hmm. But that's the whole thing. One day. You making my point. The Juan is it? at an age where that he takes should, a lot of time. But that's my thing. Juan is at an age where he shouldn't have that much time for no phone. Exactly. He surely shouldn't know how to be in there deleting nothing. They don't know how to delete a goddamn thing. They like, have the time, half the time they're gonna pass it to you and say, Hey, show me how you did that thing, what you did the other time. The fact that he is on top of phones like that. That it, listen, mm -hmm. it's giving me you've been talking to young girls because they don't talk how to do some stuff. Yeah, they ain't no helpers. Mm -hmm. And they clown them. And they like clown them. And they clown them about it because you know, right. young people will, will quickly clown you if you don't know what you're doing. Yes, they will. They, they mean. Young they people are mean. Like, they don't know what you're doing. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> young people yeah, is mean. Yeah. But you know, I'm gonna say this yeah. though. Uh-uh. But see, a lot of times if them young girls can get money. Money off them old them old scounds like that. They'll play nice. Well, you know, I'll show you how to delete it or whatever that way they can keep their money coming in. Mm -hmm. But my whole point is this we know it wasn't no too many women his age, because most of us can't do that much stuff on the phone. As Geneva, that my baby that be uh, hey, I don't know how to do stuff. Hey, tell your mama how to do. I don't know how to do that. I don't care. I keep my 14-year-old around for that reason. I'd be like, bro, like even today, I was like, well, them kids oh, one, of my one of my subscriptions went out. Can you hear? No, mm -hmm. this like, thing ain't working, honey. Listen, that's my line right there. Um, California cutie, I go to, this thing ain't working. <laughs> it's, it's the phone fault, it ain't my fault. It's the phone, yeah. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like, just the fact that she's still going through all that, it's a joke. Mm -hmm. But you want to interrogate somebody else, man, girl, you can't even tell your man how you feel. 
Exactly. But you want to interrogate somebody, yeah, somebody else? else. Yeah. Y'all talking about Candace should have said, "Where's your man?" No, Candace, that ain't the question Candace should have asked. Candace should have asked her, "Girl, are you trying to share my man with me? Because you can't act like one your man. Are you? Do you exactly. want to share? This? Are we sharing a man?" Because mm-hmm. I don't remember hiring you to be no babysitter. I didn't hire you as no investigator, FBI agent, CIA, Homeland, but, nobody. So, <laughs> are, you know, are we sharing a man? Are you my Are you my co-wife? What are we doing? Mm-hmm. Why are you questioning him and Juan Ryan here, free as a daisy? I mean, running wild, mm-hmm. like, a, like a barefoot yard dog, just running wild. But you want to question this one. He, ain't, he never went that. to go see your people. She's mm-hmm. a loser. He never took any wine to your daddy. Like, why are you questioning this man? That's the one who went to your daddy to ask to marry you. Why are you not questioning that one? Mm-hmm. Because they brother she and can't sister. talk about her feelings with this man. Hello. But she can't <laughs> talk about her feelings with the man. She talk about her feelings. He say, I don't care. Yeah. And I don't care. I don't want to know. Stop talking to me. Mm-hmm. Leave me alone. Mm-hmm. Leave me alone. Mm-hmm. He hang up with her. Oh, it's sad though. Yes, y'all. yes, poetic lyrics. Sad, but she you you it. saw what I said. That's right. Young people are mean. Are. They are mean. We tell they, them no we patience with stuff. They got. The they have no joy. patience. They got. They have no patience. I told you this before. How come yes. you don't know how to do it? Everything is instant for them. So if you yeah. have to ask them more than one time, we in trouble. You didn't catch it the first time. Yeah. Oh, oh. I'll be like, um. You know I brought you in the world. You know I can take you out, right? So don't do that. Yeah, I don't me. get no heavy There's breathing. No ain't nobody. Ain't, I, I can honestly say I ain't get no. Ain't no. Ain't none of mine did no heavy breathing for me. Mine Praise don't do Lord. it to me, but I've seen ain't it done. Good. I've seen it done for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just want to testify on the goodness of the Lord because ain't none of my children done that. Mm-mm. I ain't <laughs> never had that happen. God's so good, ain't he? I ain't never had nobody breathing. I ain't never had nobody to do no talking back and tooth sucking and none of that. Ooh, no, ain't I, good. I used so to good. roll my eyes so tough and get get my feelings. Eye rolling. I roll. Hold on. I roll. Prognosis. Prognosis. Hmm? Might I ask? I ro- I roll in in whose house? Where would I have At seen the rolling house? of the eyes of which you see? <laughs> oh, okay. But you asked. But hold on, but you asked me had I seen some, so I want to know where I would have seen it. Oh, no, she wouldn't have seen it. <laughs> you ain't seen it. No. Yeah, because I ain't never seen no eyes being rolled. <laughs> well, at least I, not in your face, maybe behind your back. But but that's that's my whole point. That's oh, I, that's whole all point. I Let me tell you. <laughs> I, I cussed my mama out in my closet. Hello. Only in me, my closet. Listen, Only in I'm, my closet. I'm, try, I'm trying to tell you. Fear in the pillow. The in the fear pillow. Is in the, my fear closet. is the beginning of wisdom. Mm-hmm. When you got enough fear to know that you better mm-hmm. not ever let that old lady see you do that. Mm-hmm. Y'all don't know, you, listen, y'all don't know how good God is. Let me tell you. The Lord Sorry. is so good because ain't none of my children ever tried that. Mm-hmm. It, I, you know what? I believe it would be a novel experience. Mm-hmm. If they I, did, they wouldn't let it tell it. That's the problem. <laughs> That's the thing. Mm-hmm. I've never seen it. <laughs> and you know what else? This is another way that I know that my father is so good. I, my mother never experienced it either. Mm-hmm. It must be generational. Oh, well, that's, I wasn't, why that's, that's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, my mama, I'm that's my mother's daughter. I'm my mother's I, daughter. I, so she expected it. You know what I mean? Yeah, see, your mama was like that with her mama. Yes. The Nika mama, she wasn't like that with her mama. Her kids are not like that with her. Mm-hmm. I wasn't like that with my mom. My kids are not like that with, with yeah, me. No. It's the, but it, that's it why is. I'm to My dear mother had five of us. And none of us ever did any of that wild yeah. stuff. Like, no. That I just wasn't five. way to go. I got five, and none of mine did that to my, to me either. Yeah. No. Like, oh, that is so good. What did you mm. well, I knew not to have children because my child would be like, I'm not that anything's wrong with me technically, but I gave my mama a lot of our money. Every day and pay a prognosis and payback is a bi. Listen, <laughs> but my nieces and my nephews have been kind of like you know. But one of my nieces shares my birthday, and my mom's like, "Oh, your little twin, you see that?" I was like, "Did you just suck your teeth at me?" Mm-hmm. She's like, no. I was like, "I know you did." Oh wow. Mm-hmm. Y'all look at what Angela oh. Davis said. Angela says she remember beating up her mama roll after she left for the day. Yes. <laughs> 
My coach, anything that they don't see is okay. That's fair game. It's don't mm-hmm. do it in front of them. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna say you can some stuff. Don't say it out loud. The I will say this. Out, done. <laughs> I thank God that there were no like CCTV cameras when I was a girl back in the oh dinosaur God. days. Because my mother was like the Gestapo. She watched you. She tossed rooms like it was jail cells, like you had no privacy. If you locked the door, she took it off the hinges. Like that was my OG, triple OG. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If there were CCTV cameras, like if she could put could have, could have put cameras in to watch us, she would have done it. Mm-hmm. I probably would have been in trouble because mm-hmm. I would have been afraid to even like, you know, when she wasn't mm-hmm. looking, just like yeah. she gonna catch this on mm-hmm. camera. And then I'm going to see the king soon and very soon. I'm going to see the king. So, you know, I'm grateful that there were no cameras. Very grateful. But yeah, y'all, we we dive, we've diverged off of the path and we talk yes. about everything else. So I'm gonna get up off of here because it is literally <laughs> eight minutes to seven p.m. where I am. I'm still Central Standard Time, and I've not eaten all day. Oh, and you know what? I'm not even hungry, but I know I need to eat something. Yeah, you sure you could. Mm-hmm. I definitely right. ate before I got on. That's what took me a little longer to get on your live. I was over there eating my crab oil the husband made for me last night. And I bet <laughs> you it was seasoned. You was chewing and left me hungry. Mm. I'm so sorry, sister. I'm so sorry. And I bet <laughs> you it was seasoned. Not like what they had. Oh, in the but I put it in the chat. <laughs> I put it in the chat. I was like, mine is seasoned. I'm Matter of fact, I was, <laughs> I was on the Because that, some of that season got down up, in, up, up, up in here. I was like, whoa. <clears throat> And so went yeah, down the wrong way. way. That's mm-hmm. right. That's right. <laughs> but but you know, know, thank you for having us. Good night, y'all. Let me, tell you, let me okay. tell you something. I'd be so happy when people come talk to me because I just <laughs> feel like I, I feel like you know a motherless child because people won't talk to me. I just talk and then they type stuff for me to read and then they be like, "Bump you, old lady. We ain't talking to you." So I just sit here, you know. <laughs> I had a great sad, time. It was great. Sad, sad little old lady with nobody to talk to. Y'all just leave me alone. So I'd be so happy when anybody come talk to me. I'd be so excited. I'm like this on the phone too because I, I don't also, get a whole lot of calls. So by the time I'm somebody call, I will hold you on the phone. I am a typical old lady. And you know what? I have no pity. And I will tell you to your face, the people in the chat who have called me know, I will tell you to your face. If you call me more often, I wouldn't keep you on the phone like this. I'd be all in you. I don't have nobody to talk to. So, yes, I'm holding you. Yeah. That is funny. So, I was real happy y'all came to talk to me. I feel special. Well, I appreciate your perspective as well. Me too. I agree. With the diaspora wars that everybody has, you know, you're kind of like in the middle ground. And I think that's like needed. That's really dope. It is needed. And we got to make sure that we promote love amongst our people and yes. we cannot participate in ignorance when we see it we need to say it. call we it out to stop to it immediately yes. and i don't care which side is doing it i don't care where you're from i don't care what your accent is honey i don't care what your native tongue is i don't care what your passport is when we see it we need to check it hey sis that we shouldn't be saying that hey bro we shouldn't be saying that we all the same people. Mm-hmm. Let's stop that. You know, that's how we're going to put a stop to the mess that those other people started. Because we didn't start it, but we can stop it. Yep. Okay? Yeah. All right. So any final thoughts for the people before we shut this down and I go get me some groceries? <laughs> Can't wait for next week. Can't wait me to too. see this second half of this me dang too. reunion. I hope it, uh, you know, <laughs> gives us a little bit more. I feel like this first one was pretty good, but I hope, hopefully the second one brings a little bit more um, open and ended questions and answers that we yep. need because you know um, we always have some questions, but I, I really hope that we get to a a lot of uh, answers that we need. Oh, let me ask y'all this before you go: What y'all think the secret is? Gordon finna tell them people next week hmm. that he ain't the baby daddy. Yep. <laughs> yeah, or he did a DNA test. I don't know. You know what I think he finna tell y'all. Mm-hmm. I'm nervous. What? Mm-hmm. I think he finna tell y'all that cancer done came back. Oh, I don't know why. I got a feeling he finna say some stuff that we not expecting. 
Mm. Uh, I, I don't know. know that's not it, but you know, it could be because all the stress he's been under. Yeah, she's she been under a lot of stress, and 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 that's a leading <laughs> to everything going wrong with your body is stress. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, but I'm gonna tell you, you what right. made me feel that way was when they showed the sneak peek and like the look on his face and the way people was looking. It didn't give. Oh, we already knew about it. Like if it was something about that baby, the the looks on the faces would have been different. You know what I'm saying? I, it, was, it was it was like go back and rewatch that part, y'all. The look on everybody's every, the look on everybody's face. More like, like yeah, it was like a grave surprising. look. It was a very yeah. grave, very sad, very somber look. And I listen, Queen. I pray not too, but I feel like somebody's sick or somebody been sick. Something, you know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I hate, why did I take it there? But I just well, hey, a lot of about you're it reading myself. between the lines very well. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> you're reading between the lines very well. So you might I be on to something. Yeah. And Cheryl, life. see, and Cheryl I'm saying maybe that's why he's so accepting of ink. ink. Come I'm on. Saying. Come on. Hey, Ink. How Hi. you doing? No. I know, right? I was like, huh? He's like, what's up, hey, How you doing? Um, what you say, prognosis? What you just want to say? I was saying, on Watch What Happens Live, Andy asked Wendy a couple of questions about the reunion, and one of the questions was, who did you walk away from the reunion feeling different about or understanding a little more? And she said, Mia. And then they asked her, who was the most like protective? And then she said, Gordon, towards Mia. So now that I'm thinking about that, that might be... She might be on to something, huh? Yeah. Oh, I hope that old man ain't sick. Like, I don't mm -hmm. feel bad for him, you know, running into hoe problems because he went and got a hoe. But <laughs> I don't want to hear about nobody cancer. Man, Me cancer too. is awful. Me too. Cancer I don't is care that. awful. But something mm -hmm. just tell me this, whatever he about to tell us got something to do with that cancer. I believe it, y'all. I got a bad feeling about this one. Thank you, Angela Davis. I appreciate you. I'll be back. I don't be too far. I'll be in the bushes most of the time. <laughs> Girl, you welcome. I don't know why you hiding in bushes. You're gonna get a sand spur up your tail. Well, sometimes I'll be braiding this. I'll be I'll be working. Oh, you be braiding. Mm. I'll be working up so I can't jump on and talk to y'all. But I'll be even when you do your lives like, mm. and you ask for people to come up and be like, ah, I want to go up so bad, but yeah. I'm I'm working. So I I'm know. going to working today. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you had time to holler at us today, man. Anytime you, I ain't got to tell you you're welcome. You already I know. You. I know I'm welcome. <laughs> I know I'm a warrior. I know. I got it. That's right. <laughs> you family, come here anytime you want to. I don't run nobody off. Like, literally, by the time I say somebody ain't welcome, they have literally run themselves off. You know I don't. I know that's right. I know that's mm -hmm. right. I got mm -hmm. you. But I appreciate so, everybody in the chat. I appreciate everybody on the panel. I appreciate you, Sanitra. Thank y'all for having me. I do have my own channel. Y'all can follow me. Okay. Beauty with two E's. It's right there for you. And that's all I got to say. I love y'all. Okay. Yeah. Prognosis, what's your final thoughts, gorgeous? Now I'm feeling sorry for me. Uh, even though I... Why know. would you feel sorry for her? Gordon, the one sick if he's sick. Well... <laughs> <laughs> It's just all of it together. You know, I don't yeah. know. I'm softy at the end of the day. I really mm -hmm. am. I try to look at oh, yeah. the best things. Besides just, I don't give nobody, I don't give Giselle Grace ever. But everybody else, I'm just kind of like, eh, life happens. Rob either. Don't give Rob Grace either. I'm sorry. Oh, Robin either. But Robin also, <laughs> I feel like it's in an abusive relationship. But that's another comment. So, yeah. It was a great con. And I appreciate y'all. Thank you. Chris B, what you got yeah. on the table? <laughs> well, I can't wait to see what these next two parts will have. And again, thank you for having us. I always like your insight. And so, and I'll come again. But I'm yeah. always in the chat, though. I'm always in the chat. I love it. Y'all, I don't know what to eat. I need to eat mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. Eat what something not so heavy because you took you. it's already seven, eight o'clock. So don't, yeah. whatever you eat, make it light. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, but make it like don't make it too mm -hmm. heavy. Yeah, I can't eat heavy food like that. Yeah, no something, my, stomach, something really my stomach has turned on me so bad these days. Mm -hmm. I can't eat heavy food like that no more. I'm trying mm -hmm. to think, like, what's a good thing to eat when you don't want nothing? Soup and salad. salad. Or soup and crackers or mm -hmm. salad. <laughs> I like the way you think, and I'm with it. So okay. 
<laughs> Teresa <laughs> said she had Olive Garden. Okay. Ooh, that sounds good. I haven't had that in a minute. Yeah, super mm-hmm. salad. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We ride on the same lines. The same stuff. <laughs> That's why I love y'all. All right. So listen, ladies, I'm going to go and eat something because, like I said, it's after seven mm-hmm. o'clock and I know I'm already messing up. I've been drinking my water, but I just wasn't hungry. Sorry. Right. But gotcha. I'm going to go eat something. Y'all enjoy the rest of your day. I appreciate you, ladies. Let me go on and drop y'all down. Nice. Bye, drop y'all. it like it's hot. Bye. And um, let me go ahead and let everybody go and get back to your day. Miss Gardner said that was great. I enjoyed talking with y'all today. I feel like we had us a good old hen session, a good old gossip session on the porch, kitchen table, however, which way you want to look at it. Okay. So listen, I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. You know what I'm about to tell you. If you did not hit the like button on the way in, make sure that you hit the like button on the way out. Hit your notification bell. Make sure you click all so you will know every single time we go live on this good channel. Subscribe if you've not subscribed because you know we're happy to have you here. And if you want to join channel membership, hit your live button. Not live button, Jesus. Your join button at the bottom of the video or your membership link in the description box. Also in the description box, we got the link for our Royal Family Merchandise Store so you can get your crown here in our classic black and gold or our new emerald crown design. And we got the link for our Amazon storefront so we can all shop together for our homes and our crafting needs. And my wish list in case you want to send a girl a snack, okay? Because y'all know I be messing up. So, all right, y'all enjoy the rest of your evening. Um, I hope everyone has had a wonderful day. We'll talk again soon. And remember, if no one else says it to each other, God loves you, I love you. And there ain't nothing you can do about it.